Three Books of Occult Philosophy or of Magic Written by Henry Cornelius Agrippa Knight and Doctor of both Law, Counselor to Caesar's Sacred Majesty and Judge of the Prerogative Court Book 1 Chapter 1 How Magicians Collect Virtues from the Threefold World is declared in these three books Seeing there is a threefold world, elementary, celestial, and intellectual, and every inferior is governed by its superior, and receiveth the influence of the virtues thereof, so that the very original and chief worker of all taught by angels, the heavens, stars, elements, animals, plants, metals, and stones, convey from himself the virtues of his omnipotency upon us, for whose service he made and created all these things. Wise men conceive it no way irrational that it should be possible for us to ascend by the same degree through each world, to the same very original world, itself the maker of all things, and first cause, from whence all things are and proceed, and also to enjoy not only these virtues, which are already in the more excellent kind of things, but also besides these, to draw new virtues from above. Hence is that they seek after the virtues of the elementary world, through the help of physic, that's medicine, and natural philosophy in the various mixtures of natural things, then of the celestial world in the rays and influences thereof, according to the rules of astrologers and the doctrines of mathematicians, joining the celestial virtues to the former. Moreover, they ratify and confirm all these with the powers of diverse intelligences, through the sacred ceremonies of religions. The order and process of all these I shall endeavor to deliver in these three books, whereof the first contains natural magic, the second celestial, and the third ceremonial. But I know not whether it be an unpardonable presumption in me that I, a man of so little judgment and learning, should in my very youth so confidently set upon the business so difficult, so hard, and intricate as this is, whereof whatsoever things have her already and shall afterward be said by me, I would not have any assent to them, nor shall I myself any further than they shall be approved of by the Universal Church and the Congress of the Faithful. Next chapter, what magic is, what are the parts thereof, and how the professors thereof must be qualified. Magic is a factuality of wonderful virtue, full of most high mysteries containing the most profound contemplation of most sacred things, together with the nature, power, quality, substance, and virtues thereof is also the knowledge of whole nature, and it doth instruct us concerning the differing and agreement of things amongst themselves, whence it is preceded its wonderful effects by uniting the virtues of these things through the application of them, one to the other, and to their inferior suitable subjects, joining and knitting them together thoroughly by the powers and virtues of the superior bodies. This is the most perfect and chief science that sacred and sublimer kind of philosophy, and lastly, the most absolute perfection of all most excellent philosophy foreseeing that all regulative philosophy is divided into natural, mathematical, and theological. 
natural philosophy teacheth the nature of those things which are in the world, searching and inquiring into their causes, effects, times, places, fashions, events, their whole and parts. Also, the number and the nature of those things called elements, what fire, earth, air, forth brings from whence the heavens their beginnings had, whence tide, whence rainbow, in gay colors clad, what makes the clouds that gathered are and black, to send forth lightnings and a thundering crack, what dope the nightly flames and comets make, what makes the earth to swell and then to quake what is the seed of metals and of gold what virtues wealth and of nature coffer hold all these things do natural philosophy the viewer of nature contain teaching us according to Fergal's muse whence all things flow whence mankind beast whence fire whence rain and snow, whence earthquakes are, why the whole ocean beats over his banks and then again retreats, whence strength of herbs, whence courage, rage of brutes, all kinds of stone, of creeping things and fruits. But mathematical philosophy teacheth us to know the quantity of natural bodies as extended into three dimensions, as also to conceive of the motion and course of celestial bodies. As in great haste, what makes the golden star to march so fast? What makes the moon sometimes to mask her face? The sun also, as if in some disgrace. And as Virgil sings, how the sun doth rule with twelve zodiac signs the orb that measured round about with lines it doth the heavens starry and make known and strange eclipses of the sun and moon arcturus also and the stars of rain the seven stars likewise and charles his wane why winter suns make towards the west so fast what makes the nights so long they be past all which is understood by mathematical philosophy, hence by the heavens we may foreknow the seasons all, times for it to reap and sow, and when this fit to launch into the deep, and when to war, and when in peace to sleep, and when to dig up trees, and them again to set, that so they may bring forth a main. Now theological philosophy, or divinity, teach it what god is what the mind what an intelligence what an angel what a devil what the soul what religion what sacred institutions rites temples observations and sacred mysteries are it constructs us also concerning faith miracles the virtues of words and figures the secret operations and mysteries of seal and as Apollonius said, it teacheth us rightly to understand and to be skilled in the ceremonial laws, the equity of holy things and rule of religions. But to recollect myself, these three principal faculties, magic comprehends, unites, and accurates, the reserve thereof was it by the ancient esteemed as the highest and most sacred philosophy. It was, as we find, brought to light by most sage authors and most famous writers, amongst which principally Samolxis and Zoroaster were so famous that many believed they were inventors of these sciences. Their tracks Aberus and Hyperborean, Charmondas, Tamingeron, Eduxus, Hermippus, followed there, were also eminent choice men as Mercurius Trismegistus, Porphyrius, Lamblicus, 
Plotinus, Proclus, Dardanus, Orpheus, the Tarsian, Gog, the Grecian, Germa, the Babylonian, Apollonius of Tiana, Ostanes also wrote excellently in these arts, whose books being, as it were, Democraticus of Abdera recovered and set forth with his words commentaries, besides Pythagoras, Empedeclus, Democritus, Plato, and many other renewed philosophers traveled far by sea to learn this art, and being returned, published it with wonderful devoteness, esteeming of it as a great secret. Also, it is well known that Pythagoras and Plato went to the prophets of Memphis to learn it, and traveled through almost all Syria, Egypt, Judea, and the schools of the Chaldeans, that they might not be ignorant of the most sacred memorials and recordings of magic, as also that they might be furnished with divine things whatsoever, therefore is desirous to study in this faculty, if he be not skilled in natural philosophy, wherein are discovered the qualities of things, and in which are found the occult properties of every being, and if he be not skilled in mathematics, and in the aspect and figures of the stars upon which depends the sublime virtue and property of everything, and if he be not learned in theology, wherein are manifested those immaterial substances which dispense and minister all things, he cannot be possibly able to understand the rationality of magic, for there is no work that is done by mere magic, nor any work that is nearly magical, that both not comprehend these three faculties. Chapter 3 of the Four Elements, Their Qualities, and mutual mixtures. There are four elements and original grounds of all corporeal things, fire, earth, water, air, of which all elementated inferior bodies are compounded, not by way of heaping them up together by the transmission and union, and when they are destroyed, they are resolved into elements, for there is none of the sensible elements that is pure, but they are more or less mixed and apt to be changed one into the other. Even as earth becomes dirty and being dissolved becomes water, and the same being made thick and hard becometh earth again, but being evaporated through heat passeth into fire, and that being kindled pass it into fire, and this thus being extinguished returns back again into air, but being cooled again after its burning becometh earth or stone or sulphur, and this is manifested by lightning. Plato also was of the opinion that earth was wholly changeable and that the rest of the elements are changed as into this so into one another successfully, but it is the opinion of the subtler sort of philosopher that earth is not changed by relented and mixed with other elements which do dissolve it, and that it returns back into itself again. Now, every one of the elements had two specifical qualities, the former whereof it retains as proper to itself in the other as amin. It agrees with that which comes next after it. For fire hot and dry, the earth dry and cold, the water cold and moist, the air moist and hot. It is so after the manner the elements according to two contrary qualities are contrary one to the other, fire to water and earth to air. Moreover, the elements are upon another account opposite one to the other, for some are heavy, and earth and water, 
and others are light, air, fire. Therefore the Stoics call the former passives, but the latter actives. And yet, once again, Plato distinguished them after another manner, and assigns to every one of them three qualities, viz. To the fire, brightness, thinness, and motion, but to the earth, darkness, thickness, and quietness. And according to these qualities, the elements of fire and earth are contrary. But the other elements borrowing their qualities from these, so that the air receives two qualities of the earth, thinness and motion, and one of the earth, viz, darkness, and like matter, water receives two qualities of the earth, darkness and thickness, and one of fire, viz, motion. But Fire is twice more thin than air, thrice more movable, and four times more bright, and the air is twice more bright, thrice more thin, and four times more movable than water. Therefore water is twice more bright than earth, thrice more thin, and four times more movable. As therefore the fire is to the air, so air is to the water and water to the earth, and again, as the earth is to the water, so is the water to the air, and the air to the fire. And this is the root and foundation of all bodies, natures, virtues, and wonderful works. And he which shall know these qualities of the elements and their mixtures shall easily bring to pass such things that are wonderful and astonishing, and shall be perfect in magic. Chapter 4 of a threefold consideration of the elements. There are then, as we have said, four elements. Without the perfect knowledge whereof, we can effect nothing in magic. Now each of them is threefold, that so the number of four may make up the number of twelve. And by passing by the number of seven, into the number of ten. There may be a progress to the supreme unity upon which all virtue and wonderful operation depends. Of the first order are the pure elements, which are neither compounded nor changed, nor admit of mixtures, but are incorruptible, and not of which, but through which the virtues of all natural things are brought forth into act. No man is able to declare their virtues, because they can do all things upon all things. He which is ignorant of these shall never be able to bring to pass any wonderful matter. Of the second order are elements that are compounded, changeable, and impure, yet such as may be art by reduced to their pure simplicity, whose virtue, when they are thus reduced to their simplicity, though above all things perfect, all occult and common operations of nature, and those are the foundations of the whole natural magic. Of third order are those elements which originally and of themselves are not elements, but are twice compounded, various and changeable into one into another. They are the infallible medium and therefore are called the middle nature or soul of the middle nature very few there are that understand the deep mysteries thereof and them is by means of certain numbers degrees and orders the perfection of every effect in what thing soever whether natural celestial super celestial they are full of wonders and mysteries and are operative as in magic natural so divine for from these through them proceed the bindings loosings and transmutations of all things the knowing and foretelling of things to come also the driving forth of evil and the gaining of good spirits let no man therefore without these sorts of elements and the knowledge thereof 
be confident that he is able to work anything at occult science of magic and nature, but whatsoever shall know how to reduce these of one order into those of another, impure into pure, compounded into simply, and shall know how to understand distinctly the nature, virtue, and power of them in number, degrees, and order without dividing the substance, he shall easily attain to the knowledge and perfect operation of all natural things in celestial secret. Chapter 5 Of the Wonderful Natures of Fire and Earth There are two things, said Hermes, fire and earth, which are sufficient for the operation of all wonderful things. The former is active, the latter is passive. Fire, as said Dionysus, in all things and through all things comes and goes away bright. It is in all things bright and at the same time occult and unknown. When it is by itself no other matter coming to it in which it shall manifest its proper action, it is boundless and invisible, of itself sufficient for every action that is proper to it, movable, yielding itself after a manner to all things that come next to it, renewing, regarding nature, enlightening, not comprehended by lights that are veiled, over clear parted, leaping back, bending upwards, quick in motion, high, always raising motions, comprehending another, not comprehended, itself, not standing in need of another, secretly increasing of itself and manifesting its greatness to things that receive it, active, powerful, invisible present in all things at once, it will not be affronted or opposed, but as it were in a way of revenge, it will reduce on a sudden things into obedience to itself incomprehensible, impalpable, not lessened, most rich in all the sensations of itself fire, as said Pliny, is the boundless and mischievous part of the nature of things, it being a question whether it destroys or produces most things. Fire in itself is one, and perpetuates through all things, as say the Pythagoreans, also spread abroad in the heavens and shining, but in the infernal place, strident, dark and tormenting, in the midway it partakes of both. Fire therefore in itself is one, but in that which receives it, manifold and in differing subject, it is distributed in a different manner as Clintus witnessed and Cicero, that fire then, which we use, is fetched out of other things, it is in stones, and fetched out by the stroke of the steel, it is in earth, and makes that, after digging up to smoke, it is in water, and heats springs and wells, it is in the depth of the sea, and makes that thing being tossed with winds warm, it is in the air, and makes it, as we oftentimes see, to burn, and all animals, animals and living things whatsoever, as also all vegetables, are preserved by heat, and everything that lives, lives by reason of the enclosed heat. The properties of the fire that is above are heat, making all things fruitful and light, giving life to all things, the properties of the infernal fire are parching heat, consuming all things, and darkness, making all things barren. The celestial and bright fire drives away spirits of darkness. Also, this fire, made with wood, drives away the same, inasmuch as it had an analogy with, and is the vehiculum of that superior light as also of him who said, I am the light of the world, which is true fire, 
the Father of lights, from whom every good thing that is given comes, sending forth the light of his fire, and communicating it first to the Son, and the rest of the celestial bodies, and by these, as by mediating instruments, conveying that light into our fire, is therefore the spirit of darkness, are stronger in the dark, so good spirits, which are angels of light, are argumented not only by that light, which is divine, of the sun, and celestial, but also by the light of our common fire. Hence it is that the first and most wise institutors of religion and ceremonies ordain that prayers, singing, and all matter of divine worship whatsoever should not be performed without lighted candles or torches. Hence also was that significant saying of Pythagoras, Do not speak of God without a light. And they command that for the driving away of wicked spirits, lights and fires should be kindled by the corpses of the dead and that they should not be removed until the expiations were after a holy matter performed and they buried in the great Jehovah himself in the old law commanded that all his sacrifices should be offered with fire and that fire should always be burning upon the altar which custom the priests of the altar did always observe and keep amongst the Romans now the basis and foundation of all the elements is the earth, for that is the object, subject, and receptacle of all celestial rays and influences. In it are contained the seeds and seminal virtues of all things, and therefore it is said that by animal, vegetable, and mineral it being made fruitful by other elements, and the heavens brings forth all things of itself it receives the abundance of all things and is as it were the first fountain from whence all things spring it is the center foundation and mother of all things take as much of it as you please separated washed depurated subtilized if you let it lay in the open air a little while it will being full and abounding with heavenly virtues of itself bringing forth plants worms and other living things also stones and bright sparks of metals in it are great secrets if at any time it shall be purified by the help of fire and reduced into its simplicity by a convenient washing it is the first matter of our creation and the truest medicine that can restore and preserve us. Chapter 6 of the Wonderful Natures of Water, Air, and Wind The other two elements, water and air, are not less efficacious than the former. Neither is nature wanting to work wonderful things in them. There is so great a necessity of water that without it no living thing can live, no herb nor plant whatsoever, without the moistening of water can branch forth. It is the seminary virtue of all things, especially of animals, whose seed is manifestly waterish. The seed also of trees and plants, although they are earthly, must, notwithstanding of necessity, be rotted in water before they can be fruitful, whether they be embedded with the moisture of the earth or with dew, or rain, or any other water, that is on purpose put to them. For Moses writes that only earth and water bring forth a living soul, but he ascribes a twofold production of things to water, of things swimming in the waters, and of things flying in the air above the earth, and that those productions that are made in and upon the earth are partly attributed to the very water the same scripture testifies where it said that the plants and the herbs did not grow because god had not caused it to rain upon the earth such is the efficiency 
of the element of water that spiritual regeneration cannot be done without it, as Christ himself testified to Nicodemus, very great also is the virtue of it in religions, religious worship of God. In expiations and purifications, ye, the necessity of it is no less than that of fire, infinite are the benefits, and diverse are the use thereof, as being that by virtue of which all things subsist, are generated, nourished, and increased. Thence it was that tales of Miletus and Hesiod concluded that water was the beginning of all things, and said that it was the first of all elements and the most potent, and that because it had the mastery of all the rest, for as Pliny said, waters swallow up the earth, extinguish flames, ascend on high, and by the stretching forth of the clouds, challenge the heaven for their own, by the same falling, become the cause of all things that grow in the earth. Very many are the wonders that are done by water. According to the writings of Pliny, Solinus, and many other historians of the wonderful virtue, whereof Ovid also makes the mention in these verses, Horned Hemos, waters, a high noon are called, had a sunrise and setting sun, wood put in bubbling Atimas is furred, the moon that farthest from the sun retired, Circonian streams congeal his guts to stone, that thereof drinks, and what therein is thrown, Carthus and Siberius from the mountains rolled, colors the hair like amber of pure gold. Some fountains of our prodigious kind not only change the body but the mind. Who had not heard of obscene salmaces of the Ethiopian lake? For who of this but only test their wits no longer keep, or forthwith fall into a deadly sleep? What at clitorious fountain thirst remove, load wine, and abstinent, mere water love, which streams opposed to these licentious flows, they reel as drunk who drinks too much of those, a lake in fair Arcadia stands of old, called Phineas, suspected as twofold, fear and forbear to drink thereof by night, by night unwholesome, wholesome by daylight. Josephus also makes relation of the wonderful nature of a certain river betwixt Arcea and Raphania, cities of Syria, which runs with a full channel of the Sabbath day, and then on a sudden sees it, as if the springs were stopped, and all the six days you may pass over a dry shot, but again, on the seventh day, no man knowing the reason of it, the waters return again in abundance, as before, wherefore the inhabitants thereabout called it the Sabbath day river because of the seventh day, which was holy to the Jews, the gospel also testifies to a sheep pool into which whosoever stepped first after the water was troubled by the angel was made whole by whatsoever disease he had. The same virtue and efficiency, we read, was in a spring of the Ionian nymphs, which was the territories belonging to the town of Elias at a village called Heraclea near the river Citeron, which whatsoever stepped into being deceased came forth whole and cured of all diseases. Pausanias also reports that in Lycius, a mountain of Arcadia, there was a spring called Agria, to which as often as the dryness of the region threatened the destruction of fruits, Jupiter's priest of Anicius went, and after the offering of sacrifices devoutly praying to the waters of the spring holding a bud of an oak, 
in his hand, but it put down to the bottom of the hollowed spring. Then the waters being troubled, a vapor ascending from thence into the air was blown into the skies, with which being joined together, the whole heaven was overspread, which being a little after dissolving into rain, watered all the countries most wholesomely. Moreover, Rufus, a physician at Ephesus, beside many other authors, wrote strange things concerning the wonders of water, which, for aught I to know, are found in no other order. It remains that I speak of the air that is a vital spirit, passing through all beings, giving life and substances to all things, binding, moving, and filling all things. Hence it is that the Hebrew doctors reckon it not amongst the elements, but count it as a medium or glue, joining things together as the resounding spirit of the world's instrument. It immediately receives into itself the influences of all celestial bodies, and then communicates them to the other elements. It also, to all mixed bodies, also it receives into itself, as it were, a divine looking glass, the species of all things, as well natural, as artificial, as also of all matter of species, and retains them, and carrying them with it, and entering into the bodies of men, and other animals through their pores, makes an impression upon them, as well when they sleep, as when they be awake, and affords matter for diverse strange dreams and divinations. Hence they say, it is that a man passing by a place where a man was slain, or the carcass newly hid, is moved with fear and dread, because the air in that place, being full of the dreadful species of manslaughter, doth, being breathed in, move and trouble the spirit of the man with the like species, whence it is that it, be, it comes to be afraid for everything that makes a sudden impression astonish nature. Whence it is that many philosophers were of opinion that air is the cause of dreams and many other impressions of the mind, through the prolonging of images or similitudes or species which are fallen from things and speech, multiplied by the very air, until they come to the senses and then to the fantasy and soul of him that receiveth them, which being freed from cares and no way hindered, expecting to meet such kind of species, is informed by them. For the species of things, although of their own proper nature, they are carried to the senses of man and other animals in general, may notwithstanding get some impression from the heaven, whilst they be in the air, by reason of which together with the emptiness and disposition of him that receives them, they may be carried to the senses of one rather than of another, and hence it is possible naturally, and far from all manner of superstition, no other spirits coming between, that a man should be able in a very time to signify his mind into another man, abiding at a very long and unknown distance from him, although he cannot precisely give an estimate of time when it is, yet of necessity it must be within twenty-four hours, and I myself know how to do it, and I have often done it, the same also in time, best did the Tritemius both know and do. Also, when certain appearances, not only spiritual but also natural, do flow forth from things, that is to say, by a certain kind of flowings forth of bodies from bodies, and do gather strength in the air, they offer and shew themselves to us as well through light as motion, as well to the sight, to the other senses, and sometimes 
work wonderful things upon us, as Plotinus provides and teacheth, and we see how by the south wind the air is condensed into thin clouds in which, as in a looking glass, are reflected representations at a great distance of castles, mountains, horses, and men, and other things which, when the clouds are gone, presently vanish. And Aristotle in his meteor shows that a rainbow is conceived in a cloud of the air as in a looking glass, and Albertus said that the effigies of bodies may be strength of nature in a moist air be easily represented in the same manner as the representations of things are in things. And Aristotle tells of a man to whom it happened by reason of the weakness of his sight that the air that was near to him became as it were a looking glass to him by the optic beam did relect back upon himself and he could not penetrate the air so that whithersoever he went he thought he saw his own image but this face towards him go before him in like manner by the artificialness of some certain looking glasses may be produced by a distance in the air beside the looking glasses what images we please which when ignorant men see they think they see the appearance of spirits or souls when indeed they are nothing else but semblances kin to themselves and without life and it is well known if in a dark place where there is no light but by the coming in of a beam of the sun somewhere through a little hole a white paper or plain looking glass be set up against that light that there may be seen upon them whatsoever things are done without being shined upon by the sun and there is another slight or trick or yet more wonderful if any one shall take images artificially painted or written letters and in a clear night set them against the beams of the full moon whose resemblances being multiplied in the air and caught upward and reflected back together with the beams of the moon and other men that is privy to the thing at a long distance see sees reads and knows them in the very compass of circles in the moon which art of declaring secrets is indeed very profitable for towns and cities that are besieged being a thing which Pythagoras long since died often do and which is not unknown to some in these days i will not accept myself and all these and many more and greater than these are grounded in the very nature of the air and have their reasons and causes declared in mathematics and optics and as these resemblances are reflected back to the sight so also sometimes to the hearing as is manifested in the echo but there are more secret arts than these and such whereby any one may at very remote distance hear and understand what another speaks or whispers softly there are also from the airy element winds for they are nothing else but air moved and stirred up of these are four that are principal blowing from the four corners of heaven notus from south boreas from north zephyrus from the west Eurus from the west, Pontonus comprehending in these verses said, Cold Boreas from the top Olympus blows, and from the bottom cloudy notus flows, from setting Phoebus fruitful Zephyrus flies, and barren Eurus from the sun uprise. Notus is the southern wind, cloudy, moist, warm, and sickly, with Hieronymus calls the butler of the rains. Ovid describes it thus. Out flies south wind with dropping wings who shrouds 
his fearful aspect in the pitchy clouds, his white hair streams, his beard big swollen with showers, mids blind his brows, rain from his besom pores. But Boreas, contrary to notice, and is the northern wind, fierce and warring, and discussing clouds, makes the air serene, and binds the water with frost. Him do Ovid thus bring in speaking of himself. Force me befits, with this thick cloud I drive, Thus the blue billions naughty oaks uprive, Congeal soft snow, and beat the earth with hail, when I, my brethren, in the air assail. For that's our field, we meet with such a shock, that thundering skies with our encounters rock, and cloud-struck lightning flashes from on high, when through the crannies of the earth I fly, and force her in her hollow cave. I make the ghost to tremble, and the ground to quake, and Zephyrus, which is the western wind, is most soft, blowing from the west with a pleasant gale. It is cold and moist, removing the effects of winter, bringing forth branches and flowers. To this Eurus is contrary, which is the eastern wind, and is called Apeliotes. It is waterish, cloudy, and ravenous, of these two Ovid sings thus, To Persis and Sabea, Eurus flies, Whose gums perfume the blushing mourners uprise, Next to the evening and the coast that glows, With setting Phoebus, flowery Zephyrus blows, In Cynthia, horrid Boreas holds his reign, Beneath Boetis and the frozen wane, In the land to this Opposed, though austere steep, with fruitful showers and clouds which ever weep. Chapter 7 Of the kinds of compounds, what relation they stand into the elements, and what relation there is betwixt the elements themselves and the soul, senses, and dispositions of man. Next, after the four simple elements, follow the four kinds of perfect bodies compounded of them and they are stones, metals, plants, and animals, and although unto the generation of each of these all the elements meet together in the composition, yet every one of them follows and resembles one of the elements which is most predominant, for all stones are earthly, for they are naturally heavy and descend and so hardened with dryness that they cannot be melted, but metals are waterish and may be melted, which naturalists confess and chemists find to be true, that they are generated of a vicious water or waterish argent vive. Plants have such an affinity with the air, that unless they be abroad in the open air, they do neither but nor increase. So also all elements have in their nature a most fiery force, and also spring from a celestial force. And fire is so natural to them, that that being extinguished, they presently die. And again, every one of those kinds is distinguished within itself by reason of degrees of the elements, for amongst the stones they especially are called earthy, that are dark and more heavy, and those waterish, which are transparent, and are compacted of water, as crystal beryl, and pearls, and the shells of fishes, and they are called airy which swim upon the water and are sponges as the stones of a sponge. The pumice stone and the stone sophus, and they are called fiery, out of which fire is extracted, or which are produced of fire, as thunderbolts, fire stones, and the stone 
asbestos, also amongst metals, lead and silver, are earthy. Quicksilver is waterish, copper and tin are airy, and gold and iron are fiery. In plants also, the roots resemble the earth by reason of their thickness and the leaves. Water, because of their juice, flowers, the air, because of their subtlety, and the seeds, the fire. By reason of their multiplying spirit, besides, they are called some hot, wine cold, sonic moist, some dry, borrowing their names from the qualities of the elements. Amongst animals also, some are in comparison of others earthly and dwell in the bowls of the earth as worms and moles and many other small creepy vermin others are watery as fishes others airy which cannot live out of the air others also are fiery living in the fire as salamanders and cricket such as are of a fiery heat as pigeons ostriches lions and such as the wise man calls beasts breathing fire besides in animals the bones resemble the earth flesh the air the vital spirit the fire and the humors the water and these humors also partake of the elements for yellow color or instead of fire blood instead of air phlegm instead of water and black color or melancholy instead of earth and lastly in the soul itself according to austin and understanding resembles fire reason the air imagination the water and the senses the earth and these senses also are dividend amongst themselves by reason of the elements for the sight is fairy Neither can it perceive without fire and light. The hearing is airy, for a sound is made by the striking of the air. The smell, smell and taste resemble the water, without the moisture of which there is neither smell nor taste. And lastly, feeling is holy, earthy, and taketh gross bodies for its object. The actions also and the operations of men are governed by the elements. The earth signifies a slow and firm motion. The water signifies fearfulness and sludginess and remissness in working. Air signifies cheerfulness and an amiable disposition for fire, a fierce, quick and angry disposition. The elements, therefore, are the first of all things, and all things are of and according to them, and they are in all things, and diffuse their virtues through all things. Chapter 8 How the elements are in the heavens, in stars, in devils, in angels, and lastly in God himself. It is the anonymous consent of all Platonists that as in the original and exemplary world all things are in all so also in this corporeal world all things are in all so also the elements are not only in these inferior bodies but also in the heavens in stars in devils in angels and lastly in god the maker and original example of all things now in these inferior bodies, the elements are accompanied with much gross matter, but in the heavens, the elements are with their nature and virtues after a celestial and more excellent manner than in sublunary things, for the firmness of the celestial earth is there without the grossness of water and the agility of the air without running over its bounds. The heat of fire without burning, only shining and giving life to all things by its heat. Amongst the stars also some are fairy, as Mars and Sol, airy, as Jupiter and Venus, watery, 
as Saturn and Mercury and Earthy, such as inhabit the eighth orb and the moon, which notwithstanding by many is accounted watery, seeing as if it were Earth, it attracts to itself the celestial waters with which being imbibed. It doth by reason of its nearness to us power out and communicate to us. There are also amongst the signs some fairy, some earthy, some airy, some watery. The elements rule them also in the heavens, distributing to them these four threefold considerations of every element, the beginning, middle, and end. So Aries possesses the beginning of fire, Leo the progress and increase in Sagittarius the end, Taurus is the beginning of the earth, Virgo the progress, Capricorn the end, Gemini the beginning of air, Libra the progress, Aquarius the end, Cancer the beginning of water, Scorpio the middle, and Pisces the end. Of the mixtures, therefore, of these planets and signs, together with the elements, are all bodies made. Moreover, devils are also upon this account distinguished to one from the other, so that some are called fiery, some earthy, some airy, and some watery. Hence, also those four infernal rivers, fiery, plegeton, airy, Sostitus, watery, sticks, earthy, asheron, also in the gospel we read of hellfire and eternal fire into which the cursed shall be commanded to go. And in the revelation we read of a lake of fire and Isaiah speaks of the damned that the Lord will smite them with corrupt air and in Job they shall skip from the waters of the snow to extremity of heat, and in the same we read that the earth is dark and covered with darkness of death and miserable darkness. Moreover, also these elements are placed in the angels in heaven, and the blessed intelligences, there is in them a stability of their essence, which is an earthy virtue in which is the steadfast seed of God, also their mercy and pity is a watery cleansing virtue. Hence, by the psalmist, they are called waters. Where he speak of the heavens, said, We rule as the water that are higher than the heavens. Psalms 148.4 Also in them, their subtle breath is air and their love is shining fire. Hence they are called in scripture the wings of the wind. And in another place the psalmist speaks of them, Who makes angels thy spirits, and thy minister a flaming fire? Also according to orders of angels, some are fiery, as seraphim, and authorities and powers earthy as cherubim watery as thrones and archangels, airy as dominions and principalities. Do we not also read of this original maker of all things, that the earth shall be opened and bring forth a saviour? Is it not spoken of the same that he shall be a fountain of living water, cleansing and regenerating? Is not the same spirit breathing the breath of life, and the same, according to Moses and Paul's testimony, a consuming fire, that elements, therefore, are to be found everywhere and in all things after their manner. No man can deny, first in these inferior bodies, fesulent and gross, and in celestials more pure and clear, but in super-celestials living and in all respects blessed, Elements, therefore, in the exemplary world are ideas, things to be produced, and intelligences, 
are distributed powers in heavens are virtues and in inferior bodies gross forms chapter nine of the virtues of things natural depending immediately upon elements of the natural virtues of things some are elementary as to heat to cool to moisture and to dry and they are called operations or first qualities in the second act for these qualities only do wholly change the whole substance which none of the other qualities can do and some are in things compounded of elements and these are more than first qualities and such are those that are maturating digesting resolving mollifying hardening restraining upsturging corroding burning opening evaporating strengthening mitigating consulating obstructing expelling retaining attracting repercussion stupefying bestowing lubrifying and many more elementary qualities do many things in a mixed body which they cannot do in the elements themselves and these operations are called secondary qualities because they follow the nature and proportion of the mixtures of the first virtues as largely it is treated of a medical or psychic books as maturation which is the operation of natural heat according to a certain proportion in the substance of the matter in duration is the operation of cold is also a congelation and so of the rest and these operations sometimes act upon a certain member as such which provoke urine milk the menstrua and they are called third qualities which follow the second as the second to the first according therefore to these first second and third qualities many diseases are both cured and caused many things also are artificially made which men much wonder at as is fire which burns water which they call the greek fire of which aristotle teacheth many compositions in this particular treatise of this subject in like matter there is made a fire that is extinguishable with oil and is kindled with cold water when it is sprinkled upon and a fire which is kindled either with rain wind or the sun and there is made a fire which is called burning water the confection whereof is well known and is consumes nothing but itself and also there are made fires that cannot be quenched and incombustible oils and perpetual lamps which can be extinguished neither with wind nor water nor any other way which seems utterly incredible but that there have been such a most famous lamp which once did shine in the temple of venus in which the stone asbestos did burn which being once fired can never be extinguished also in the contrary wood or any other combustible matter may be so ordered that it can receive no harm from the fire and there are made certain confections with which the hands being anointed we may carry red hot iron in them or put them into melted metal or go with our whole bodies being first anointed therewith into the fire without any matter of harm and such like things as these may be done there is also a kind of flax which pliny also calls asbestum which is not consumed by fire of which anaxilus said that a tree compassed about it may be cut down with insensible blows that cannot be heard chapter 10 of the occult virtues of things there are also other virtues in things which are not 
from any element as to expel poison, to drive away the nauseous vapors of minerals, to attract iron or anything else. And these virtues are a sequel of the species, and from of this or that thing, whence also they being like in quantity are of great efficiency, which is not granted to any elementary quality. For these virtues having much form and little matter can do very much, but in elementary virtues, because it had more materiality, requires much matter for its acting, and they are called occult qualities, because their causes lie hidden, and man's intellect cannot in any way reach and find them out, wherefore philosophers have attained to the greatest part of them by long experience, rather than by search of reason, for as in the stomach the meat is digested by heat, which we know so it is changed by a certain hidden virtue, we know not. For truly it is not changed by heat, because then it should rather be changed by the fire side than in the stomach. So there is in things, besides the elementary qualities which we know, other certain inbred virtues created by nature, which we admire and are amazed at, being such as we know not, and indeed seldom or never have seen, as we read in Ovid of the Phoenix, one only bird which renews herself. All birds from others do derive their birth, but yet one fowl there is in all the earth, called by the Assyrians Phoenix, who the wane of age repairs and sows herself again. And in another place, Egyptus came to see the wondrous sight, and this rare bird is welcomed with delight. Long since Metrius brought a very great wonderment upon the Greeks and Romans concerning himself, he said that he nourished and bred a beast that did devour itself, hence many of this they are solicitous of this beast of Metris should be. Who would not wonder that fishes should be digged out of the earth of which Aristotle, Theophrastus, and Polybius the historian makes mention, and those things which Pausanius wrote concerning the singing stones, all these are effects of occult virtues, so the asterisk or Ostrich, consults, cold, most hard iron, and digests it into nourishment of hers. For his body, whose stomach they also report, cannot be hurt with red hot iron. So had that little fish called Iphineus, though to scurb the violence of the winds and appease the rage of the sea, that let the tempests be never be so imperious and raged, the sails also bearing full gale, it doth notwithstanding, by its mere touch stay, the ships and makes them stand still, stand by no means, they can be moved, so salamanders and crickets live in the fire, although they seem sometimes to burn, yet they are not hurt. The like is said of a kind of bitumen, with which the weapons of the Amazons were said to be smeared over, by which means they could be spoiled neither with sword nor fire, with which also the gates of Caspia made of brass are reported to be smeared over by Alexander the Great. We read also that Noah's Ark was joined together with this bitumen, and that it endured some thousands of years upon the mountains of Armenia. There are many such kind of wonderful things, scarce credible, which notwithstanding are known by experience, amongst which antiquity makes mention of satyrs, which were animals in shape half men and half brutes, yet capable of speech and reason, one whereof, Hiram reported, speak 
once unto holy Antonius the Hermite and condemned the error of the Gentiles in worshipping such poor creatures as they were, and desired him that he would pray unto the true God for him. Also he affirms that there was one of them shewed openly alive, and afterward sent to Constantine the Emperor. Chapter 11 How occult virtues are infused into the several kind of things by idea through the help of the soul of the world and rays of the stars and what things abound most with this virtue chapter 11 how occult virtues are infused into the several kinds of things by idea through the help of the soul of the world and rays of the stars and what things abound most with this virtue? Platonists say that all inferior bodies are exemplified by the superior ideas. Now, they define an idea to be a form above bodies, souls, minds, and to be one simple, pure, immutable, indivisible, incorporeal, and eternal, and that the nature of all ideas is the same. Now they place ideas in the first place in very goodness itself, God, by way of cause, and that they are distinguished amongst themselves by some relative considerations, only least whatsoever in the world should be but one thing without any variety, and that they agree in essence, least God should be a compound substance. In the second place, they place them in the very intelligible itself, in the soul of the world, differing the one from the other by absolute forms, so that all the ideas in God indeed are but one form, but in the soul of the world they are many. They are placed in the minds of all the other things, whether they be joined to the body or separated from the body by a certain participation and now by degrees are distinguished more and more they place them in nature a certain small seed of form infused by the ideas and lastly they place them in matter as shadows hereunto may be added that hereunto may be added that in the soul of the world there be as many seminal forms of things as ideas in the mind of god by which forms she did in the heavens above the stars frame to herself shapes also and stems upon all these some properties and these stars therefore shapes and properties all virtues of inferior species as also their properties to depend so that Every species had this celestial shape or figure that is suitable to its form, which also precedes a wonderful power of operating, which proper gift it receives from its own idea. Through the seminal forms of the soul of the world, for ideas are not only essential causes of every species but are also the causes of every virtue which is in the species and this is that which many philosophers say that the properties which are in the nature of things which virtues indeed are the operations of the idea are moved by certain virtues such as have a certain and sure foundation not fortuitous nor causal but effectuous powerful and sufficient doing nothing in vain now these virtues do not err in their acting but by accident by reason of the impurity or inequality of the matter for upon this account there are found things of the same species more or less powerful according to the purity or in this position of the matter, for all celestial influences may be hindered by the indisposition 
and insufficiency of the matter whence it was a proverb amongst the platonists that celestial virtues were infused according to the desert of the matter which also virgil makes notion of when he sings their natures fair you are and from above and from gross bodies free divinely moved wherefore those things in which there is less of the idea of the matter such things which have a greater resemblance of things separated have more powerful virtues in operation being like the operation of a separate idea we see then that the situation and figure for celestials is the cause of all those excellent virtues that are in inferior species chapter twelve how it is that particular virtues are infused into particular individuals even of the same species there are also in many individuals or particular things peculiar gifts as wonderful as in the species and these also are from the figure and situation of celestial stars for every individual when it begins to be under a determined horoscope and celestial constellation contracts together with its essence a certain wonderful virtue both of doing and suffering something that is remarkable even besides that which it receives from its species and this it does partly by the influence of the heaven and partly through the obedientness of the matter of things to be generated to the soul of the world which obedientness indeed is such as that of our bodies to our soul for we perceive that there is in this in us that according to our conception of things our bodies are moved and that cheerfully as when we are afraid of or fly from anything so many times when the celestial souls conceive several things then the matter is moved obediently to it also in nature there appear diverse prodigies by reason of the imagination of superior motions so also they conceive and imagine diverse virtues not only things natural but also sometimes things artificial and this especially of the soul of the operator be inclined towards the same whence avicen said that whatsoever things are done here must have been before in the motions and conception of the stars and orbs so in things various effects inclinations and dispositions are occasioned not only from the matter variously disposed as many suppose but from a various influence and diverse form not truly with a specifical difference but peculiar and proper and the degrees of these are variously distributed by the first cause of all things god himself who being unchangeable distributes to every one as he pleaseth with whom notwithstanding second causes angelical and celestial cooperate disposing of the corporeal matter and other things that are committed to them all virtues therefore are infused by god through the soul of the world yet by a particular power of resemblances and intelligences overruling them and conquers of the rays and aspects of the stars and certain peculiar harmonious consent chapter thirteen whence the occult virtues of things proceed it is well known to all that there is a certain virtue in the lodestone by which it attracts iron and that the diamond does by the presence take away that virtue of the lodestone so also amber and jet rubbed and warmed draw the straw to them and the stone asbestos being once fired is never or scarce extinguished a carbuncle shines in the dark the stone atius put above the young fruit of women or plants strengthen them but being put under causeth abortion the jasper strengthens blood the little fish agences stops the ships the rhubarb expels color the liver of the chameleon burnt raised showers and thunders the stone heliotrope dazzles the sight and makes him that wears to be invisible the stone lysurius 
takes away delusions from before the eyes. The perfume of the stone Lipares calls forth all the beasts. The stone Sinochites brings up infernal ghosts. The stone Anachites makes the image of the gods appear. The Anesis put under that that dream causes miracles. There is an herb in Ethiopia with which they report ponds and lakes are dried up and all things that are shut to be opened. And we read by an herb called lettuce that which Persian kings give to their ambassador that whithersoever they shall come, they shall abound with plenty of all things. There is also a herb with which being tasted, or at least held in the mouth, they report the Sigtians will endure twelve days of hunger and thirst, and Apuleius said that he was taught by an oracle that there were many kinds of herbs and stones with which men might prolong their lives forever, but that it was not lawful for men to understand the knowledge of those things, because whereas they have but a short time to live, the study mischief with all their might and attempt all manner of wickedness. If they should be sure of a very long time, they would only spare the gods themselves. But from whence these virtues are, none of all these have shewed, who have set forth huge volumes of properties of things, not Hermes, not Bocchus, not Aaron, not Orpheus, not Theophrastus, not Thebit, not Zenotemis, not Zoroaster, not Avax, not Diosiridus, not Isaac, not the Jew, not Zacharias the Babylonian, not Albertus, not Arnoldus, and yet all these have confessed the same, that Zacharias writes to Mithridates that great power and human destinies are couched in the virtues of stones and herbs, but to know from whence these come, a higher speculation is required. Alexander the Peripatic, not going any further than his senses and qualities, is of the opinion that these proceed from elements and their qualities, which haply might be supposed to be true. If those were of the same species, but many of the operations of the stones agree neither in genere nor specie, Therefore Plato and his scholars attribute these virtues to ideas, the formers of things, but Everson reduced those things to operations to intelligences, Hermes to the stars, Albertus to the specifical forms of things, and although these authors seem to thwart one the other, yet none of them, if they be rightly understood, goes beside the truth since all their sayings are the same in effect in most things. For God in the first place is the end and the beginning of all virtues. He gives the seal of the ideas to his servants, the intelligences, who as faithful officers sign all things entrusted to them with an ideal virtue, the heavens and stars as instruments disposing the matter in the mean, while for the receiving of those forms which reside in divine majesty, as said Plato in Timaeus, and to be conveyed by stars, and the giver of forms distributes them by the ministry of his intelligences, who as faithful officers sign all things entrusted to them with an ideal virtue, the heavens and stars as instruments disposing the matter in the mean, while for the receiving of those forms which reside in divine majesty, as said Plato and Timaeus, and be conveyed by stars, and the giver of forms distributes them by the ministry of his intelligences, which he has set as rulers and controllers over his work, to whom such a power is entrusted in things committed to them, that so all virtues of stones, herbs, metals, and all other things may come from the intelligences, the governors, the form, therefore, and virtue of things comes first from the idea, then from the ruling and governing intelligences, then from the aspect of the heavens disposing, and lastly from the tempers of the elements disposed, answering the influences of the heavens by which the elements themselves are ordered or disposed, 
These kinds of operations, therefore, are performed in these inferior things by express forms and the heavens by disposing virtues and intelligencies by mediating rulers in the original cause by idea and exemplary forms, all which must of necessity agree in the execution of the effect and virtue of everything. There is therefore a wonderful virtue and operation in every herb and stone, by greater in a star beyond which, even from the governing intelligencies, everything receives and obtains many things for itself, especially from the supreme cause with whom all things do mutually and exactly correspond, agreeing in an harmonious consent, as it were in hymns, always praises the highest maker of all things, is by the three children of the fiery furnace, where all things called upon to praise God with singings. Bless ye the Lord all things that grow upon the earth, and all things which move in the waters, all fowls in the heavens, beasts and cattle, together with the sons of men. There is therefore no other cause of the necessity of effects and the connection of all things with the first cause, and their correspondency with those divine patterns and eternal ideas, whence everything has its determinate and particular place in the exemplary world, from whence it lives and receives its original idea and being. And every virtue of herbs, stones, metals, animals, words, and speeches, and all things that are of God is placed here. Now the first cause, which is God, although he does by intelligences and the heavens work upon these inferior beings, does sometimes, these mediums being laid aside for the officiating being suspended, works those things immediately by himself, which works then are called miracles. But whereas secondary causes, which Plato and all others call handmaids, do by the command and appointment of the first cause, necessarily act and are necessitated to produce their effects, if God shall notwithstanding, according to his pleasure, so discharge and suspend them, then they shall wholly desist from the necessity of that command and appointment. Then they are called the greatest miracles of God, so the fire in the Chaldean's furnace did not burn the children, so also the sun, at the command of Joshua, went back from its course to space of one whole day, so also the prayers of Hezekiah, it went back ten degrees or hours, so when Christ was crucified, the sun was darkened, although at full moon and the reasons these operations can be no rational discourse, no magic or occult or profound sciences whatsoever be found out or understood, but are to be learned and inquired into by divine oracles only. Chapter 14 of the Spirit of the World What it is and how by way of medium it unites occult virtues to their subjects. Democritus and Orpheus and many Pythagoreans have most diligently researched into the virtues of celestial things and nature of inferior things, said that all things are full of God and not without cause, for there is nothing of such transcending virtues which, being destitute of divine assistance, it content with the nature of itself. Also they call those divine powers which are diffused in things, gods, which Zoroaster called divine allurements, Synesius, symbolical enticements, and other call them lives, and some also souls, saying that the virtues of things did depend upon these, because it is the property of the soul to be from one matter extend into diverse things with which it operates. So is a man who extends his intellect into intelligible things and his imagination into imaginable things. And this is that which they understood when they said that the soul of one thing went out and went into another thing, altering it and hindering the operations of it. 
as the diamond hinders the operations of the lodestone that it cannot attract iron, now seeing the soul as the first thing that is movable, and as they say is moved of itself, but the body or the matter is of itself unable and unfit for motion, and does much generate from the soul, therefore they say there is need of more excellent medium, such as one that may be as it were no body, but as it were a soul, or as it were no soul, but as it were a body, by which the soul may be joined to the body. Now they conceive such a medium to be the spirit of the world, that which we call the quintessence, because it is not from the four elements, but a certain first thing, having its being above and besides them. There is therefore such a kind of spirit required to be as it were the medium, whereby celestial souls are joined to gross bodies and bestow upon them wonderful gifts. This spirit is after the same manner in the body of the world as ours in the body of man, for as the powers of our souls are communicated to the members of the body by the spirit, so also the virtue of the soul of the world is diffused through all things by quintessence, for there is nothing found in the world that has not a spark of the virtue thereof. Yet it is more, but most of all, infused into those things which have received, or taken in most of the spirit. Now this spirit is received or taken in by the rays of the stars, so far forth as things render themselves confirmable to them. But this spirit, therefore, every occult property is conveyed into herbs, stones, metals, and animals throughout the sun, moon, planets, and through stars higher than the planets. Now this spirit may be more advantageous to us if anyone knew how to separate it from the elements, or at least to us those things chiefly which do most abound with the spirit, for these things and which the spirit is less drowned in the, a body and less checked by matter, do more powerfully and perfectly act and also more readily generate their like, for in it are all generative and seminary virtues, for which cause the alchemist endeavored to separate spirit from gold and silver, which being rightly separated and extracted, if thou shalt afterward project upon any matter of same kind, i.e. any metal presently, will return in, into gold or silver, and we know how to do that, and we have seen it done, but we could make no more gold than the way of it was, out of which we extracted the spirit, foreseeing that is an extense form, and not intense, it cannot beyond its own bounds change an imperfect body into a perfect, which I deny not, but may be done by another way. Chapter 15. How we must find out and examine the virtues of things by way of similitude. It is now manifest that the occult properties in things are not from the nature of the elements, but infused from above, hid from our senses, and scarce at last known by our reason, which indeed come from the life and the spirit of the world through the rays of the stars, and can know otherwise but by experience and conjecture be inquired into by us. Wherefore, he that desires to enter upon this study must consider that everything moves and turns itself to its like and inclines that to itself which all its might, as well in property, occult virtue as in quality, elementary virtue, sometimes also in substance itself, as we see in salt, for whatsoever has long stood with salt becomes salt, for every agent, when it has begun to act, does not attempt to make a thing inferior to itself, but as much as may be, like and suitable to itself, which also we manifestly see in sensible animals in which the nutritive virtue 
does not change the meat into a herb or a plant, but turns it into sensible flesh. In what things, therefore, there is an excess of any quality or property as heat, cold, boldness, fear, sadness, anger, love, hatred, or any other passion or virtue, whether it be in them by nature or sometimes also by art or chance, as boldness in a harlot, these things do very much move and provoke too much a quality like passion or virtue, so fire moves to fire and the water moves to water, and be that is bold moves to boldness, and it's well known amongst physicians that brain helps the brain and lungs the lungs, so also it is said that the right eye of a frog helps the soreness of a mean's right eye, and the left eye therefore helps the soreness of his left, if they be hanged about his neck in a cloth of its natural color, the like is reported of the eye of a crab, so the foot of a tortoise helps them that have the gout in their being, applied thus as foot to foot and hand to hand, right to right and left to left. After this manner, they say that any animal that is barren causeth another to be barren and of the animal especially the testicles, matrix, or urine. So they report that a woman shall not conceive if she drinks every month of the urine of a mole or anything steeped in it. If therefore we would obtain any property of virtue, let us seek for such an animal, or such other things whatsoever in which such a property is in a mere omniment manner, that in any other thing, and in this let us take that part in which such a property or virtue is most vigorous as if it at any time we would promote love let us seek some animal which is most loving of which kind are pigeons turtles sparrows swallows wedgetails and these take those numbers or parts in which the venerable appetite is most vigorous that sexual appetite such as the heart testicles matrix womb penis sperm and menstruies and it must be done at that time when these animals have this affection most intense for then they do provoke and draw love in like manner to increase boldness let us look for a lion or a cock and of this let us take the heart, eyes, or forehead, and we so must understand that which Celsus the Platonist said that dogs, cow, crows, and cocks conduce much to watchfulness, also the nightingale, and bat, and horn, owl, and in these the heart, head, and eyes especially, therefore it is said, if any shall carry the heart of a cow, crow, or a bat about him, he shall not sleep till he cast it away from him. The same does the head of the bat, dried, and bound to the right arm of him that is awake, for if it be put upon him when he is asleep, it is said that he shall not be awakened till it be taken off from him. After the same matter, does the frog and the owl make one talkative end of these especially the tongue the heart so the tongue also of a water frog laid under the head makes a man speak in his sleep in the heart of a scourge owl laid upon the left breast of the woman that's asleep is said to make her utter all her secrets the same also the heart of a horn owl is said to do also the suit of a hair laid upon the breast of one that is asleep upon the same account do animals that are long-lived conduce the long life and whatsoever things have a power in themselves to renew themselves conduce to the renewment of our body and restore of youth which physicians have often confessed that they know to be true as is manifest of the viper and snake and it is known that 
hearts renew their old age by the eating of snakes. After the same manner, the phoenix is renewed by a fire which she makes of herself. And the lake of virtue there is in a pelican whose right foot being put under the warm dog. After three months there is that regenerated a pelican. pelican. Therefore some physicians, by some certain confections made of vipers and hellebore and the flesh of some such kind of animals, do restore youth, and indeed do some restore it so, as Medea restored old Peleus. It is also believed that the blood of a bear, if it be sucked out of her wound, does increase strength of body. Next chapter. How the operations of several virtues pass from one thing into another and are communicated into the other. Thou must know that so great is the power of natural things that they not only work upon all things that are near them, but their virtue, but also besides this, they infuse into them like power through which by the same virtue they also work upon other things, as we see in the lodestone, which stone indeed does not only draw iron rings, but also infuses a virtue into the rings themselves, whereby they can do the same, which Augustine and Albertus say they saw. After this manner it is, they say, that a common harlot, a grounded in boldness, and impudence does infect all that are near her by the property whereby they are made like herself therefore they say that if any one shall put in the inward garment of an harlot or shall have about him that looking glass which she daily looks into she shall thereby become bold confident impudent and wanton in like manner they say that a clod that was about a dead corpse has received from the hands the property of sadness and melancholy and that he held her wherewith a man was hanged has certain wonderful properties the like story tells pliny if any shall put a green lizard made blind together with iron or gold rings into a glass vessel putting under them some earth and then shutting the vessel and when it appears that the lizard has received his sight shall put him out of the glass that those rings shall help sore eyes the same may be done with rings and a weasel whose eyes after they are with any kind of prick put out it is certain are restored to sight again upon the same account rings are put for a certain time in the nest of sparrows or swallows which afterward are used to procure love and favor next chapter how by enmity and friendship the virtues of things are to be tried and find out in the next place it is requisite that we consider that all things have a friendliness and enmity amongst themselves and everything had something that it fears and dreads, that's an enemy and destructive to it, and on the contrary, something that it rejoiced and delighted in, and is strengthened by, so in the elements fire is an enemy to water and air to earth, but yet they agree amongst themselves, and again, in celestial bodies, Mercury, Jupiter, the Sun, and Moon, are friends to Saturn, Mars, and Venus, enemies to him. All the planets besides Mars are friends to Jupiter. Also all besides Venus hate Mars, Jupiter, and Venus love the Sun. Mars, Mercury, and the Moon are enemies to him. All besides Saturn love Venus. Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn are friends to Mercury. The Sun, Moon, and Mars his enemies. Jupiter, Venus, Saturn are friends to the moon, Mars and Mercury her enemies. There is another kind of enemy amongst the stars, as Saturn, the sun and moon, Jupiter to Mercury, 
Mars to Venus, and their enmity is stronger, whose exaltations are opposite, as of Saturn and the Sun, of Jupiter and Mars, of Venus and Mercury, but her friendship is the strongest who agree in nature, quality, substance and power, as Mars with the Sun, as Venus with the Moon, as Jupiter with Venus, as also their friendship whose exaltation in the house of another is that of Saturn with Venus, of Jupiter with the Moon, of Mars with Saturn, of Sun with Mars, of Venus with Jupiter, of the Moon with Venus, and of what sort of friendship and enmities of the superiors be, such are the inclinations of things subjected to them in these inferior. These dispositions, therefore, of friendship and enmity are nothing else but certain inclination of things of the one to another, desiring such and such a thing, of it be absent, and to move towards it, unless it be hindered, and to equity in it when it is obtained, shunning the contrary, and dreading the approach of it, and not resting in, or being contented with it, Heraclitus, therefore, being guided by this opinion, professed that all things were made by enmity and friendship. Now the inclinations of friendship are such in vegetables and minerals as is the attractive inclination which the lodestone held upon iron and the emerald upon riches and favor, the jasper upon the birth of anything and the stone Achates upon eloquence. In like manner, there is a kind of bitumonious clay that draws fire and leaps into it, wheresoever it sees it, even so does the root of the herb, a proxis draw fire from afar off. Also the same inclinations there is betwixt the male palm and female, whereof when the bow of one shall touch the bow of the other, they fold themselves into mutual embraces, Neither does the female bring fruit, for fruit without the male, and the almond tree, when she is alone, is less fruitful. The vines love the elm, and the olive tree, and myrtle love one the other, also the olive tree and fig tree. Now in the animals, these are amity betwixt the blackbirds, and thrush between the crow, and heron betwixt peacocks and pigeons turtles and birds when Seppo writes to Phaon. To birds, the birds, unlike often joined, are white doves, also the birds that's green, black, turtle loves. Again the whale and the little fish, his guide, are friendly. Neither is his enmity in animals amongst themselves, but also with other things, as with metals, stones, and vegetables, so the cat delights in the herb by rubbing herself upon which she is said to conceive without a male, and there by mares a Cappadocia that exposes themselves to the blast of the wind, and by attraction thereof conceive, so frogs, toads, snakes, and all matter of creeping poisonous things delight in the plant called past flower of whom as the Pisidians say if any one eat he shall die with laughing the tortoise also when he is hunted by the adder eats orgiano and is thereby strengthened and the stork when he had eaten snake seeks for a remedy in origano and the weasel then he goes to fight with the basilic eats rue Whence we come to know that oregano and rue are effectual against poison. So in some animals there is an inbred skill, medicinal art, for when the toad is wounded, when a bite or poison of another animal, he is wont to go to rue or sage and rub the place wounded, and so escape the danger of the poison. So men have learned, with many excellent remedies of disease and virtues of things, from brutes, so swallow have shewed us that salandine is very medicinable for the sight, 
with which they cure the eyes of their young, and the pie, when she is sick, puts a bay leaf into her nest and is recovered. In like manner, cranes, daws, jackdaws, petridges, blackbirds purge their noses, stomachs with the same with which also crows allay the poison of the chameleon and the lion. If he be feverish, is recovered by eating of an ape, the lapwing, being surfeit with eating of grapes, cures himself with southern wood. So hearts have taught us that the herb dittany is very good to draw out darts, for they, being wounded with an arrow, cast it out by eating of this herb. The same do goats in candy, so hints a little, before they bring forth, purge themselves with a certain herb called mountain osier. Also, they are hurt with spiders, seek a remedy by eating of crabs, swine, also being hurt by snakes, cure themselves by eating of them, and crows, when they perceive they are poisoned with a kind of French poison, seek for cure in the oak. Elephants, when they have swallowed a chameleon, help themselves with the wild olive. Bears, being hurt with mandrakes, escape the danger by eating of ants. Geese, ducks, and such like watery fowl, cure themselves with the herb called willsage. Pigeons, turtles, hence with the herb called palitory of the wall. Cranes, with bulrushes. Leopards cure themselves being hurt with the herb called wolfsbane. By means dung, boars with ivy, hens with the herb called sinara. Next chapter of the inclinations of enmities. On the contrary, there are inclinations of enmities, and they are, as it were, the odium and anger, indignation and a certain kind of obstinate contrary of nature, so that anything shuns its contrary and drives it out away of its presence. Such kinds of inclinations as against color, treacle against poison, the sapphire stone against hot boils and feverish heats, and diseases of the eyes, the amethyst, against drunkenness, the jasper against flux of blood and offensive imaginations, the emerald and agnes castus against lust, archetus against poison, peony against the falling sickness, coral against the ebullition of black color and pains of the stomach, the topaz against spiritual heats, such are covetousness, lust, and all matter of excess of love, the like inclination of a bed and the heart of a lampwick, from this presence of which they fly. Also, oregano is contrary to a certain poison's fly, which cannot endure the sun and resists salamanders and lotus cabbage, with which such a deadly hatred that they destroy one the other so cucumbers hate oil and will run themselves into a ring lest they should touch it and it is said that the gal of crow makes a man afraid and drives them sway from where it is it is also certain other things so a diamond does disagree with the lodestone that being said by it it will not suffer iron do by drawn to it and sheep fly from frog parsley as from some deadly thing and that which is more wonderful nature has pictured the sign of this death in the livers of sheep in which the very figure of frog parsley being described does naturally appear so goats do so had garden basil as if there were nothing more pernicious and again amongst animals mice and weasels do disagree whence it is said that mice will not touch cheese if the brains of a weasel be put in the rennet 
and besides that the cheese will not be corrupt with age, so a lizard is so contrary to scorpions that it makes them afraid with its very sight, as also it puts them into a cold sweat, therefore they are killed with the oil of them, which oil also cures the wounds made of scorpions. There is also an enmity betwixt scorpions and mice, wherefore of a mouse be applied to a prick or wound made by a scorpion, it cures it as it is reported. There is also an enmity betwixt scorpions and stellabers, asps and wasps. It is reported also that nothing is so much an enemy to snakes and crabs, and that if swine be heard thereby, they eat them and are cured. The sun also being in cancer, serpents are tormented. Also the scorpion and crocodile kill one the other, and if the bird Ibis does not touch crocodile with one of his feathers, he makes him immovable. The bird called Bustard flies away at the sight of a horse, and a heart runs away at the sight of a ram as also of a viper an elephant trembles at the hearing of the grunting of a hog so does a lion at the sight of a cock and panthers will not touch them that are anointed all over with the broth of a hen especially if garlic has been boiled in it there is also enmity between foxes and swans bulls and jackdaws amongst the birds also some are at the perpetual strife one with another, as also with other animals, as jogdons at, and owls, the kite and crows, the turtle and the ringtail, egypus and eagles, hearts and dragons, also amongst water animals. There is enmity as betwixt dolphins and whirlpools, mullets and pikes, lampreys and congers, also the fish called Porsontrel makes the lobster so much afraid that the lobster seeing the other but near him is struck dead. The lobster and the conger tear one the other. The kivit cat is said to stand so in awe of the panther that he had no power to resist him or touch his skins. And they say that if the skins of both of them be hanged up one against the other, the hairs of the panther's skin fall off. And Oris Apollo said in his hieroglyphics, If one be girt about with the skin of the civet cat, then he may pass safely through the middle, if his enemies and not at all be afraid. Also the lamb is very much afraid of the wolf and flies from him. And they say that if the tail or scale or head of a wolf be hanged upon a sheep coat, the sheep are much trembled and cannot eat their meat of for fear. And Pliny makes mention of a bird called marlin that breaks crow's eggs, which young are so annoyed by the fox that she also will pinch and pull the fox's whelps, and the fox herself also, which when the cows see, they help the fox against her as against common enemy. The little bird, called a linnet, lives in thistles, hates asses because they eat the flowers of thistles. Also, there is such a bitter enemy betwixt the little bird called Esselon and the assy that their blood will not mix together and that at the braying of the assy both the eggs and young of the Esselon perish. There is also such a disagreement betwixt the olive tree and the harlot that if she plant it it will either be always unfruitful or altogether wither a lion fears nothing so much as fired torches and will be tamed by nothing so much as by these and the wolf fears neither sword nor spear but a tamed stone by the throwing of which a wound being made worms breed in the wolf a horse fears a camel so that he cannot endure to see so much as his picture. An elephant, when he ragged, is quieted by seeing of a cock. A snake is afraid of a man that is naked, but pursues a man that is clothed. 
a mad bull is tamed by being tied to a fig tree. Amber draws all things to it besides garden basil, and these things, which are smeared with oil, betwixt which there is a kind of natural antipathy. Next chapter, how the virtues of things are to be tried and find out, which are in them specifically or in any one individual by way of special gift. Moreover, thou must consider that the virtues of things are in some things according to the species, as boldness and courage in a lion, and cockfearfulness in a hare or lamb, ravenousness in a wolf, treachery and deceitfulness in a fox, flattery in a dog, covetousness in a cow, and thaw, pride in a horse, anger in a tiger, and boar, that's bear, sadness and melancholy in a cat, lust in a sparrow, and so of the rest, for the greatest part of natural virtues, does follow the species, yet some are in things individually, as there be some men which do so wonderfully aboard the side of the cat, that they cannot look upon her without quaking, which fear it is manifest is not in them as they are men, and Avicen tells a man that lived in his time, whom all poisonous things did shun, all of them dying, which did chance bite him, he himself not being hurt, and Albertus reported that in a city of the Eubians he saw a wench who would catch spiders to eat them, and being such much pleased with such a kind of meat, was wonderfully nourished therewith. So is boldness in a harlot, fearfulness in a thief, and upon this account it is that philosophers say that any particular thing that never was sick is good against any matter of sickness. Therefore they say that a bone of a dead man who never had a fever being laid upon the patient frees him of his quarantine. There are also many singular virtues infused into particular things by celestial bodies as we have showed before next chapter the natural virtues are in some things throughout their whole substance and in other in certain parts and members against you must consider that the virtues of things are in some things in the whole the whole substance of them or in all their parts as that little fish at chinez which is said to stop a ship by its mere touch, this it does not do according to a particular party, but according to the whole substance. So the civet cat has in its whole substance that dog by the very touch of his shadow hold their peace. So Saladin is good for the sight, not according to any one but all its parts not more in the root than in it the leaves and seeds and so of the rest but some virtues are in things according to some parts of it only in the tongue or eyes or some other members and parts so in the eyes of a basilisk so a most violent power to kill men as soon as they see them the like power is there in the eyes of the civet cat which makes any animal that it has looked upon to stand still, to be amazed and not be able to move itself. The like virtue is there in the eyes of some wolves, which, if they see a man first, make him amazed, and so hears that if he would cry out, he has not the use of his voice. Of his Virgil makes mention when he sings, Morris is dumb, had lost his voice, and why? The wolf and Merce first has catch his eye. So also there were some certain women in Scythia and amongst the Illyrians and Tribalians who as often as they looked angrily upon a man were said to slay him. Also we read of a certain people of Rhodes called Delchines who corrupted all things with their sight wherefore Jupiter drowned them. Therefore witches, when they would after his manner work by witchcraft, 
use the eyes of such kind of animals in their waters for the eyes, for the like effects in like manner do prisms that ants fly away the heart of the lampwing, not from the head, foot or eyes. So the gall of lizards, being bruised in water, is said to gather weasels together, not the tail or the head of it, and the gall of the goats put into the earth in a brazil that's a vessel, gathered frogs together, and a goat's liver is an enemy to butterflies and all maggots, and dogs show them that have the heart of a dog about them, and foxes will not touch such poultry that have eaten the liver of a fox. So diverse things have diverse virtues dispersed variously through several parts as they are from above infused into them according to the diversity of things to be received. As in a man's body, the bones receives nothing but life, the eyes sight, the ears hearing, and there is in a man's body a certain little bone, which the Hebrew called LVZ, and the bigness of a pulse that is husked, which is subject to no corruption, neither is it overcome with fire, but is always preserved unheard, out of which, as they say, is a plant out of the seed, our animal bodies shall in the resurrection of the dead spring up, and these virtues are not cleared by a reason, but by experience. Next chapter of the virtues of the things that are in them only in their lifetime, and such as remain in them even after their death. Moreover, we must know that there are some properties in things only whilst they live, and some that remain after that. So the little fish, Echinus, stops the ships, and the basilisk and Catablepa kill with their sight when they are alive, but when they are dead, no, do no such thing. So they say that in the Golic, if a live dog be applied to the belly, it takes away the pain and herself dies. Like to this is that which Achita says, if you take away a heart, newly taken out of an animal, and whilst it is yet warm, and hang it up, one that has courtin fever, it drives it away. So if any one swallow the heart of a leprick, or swallow, or a weasel, or a mole whilst it is yet warm with natural heat, it shall be helpful to him for remembering, understanding, and foretelling. Hence it is the natural rule, that whatsoever things are taken out of the animals, whether they be stones, any member, excrements, hair, tongue, nails, they must be taken from the animals whilst they be yet living, and if be possible, that so they may be alive afterward. Whence they say, when you take the tongue of a frog, you must put the frog into the water again, and if you take the tooth of a wolf, you must not kill the wolf. And so, of the rest, so writes Democritus, if anyone take out the tongue of a water frog yet living, no other part of the body sticking to it, it should be let into the water again, and lay upon the place where the heart beats of a woman. She shall answer truly whatsoever you ask her. Also, they say, that if the eyes of a frog be before sun rising bound to the sick party, and the frog be let again blind into the water, they will drive away certain egg, as also they will being bound with the flesh of a nightingale on the skin of a heart, keep one always watchful without sleep. Also, the ray of the forkfish being bound to the navel is said to make a woman have an easy travel. If it be taken from it alive and it put into sea again, so they say the right eye of a serpent being applied does help the water of the eyes. If the serpent be let go alive, and there is a certain fish, or great serpent called Miris, whose eye of it be pulled out, and bound to the forehead of the patient is said to cure inflammation of the eyes, and that the eye of the fish grows again, and that he is taken blind that did not let the fish go. Also the teeth of all serpents 
being taken out whilst they are alive and hanged about the patient are said to cure the corte. So does the tooth of a mole take out whilst she is alive being afterwards let go, cure the toothache. And dogs will not bark at those that have the tail of a weasel that is escaped. And Democritus relates that the tongue of a chameleon, if it be taken from her life, does conduce to a great success in trials, and is forfeitable, profitable for women that are in travel. But if be about the outside of the house, if you must take heed that it be not brought into the house, because that would be most dangerous. Moreover, there be some properties that remain after death, and that of these the platonists say that they are things in which the ideas of the matter is less swallowed up in these even after death that which is immortal in them does not cease to work wonderful things so in the herbs and plants pulled asunder and dried that virtue is quick and operative which was infused at first into them by the idea thence it is that as the eagle all her life time does overcome all other birds so also her feathers after that destroy and consume the feathers of all other birds upon the same account does lion skin destroy all other skins and the skins of a civet cat destroys the skin of the panther and the skin of the wolf corrodes the skin of a lamb and some of these do not do it by way of a corporeal contract contact but also sometimes by their very sound so a drummer made by the skin of a wolf makes a drum made of a lamp skin not to sound also a drum made of the skin of the fish is called rochet drives away all creeping things at which distance soever the sound of it is heard and the strings of it instrument made of the instance of a wolf and being strung upon a harp lute with strings made of sheep guts will make no harmony next chapter how inferior things are subject to superior bodies and how the bodies the actions and dispositions of men are ascribed to stars and signs it is manifest that all things inferior are subject to the superior and after a manner as said proclus that they are one and the other in inferior are superior, and in superior are inferior. So in the heaven are things terrestrial, but as in their cause and in a celestial manner, and in the earth are things celestial, but after a terrestrial manner, as in a effect, so we say that there be there are certain things which are solary and certain which are lunary, in which the sun and moon make a strong impression of their virtue. Whence it is that these kind of things receive more operations and proportions like to those of the stars and sign which they are under. So we know that solary things respect the heart and head by reason that Leo is the house of the sun and Aries the exaltation of the sun. So things under Mars are good for the head and testicles by reason of Aries and Scorpio, hence they whose senses fail and head ache by reason of drunkenness if they put their testicles into cold water or wash them with vinegar and find present help but in reference to these it is necessary to know how man's body is distributed to planets and signs know therefore that according to the doctrine of the arabians the sun who rules over the brain heart the high, the marrow, the right eye, and the spirit, also the tongue, the mouth, and the rest of the organs of the senses, as well internal as external, also the hands, feet, legs, nerves, and the powers of imagination, that mercury rules over the spleen, stomach, bladder, womb, and right ear, and also the faculty of the common sense, that Saturn rules over the liver and the fleshy part of the stomach that jupiter over the belly and navel whence it is written by the ancients that the effigies of a navel was laid upon the temple of jupiter hammon 
Also, some attributes to him the ribs, breasts, bowels, blood, arms, and the right hand and left ear, and the powers natural. And some set Mars over the blood and veins, the kidneys, the bag of the gallbladder, the buttocks, the back, motion of the sperm, and the irisible power. Again, they set Venus over the kidneys, the testicles, the privities, the womb, the seed, and consubiscible power, as also the flesh, fat, belly, breast, navel, and all such parts as serves to venereal acts, also the os sacrum, the backbone, and loins, as also the head mouth with which they give a kiss as a token of love. Now the moon, although she may challenge the whole body and every member thereof according to the variety of the signs, yet more particularly they ascribe to her the brain, lungs, marrow of the backbone, the stomach, the menstrues, and all other excrements, and the left eye as also the power of increasing, by Hermes says, that there are seven holes in the head of an animal distributed to the seven planets, the right ear, the Saturn, the left to Jupiter, the right nostril to Mars, the left to Venus, the right ear to Saturn, the left to Jupiter, the right nostril to Mars, the left to Venus, the right eye to Sun, the left to the Moon, and the mouth to Mercury. The several signs also of the zodiac take care of their members, so Mars governs the head and face, Taurus the neck, Gemini the arms and shoulders, Cancer the breast, lungs, stomach and arms, Leo the heart, stomach, liver and the back, Virgo the bowels and bottom of the stomach, Libra the kidneys, thighs and buttocks, Scorpio the genitals, the privates and womb, Sagittarius the thigh and groins, Capricorn the knees, Aquarius the legs and shines, and Pisces the feet, and as the triplicities of these signs answer one the other and agree in celestials, so also they agree in the members which is sufficiently manifest by experience because with the coldness of the feet the belly and the breast are affected which members answer the same triplicity whence it is if a medicine be applied to the one it helps the other as by the warming of the feet the pain of the belly ceaseth remember therefore this order and now that things which are under any of the planets have a certain particular aspect or inclination to those members that are attributed to that planet, and especially to the houses and exaltations thereof. For the rest of the dignities, those triplicities and marks and face are of little account in this. Upon this account, therefore, piony, balm, glove, gillyflowers, citron pills, sweet marjoram, Cinnamon, saffron, lignum aloes, frankincense, amber, musk, and myrrh help the head and heart by reason of soul, the sun. Aries and Leo, so does ribwort, the herb of Mars, help the head and testicles by reason of Aries and Scorpio, and so of the rest. Also, all things under Saturn conduce to sadness and melancholy, those under Jupiter to mirth and honor, those under Mars to boldness, contention, and anger, those under the sun to glory, victory, and courage, those under Venus to love, lust, those under Mercury to eloquence, those under the moon to a common life, also all the actions and dispositions of man are distributed according to the planets. For Saturn governs old men, monks, melancholy, 
men and hid treasures and those things which are obtained with long journeys and difficulty by jupiter those that are religious prelates kings and dukes and such kind of gains that are god lawful mars rules over barbers surgeons physicians surgeons executioners butchers all that make fires bakers soldiers who are very well called martial men also do the other stars signify their office as they are described in the book of astrologers next chapter how we shall know what stars natural things are under and what things are under the sun which are called solary now it is very hard to know what star or sign everything is under yet it is known through the imitations of their rays or motion or figure of the superiors also some of them are known by their colors and odors and also some by the effects of their operation answering to some stars so then solary things or things under the power of the sun are amongst elements the lucid flame in the humors the pure blood and spirit of life amongst tastes that which is quick mixed with sweetness amongst metals gold by reason of its splendor and its receiving that from the sun which makes it cordial and amongst stones they which resemble the rays of the sun by their golden sparklings as does the glittering of the stone Aetetus, which has power against the falling sickness and poisons so also the stone which is called the eye of the sun being of a figure like to the apple of the eye from the middle whereof shines forth the ray it comforts the brain and strengthens the sight so the carbuncle which shines by night had a virtue against all airy and vaporous poison so the chrysolite stone is of a light green color in which when it is held against the sun there shines forth a golden star and this comforts those parts that serve for breeding and helps those that be asthmatical and if it be bored through and the whole filled with the mane of, of an assy and bound to the left arm it drives away idle imaginations and melancholy fears it puts away foolishness so the stone called iris which is like crystal in color being often found with six corners some under some roof part of it is held against the rays of the sun and the other part is held in the shadow it gathers the rays of the sun into itself which whilst it sends them forth by way of reflection makes a rainbow appear in the opposite wall also the stone heliotropion heliotrope green like the jasper or emerald beset with red specks that's a bloodstone makes a man constant renewed and famous also it conduces to long life and the virtue of it indeed is most wonderful upon the beams of the sun which is said to turn into blood to appear of the color of blood as of the sun were eclipsed when it is joined to the juice of a herb of the same name and be put into a vessel of water there is also another virtue of it more wonderful and that is upon the eyes of man which sight it does so dim and dazzle that it does not suffer him that carries it to see it this it does not without the help of the herb of the same name which also is called heliotropium heliotrope following the sun these virtues does albertus magnus and william of paris confirm in her writings the hyacinth also has the virtue of the sun against poisons and pestif various vapors it makes him that carries to be safe and acceptable it conduces also to riches and wit it strengthens the heart being held in the mouth it does wonderful cheer of the mind also 
there is the stone pyrophilus of a red mixture, which Albertus Magnus says Esalipius makes mention of it in one of his epistles unto Octavius Augustus, saying that there is a certain poison so wonderful called which preserves the heart of man taken out from burning, so that if it for any time be put into fire, it is turned into a stone, and that is that stone which is called pyrophilus. From the fire it has a wonderful virtue against poison, and it makes him that carries it to be renewed and dreadful to his enemies, but above all the stone is most solary, which Apollonius is reported to have found, and which is called Pantaura, which draws other stones to it, as the lodestone does iron, most powerful against all poisons. It is called by some Pateras, because it is spotted like the beast called the panther. It is therefore also called Pantocras, because it contains all colors. Aaron calls it Eventrum. Also, there are other solary stones as the Topazius, Chrysopasus, the Rubine, and Balagius is also Repigmentum and things of a gold color and very lucid. Amongst plants, also trees, those are solary which turns towards the sun, as the marigold and those which fold in their leaves when the sun is near upon setting, but when it rises, unfolds their leaves by little and little. The low tree is also solary, is it manifest the figure of fruits and leaves, so also peony, celandine, balm, ginger, gentian, dittany, and vervain, which is of use in prophesying and expiations, as also driving away evil spirits. The bay tree, also it is concentrated to phoebus, so is the cedar, the palm tree, the ash, the ivy, and vine, and whatsoever repel poisons and lightning, and those things which never fear the extremites of the winter, solar, also are mint, mastic, sodary, saffron, balsam, ember, musk, yellow honey, lignum aloes, cloves, cinnamon, Salamus, aromaticus, pepper, frankincense, sweet marjoram, also liba notice, which Orpheus calls the sweet perfume of the sun. Amongst animals, those are soldiery, which are magnanimous, courageous, ambitious of victory and renown, as the lion, king of the beasts, the crocodile, the spotted wolf, the ram, the bear, the lion, king of the herd, which was by the Egyptians and Heliopolis dedicated to the sun, which they called Veritas, and an ox was concentrated to Apis in Memphis, and a Hermites, a bull by the name of Petis. The wolf also was concentrated to Apollo and Latona. Also, the beast called Baboon is solary which twelve times a day every hour barks, and in time of equinostium, of the equinox, urinates twelve times every hour, the same also it does in the night. When the Egyptians did engrave him upon her fountains, also amongst the birds these are solary, the phoenix being but one of that kind, and the eagle, the queen of birds, also the virtue, the swan, and those which sing at the sight of the rising sun, and as it were called upon to rise, as the cock crow, also the hog, which because it in divinity of the Egyptians is an emblem of the spirit and light, as by Porofiri, reckoned amongst the solary birds, moreover all things, as some have resemblance of the works of the sun, as worms shining in the night, and the beetle, which is a creature that lies 
under caudal, also according to apius interpretation, such whose eyes are changed according to the course of the sun, are accounted solary, and those things which come from them, and amongst fish the sea calf is chiefly solary, who does resist lighting, also shellfish, and the fish called pulmo, both which shines in the night, and the fish called stella, starfish, for his parching heat, and the fish called strombi, or sea snail, that follow their king, and margari, the oyster, which also have a king, and being dried, are hardened into a stone of a golden color. Next chapter. What things are lunary, or under the power of the moon? These things are lunary amongst the elements, that's the earth, and then the water, as well that of the sea, as of the rivers, and all moist things, as the moisture of trees and animals, especially they which are white, or the whites of an egg, fat, sweat, phlegmy, phlegm, superfluids of bodies, amongst tastes, salts, and insipid, amongst metals, silver amongst stones, crystals, and silver, mercesite, and all those stones that are white and green, also the stone, selenites, lunary, shining from the white body, with a yellow brightness, imitating the motion of the moon, having in the figure of the moon which daily increases or decreases as does the moon also pearls which are generated in shells of fishes from the droppings of water also the beryl amongst plants and trees these are lunary as the celantropion which turns towards the moon as does the heliotropion towards the sun and the palm tree sends forth a but at every rising of the moon, hisope also, and rosemary, agnes costo, and the olive tree are lunary, also the herb, shinosta, which increases and decreases with the moon, in substance, and number of leaves, not only in sap, and virtue, which indeed is in some sort common to all plants, except onions, which are under the influence of Mars, which have contrary properties, as amongst flying things, the Saturnian bird, called a quail, is a great enemy to the moon and sun. Lunary animals are such as delight to be in man's company, and such as do naturally excel in love or hatred as all kinds of dogs. The chameleon also is lunary, which always ensues a color according to the variety of the color of the sub object, as the moon changes her nature according to the variety of the sign which it is found in. Lunary also are swine, hints, goats, and all animals whatsoever that observe and imitate the motion of the moon, as the baboon and panther, which is said to have a spot upon her shoulder like the moon increasing into a roundness and having horns that bend inwards cats also are lunary whose eyes become greater or less according to the course of the moon and those things which are like nature as menstrual blood of which are made wonderful and strange things by the magicians the civet cat also changing her sex being obnoxious to divers sorceries and all animals that live in water as well as on land as otters and such as prey upon fish also all monstrous beasts such as without any manifest seed are equivocally generated as mice which sometimes are generated by coition sometimes of the purification of the earth amongst fowls geese ducks, idoppers, and all kinds of watery fowl are prey upon fish as the heron, and those that are equivocally produced as wasps and carcasses of horses, beasts of the putrefaction of cows, small flies of putrefied wine, 
and beetles of the flesh of Ascii's, but most lunary of all is the two-horned beetle, horned after the manner of the bull, which digs under cow dung and there remains for the space of twenty-eight days, in which the moon measures the whole zodiac, and in the twenty-ninth day, when it thinks there will be a conjunction of their brightness, it opens the dung and casts it into water, from which then comes beetles. Amongst fishes there are lunary, a lurus which whose eyes are changed according to the course of the moon, and whatsoever observes the motion of the moon, as tortoise, the echinese, crab, oysters, cockles, and frogs. Next chapter. What things are Saturn-like and under the power of Saturn? Saturnian things amongst elements are earth and also water amongst humors, black color that is moist as well natural as advantageous, um, color accepted. Amongst tastes, sour, tart, and dead. Amongst metals, lead and gold, by reason of its weight and the golden marcasite. Amongst stones, the onyx, the ziaza, the camonius, the sapphire, the brown jasper, the chalcedon, the lodestone, and all dark, weighty, earthy things amongst plants and trees, the daffodil, dragonsworth, rue, cumin, hellebore, and tree from whence benzoin comes, mandrake, opium, and those things which stupefy, and those things which are never sown, and never bear fruit, and those which bring forth berries of dark color and black fruit, as the black fig tree, the pine tree, the cypress tree, and the certain tree used at burials which never spring afresh but varies rough of a bitter taste of a strong smell of a black shadow yielding a most sharp pitch bearing a most unprofitable fruit never dies with age deadly dedicated to pluto as is the herb pass flower with which were wont anciently to strow the graves before they put the dead body into it. Wherefore it was lawful to make their garlands at feasts with all herbs and flowers besides best flowers, because it was mournful and not conducing to mirth. Also all creeping animals, living apart and solitary, nightly sad, contemplative, dull, covetous, fearful, melancholy, that take much pains, slow, that feed grossly, and such as eat their young. Of those kinds, therefore, are the ape, the cat, the hog, the mule, the camel, the bear, the mole, the asses, the wolf, the hare, the dragon, the basilisk, the toad, all serpents and creeping things, scorpions, pismires, ants, and such things as proceed from putrefaction in the earth, in water or in ruins of houses as mice and many sorts of vermin, amongst burns those are Saturnian, which have long necks and harsh voices as cranes, ostriches and peacocks, which are dedicated to Saturn and Juno, also the ostrich owl, screech owl, the horned owl, the bat, the lapwing, the crow, the quail, whilst is the most envious bird of all, amongst fishes, the eel, living apart from all other fishes, the lamprey, the dogfish, which devours her young, also the tortoise, oysters, cockles, to which may be added sea sponges and all things as come of them. Next chapter. What things are under the power of Jupiter and are called jovial? Things under Jupiter amongst elements are the air amongst humors, blood and the spirit of life, also all things which respect the increase, nourishment and vegetation of life. 
amongst tastes such as are sweets and pleasant among metals tin silver and gold by reason of their temperateness amongst stones the hyacinth beryl sapphire the emerald green jasper and airy colors amongst plants and trees sea green garden basil buglos mice spike mints mastic alisampane the violet darnel henbane the polar tree and those which are called lucky trees as the oak the tree horse chestnut which is like an oak but much bigger the holm tree the beech tree the hazel tree the service tree the white fig tree the pear tree the apple tree the vine the plum tree the ash the dog tree and the olive tree and also oil also all manner of corn as barley wheat also raisins lissories sugar and all things whose sweetness is manifest and subtle partaking somewhat of an astringent and sharp taste as are nuts almonds pineapples filberts pistachios roots of peony mirabolos pubarp and mana orpheus adds storax amongst animals such as have some stateliness and wisdom in them and those which are mild well trained up and of good disposition as the heart and elephant and those which are gentle as sheep and lambs amongst birds those that are of a temperate complexion as hens together with the yolk of their eggs also the partridge the pheasant the swallow pelican cuckoo the stork birds given to a kind of devotion which are emblems of gratitude the eagle is dedicated to jupiter she is the ensign of empires and an emblem of justice and clemency amongst the fish are the dolphin the fish called anchovy the sheet fish by reason of her devoteness next chapter what things are under the power of mars and are called martial these things are martial amongst elements fire together with all adust and sharp things amongst humors color also bitter taste dart and burning the tongue and causing tears amongst metals are iron red brass and all fiery red and sulfurous things amongst stones the diamond lodestone the bloodstone the jasper the stone that consists of diverse kinds and the amethysts amongst plants the tree hellebore garlic euphorbium cartabana armoniac radish the laurel wolfsbane scamoni and those such are poisonous by reason of too much heat and those which are beset around about with prickles are by touching the skin burned it prick it or make it swell as cardis the nettle cow food and such as being eaten cause tears as onions asolinia bleaks mustard seed and all thorny trees and the dog tree which is dedicated to mars and all such animals are warlike ravenous bold and of clear fancy as the horse mole goat kid wolf leopard and wild ass serpents also and dragon f full of displeasure and poison also all such as are offensive to man as gnats flies baboon by reason of his anger all birds that are ravenous devour flesh break bones as the eagle the falcon the hawk the vulture and those which are called the fatal birds as the horn owl the screech owl gastrels kites and such as are hungry and ravenous and such as make a noise in their swallowing 
as cows does the pie which above all the rest is dedicated to Mars, and among fishes, the pike, the barbel, the forkfish, the fish that has horns like a ram, the sturgeon, the glaucus, all which are great devourers and revenues. Next chapter. What things are under the power of Venus and are called venereal? Those things under the power of Venus amongst elements air and water amongst humors, phlegm with blood spirit and seed amongst tastes, those which are sweet, untocious and delicatable amongst metals, silver and brass, both yellow and red amongst stones, the beryl, chrysolite, emerald, sapphire, green jasper, carnelian, the stone aetites, the Lazuli, stone, coral, and all of fair various white and green color, amongst plants and trees, vervain, violet, maidenhair, phalerain, which by Arabian is called fu, also thyme, the gum ladanum, ambergris, musk, sanders, that sandalwood, coriander, and all sweet perfumes and delightful and sweet fruits as sweet pears, figs, pomegranates, which the poets say was in Cyprus first sown by Venus, also the rose or of Lucifer was dedicated to her as the myrtle tree of Hesperus, moreover, all luxurious, delicious animals and of a strong love as dogs, conies, stinking sheep and goats, both female and male, which generate sooner than any other animal, for they say that he couples after the seventh day of his being brought forth, also the bull of his disdain, and the cow for its wantonness, amongst birds, the swan, the wagtail, the swallow, the pelican, the burgander, which are very loving to their young, also the crow, the pigeon, which is dedicated to Venus, and the turtle dove. One whereof was commanded to be offered at the purification after bringing forth. The sparrow also was dedicated to Venus, which was commanded in the law to be used in the purification. After the leprosy, a martial disease, then which nothing was one of more force to resist it. Also the Egyptian called it the eagle Venus, because she is prone to venery, for after she had been trod thirteen times a day, if the male call her, she runs to him again. Amongst fishes, these are venereal, the lustful pilcards, the lecherous guilt head, the waiting for her love to her young, crab fighting for her, his mate, and titamalus for his fragrance and sweet smell. Next chapter what things are under the power of mercury and are called mercurial things under mercury are these amongst elements water although it moves all things distinctly amongst humors these especially which are mixed as also the animal spirits amongst taste those who are various strange and mixed amongst metals quicksilver tin silver, marsasite, and amongst stones, the emerald, ashates, agates, red marble, topaz, and those which are of diverse colors and various figures naturally, and those that are artificial as glass, and those which have a color mixed with yellow and green, amongst plants and trees, the hazel, five-leaved grass, the herb, Mercury, Fermatary, Pimpernel, Marjoram, Parsley, and such as have shorter and less leaves, being compounded of mixed natures and diverse colors. Animals also that are of quick sense, ingenious, strong, inconstant, swift, and such as become easily acquainted with man as dogs, apes, foxes, weasels, the heart and mule, and all animals that are of both sexes, 
and those which can change their sex, as the hare, civet cat, and such like. Among birds, those which are naturally witty, melodious, and inconstant, as the lidded, nightingale, blackbird, thrush, lark, the gnat sapper, the bird calandra, the parrot, the pie, the bird ibis, the bird porphyrio, the black beetle with one horn, and amongst fish, the fish called Truchius, which goes into himself, also pur contrel for deceitfulness and changefulness, and the fork fish for its industry, the mullet also that shakes off the bat on the look with its tail. Next chapter that the whole sublunary world and those things which are in it are distributed to planets. Moreover, whatsoever is found in the whole world is made according to the government of the planets and accordingly receives its virtue. So in fire, the enlivening light thereof is under the government of the sun, the heat of it under Mars, in the earth the various superficies thereof under the moon, and mercury, and the starry heaven, and the whole mass of it under Saturn, but in the middle element, air is under Jupiter, water, the moon, but being mixed, are under Mercury and Venus. In like manner, natural active causes observe the moon, the matter the moon, the fruitlessness of active causes Jupiter, the fruitfulness of the matter. Venus, the sudden affecting of anything, Mars and Mercury, that for the vehemency, this for his dexterity and manifold virtue, but the permanent continuation of all things is ascribed to Saturn, else amongst vegetables, everything that bears fruit is from Jupiter and everything that bears flowers is from Venus, all seed and bark is from Mercury, and all roots from Saturn, and all wood from Mars, and leaves from the moon. Wherefore, all that bring forth fruits and not flowers are of Saturn and Jupiter, but they that bring forth flowers and seed and not fruit are of Venus and Mercury. These which are brought forth of their own accord with seed are of the moon and Saturn. All beauty is from Venus, all strength from Mars, and every planet rules and disposeth that which is like to it. Also in stones their weight, clamminess and slipticness is of Saturn, their use and temperament of Jupiter, their hardness from Mars, their life from the sun their beauty and fairness from Venus, their occult virtue from Mercury, and their common use from the moon. Next chapter, how provinces and kingdoms are distributed to planets. Moreover, the whole orb of the earth is distributed by kingdoms and provinces to the planets and signs. For Macedonia, Thracia, Illyria, Ariana, Gordiana, many of which countries are in the lesser Asia, are under Saturn and Capricorn, but with Aquarius under him are the Sora Mountain, country, Oxiana, Sogdiana, Arabia, Fazania, Media and Ethiopia, which countries, for the most part, belong to the more inward Asia. Under Jupiter with Sagittarius are Tuscana, Celtica, Spain and Happy Arabia. Under him with Pisces are Lycia, Lydia, Cilicia, Pamphylia, Paglagononia, Nasamonia and Libya. Mars with Aries governs Brittany, Britain, France, Germany, Bastarnia, the lower parts of Syria, Idumea and Judea. With Scorpio he rules Comogena, Cappadocia, Metogenium, Mauritania, and Gitulia. The sun with Leo, Italy, Apulia, Sicilia, Phoenicia, 
Chaldea, the Orcanians, Venus with Taurus governs the Isles, Cyclades, the seas of the Little Asia, Cyprus, Parthia, Media, Persia, but with Libra, she commands the people of the islands Practica, of Caspia, of Ceres, of Thebais, of Oasis, and of Troglodis. Mercury with Gemini rules Hirsania, Armenia, Montiana, Cyrenaica, Marmarisa, and the Lower Egypt, but with Virgo, Greece, Achaia, Creta, Babylon, Mesopotamia, Assyria, and Ella. Wednesday of that place are in scripture called Elamites. The moon with cancer governs Bitivia, Phrygia, Colchica, Numidia, Africa, Carthage, and all Carchedonia. These we have in this matter garnered from Ptolemy's opinion to which, according to the writings of other astrologers, many more may be added. But he, which knows how to compare these divisions of provinces according to the divisions of the stars, with the ministry of the ruling intelligences and blessings of the tribes of Israel, the lots of the apostles and typical seals of the sacred scripture shall be able to obtain great prophetical oracles concerning every region, things to come. Next chapter. What things are under the signs, the fixed stars, and their images? The like consideration is to be had in all things concerning the figures of the fixed stars. So they will have the terrestrial ram to be under the rule of the celestial Aries, and the terrestrial bull and ox to be under the celestial Taurus, so also that Cancer should rule over crabs, and Leo over lions, Virgo over virgins, and Scorpio over scorpions, Capricorn over goats, Sagittarius over horses, and Pisces over fishes. Also the celestial Ursa over bears, Hydra over serpents, and the dog star over dogs, and so of the rest. Now Opuleus distributes certain and peculiar herbs to the sign and planets. To Aries, the herb sage, to Taurus, vervain that grows straight, to Gemini, vervain that grows bending, the Cancer, comfrey, to Leo, so bread, to Virgo, calamint, to Libra, mugwort, to Scorpio, scorpion grass, to Sagittarius, pimpernel, to Capricorn, the dock, the Aquarius, dragon's word, to Pisces, heart word, and to the planets, these, the Saturn, sanguine, to Jupiter, agrimony, to Mars, sulfur word, to the Sun, marigold, to Venus, wand word, to Mercury, mullein, to the Moon, peony, but Hermes, whom Albertus follows, distributes to the planets these, to Saturn, daffodil, to Jupiter, henbane, to Mars, ribwort, to the Sun, knotgrass, to Venus, vervain, to Mercury, sinkfoil, to the Moon, goosefoot. We also know by experience that asparagus is under Aries and carden basil is under Scorpio. For of the shavings of ram's horn, so comes forth asparagus. And garden basil rubbed betwixt two stones produces scorpions. Moreover, I will, according to the doctrine of Hermes and Tabit, reckon up some of the more eminent stars, whereof the first is called the head of Algol, and among stones rules over the diamond, amongst plants black hellebore and mugwort the second are the pleiades are seven stars which amongst stones rule over crystals and the stone diodocus amongst plants the herb diacedon and frankincense and fennel and amongst metals quicksilver the third is the stars aldeboran which had under it amongst the stones carbuncle 
and the ruby, amongst plants the milky thistle and maltry silva. The fourth is called the goat star, which rules among stones, sapphire, amongst plants, horehound, mint, mugwort, and mandrake. The fifth is called the great dog star, which among stones rules over the barrel, amongst plants, seven, mugwort, and dragonwort, and amongst animals, the tongue of his. The sixth is called the lesser dog star, and among stones rules over the agates, amongst plants, the flower of marigold and penny royal the seventh is called the heart of the lion which among stones rules over the grenade amongst plants celandine mugwort and mastic the eighth is the tail of the lesser bear which among stones rules over the lodestone amongst herbs succory whose leaves and flowers turn toward the north also mugwort and the flowers of periwinkle and amongst animals the tooth of a wolf, the ninth called the wing of the crown, under which, among stones, are such stones as are of the color of the black onyx stone, amongst plants the burr, quadragonus, henbane, and comfrey, and amongst animals the tongue of a frog. The tenth is called spica, which had under it, among stones, the emerald, amongst plants, sage, trefoil, periwinkle, mugwort, and mandrake. The eleventh is called alchemic, which among stones rules over jasper, amongst plants the plantain. The twelfth is called alphia, and under this among stones is the topaz, amongst plants rosemary, trefoil, and ivy. The thirteenth is called the heart of a scorpion, under which among stones is the sordonius, amethyst, amongst plants. Long Aristocoli, Aristoloki, and Saffron is the falling vulture, under which, amongst stones, is the chrysolite, amongst plants, succory, and fermitary. The fifteenth is the tail of Capricorn, under which, amongst stones, is the chalcedon or chalcedony, amongst plants, marjoram, mugwort, and catnip or nip, and the root of mandrake. Moreover, this we must know that every stone or plant or animal or anything that is not governed by one star alone, but many of them receive influence, not separated, but conjoined, from more many stars. So among stones, the chalcedony is under Saturn and Mercury together with the tail of the scorpion and Capricorn the sapphire under Jupiter, Saturn, and the star Aljajot. Tutia is under Jupiter and the sun, and the moon, the emerald under Jupiter, Venus and Mercury under the star Spicia. The amethyst, is said Hermes, is under Mars, Jupiter, and the heart of the scorpion. The jasper, which is of diverse kind, is under Mars, Jupiter, and the star Alchemic. The chrysolite is under the sun, Venus and Mercury is also under the star, Alchemic. The falling vulture, the topaz is under the sun and star, Alphea, the diamond under Mars and the head of Algol in like manner. Amongst vegetables, the herb dragon is under Saturn and the celestial dragon. Mastic and the mints are under Jupiter and the sun, but mastic is also under the heart of the lion, and mint under the goat star. Hellebore is dedicated to Mars and the head of Algol, Mose and Sanders, to the sun and Venus, Coriander to Venus and Saturn. Amongst animals, the sea calf is under the sun and Jupiter, the fox and ape under Saturn and Mercury, and domestical dogs under mercury and the moon and thus we have showed more things in these inferior by their superior next chapter of the seals and characters of natural things all stars have their peculiar nature properties and conditions the seals and characters whereof they produce through their rays even in these inferior things 
in elements, in stones, in plants, in animals and their members, where everything receives from an harmonious disposition and from its star shining upon it. Some particular seal or character stamped upon it, which is the significator of that star or harmony containing in it a particular and peculiar virtue, differing from other virtues of the same matter, both generically, specifically, and numerously, everything, therefore, has its character pressed upon it by its star for some peculiar effect, especially by that star which does principally govern it, and these characters contain and retain in them the peculiar natures, virtues, and roots of their stars, and produce the like operations upon other things, in which they are reflected, and stir up, and help the influences of their stars, whether they be planets or fixed stars, and figures, and celestial signs, as often as they shall be made in a fit manner, and it their due and accustomed times, which ancient wise men considering, such as labor, much in the finding of out of the occult properties of things did set down in writing the images of the stars their figures seals marks characters such as nature herself did describe by the rays of the stars in these inferior bodies some in stones some in planets and joints and knots and bows and some in diverse members of animals for the bay tree and lotus tree and the marigold are solary plants, and their roots and knots being cut off show the characters of the sun, so also in the bone and shoulder blades in animals, whence there arose a spatulary kind of divining by the shoulders blades and a stone and stony things, the characters and images of celestial things are often found. By seeing that in some great and diversity of things there is in not a traditional knowledge only in a few things which human understanding is able to reach, therefore leaving those things which are to be found out in planets and stones and other things as also the members of diverse animals, we shall limit ourselves to man's nature only which seeing it is the completest image of the whole universe containing in itself whole heavenly harmony, will without all doubt abundantly afford us the seals and characters of all the stars and celestial influences, and those as the more efficacious which are less differing from the celestial nature, but as the numbers of the stars is known to God alone so also their effects and seals upon these inferior things. Wherefore, no human intellect is able to attain to the knowledge of them, whence very few of those things became known to us which the ancient philosophers and chiromancers attained to, partially by reason and partially by experience, and there be many things yet hid in the treasure of nature we shall here in this place note some few seals and characters of nature have their original and in what things they are to be inquired after. There follow the figures of divine letters. Next chapter how by natural things and their virtues we may draw forth and attract the influences and virtues of celestial bodies. Now if you desire to receive virtue of any part of the world or from any star, you shall, those things being used which belong to the star, come under its particular influence as wood is fit to receive fame by reason of sulfur, pitch and oil. Nevertheless, when you dost any 
one species of things or individual rightly apply many things which are things of the same object scattered amongst themselves comfortable to the same idea and star presently by the matter so opportunely fitted and singular gift is infused by the idea by means of the soul of the world i say opportunely fitted under a harmony like to the harmony which did infuse a certain virtue into the matter for although things have some virtues such as we speak of yet those virtues do solely hid that there is seldom any effect produced by them but as in a grain of mustard seed bruised the sharpness which lay hid is stirred up and as the heat of the fire does make the letters apparently seen which before could not be read that were writ with the juice of an onion or milk and letters wrote upon a stone with the fat of a goat are altogether unperceivable when the stone is put into vinegar appear and show themselves and as blow with a stick stirs up the madness of a dog which before lay asleep so does the celestial harmony disclose virtues lying in the water stirs them up strengthens them and makes them manifest and as i may so say produces that into act which before was only in power when things are rightly exposed to it in a celestial season as for example if you do desire to attract virtue from the sun and to seek those things that are solary amongst vegetables plants metals stones and animals these things are to be used and take chiefly which in a solary order are higher for these are more available so you shall draw a singular gift from the sun through the beams thereof being seasonable receives together and through the spirit of the world next chapter of the mixtures of natural things one with the other and their benefit it is most evident that in the inferior nature of all powers of superior bodies are not found comprehended in any one thing but are dispersed through many kinds of things among us these are many solary things whereof every one does not contain all the virtues of the sun but some have some properties from the sun and others other some wherefore it is sometimes necessary that there be mixtures in the operation and if a hundred or thousand virtues of the sun were dispersed through so many plants animals and the like we may gather all these together and bring them into one form in which we shall see all the said virtues being united contained now there is a twofold virtue in commixtion one which was first planted in its parts and is celestial the other is obtained by a certain and artificial mixture of things mixed amongst themselves and of the mixtures of them according to certain properties such as agree with the heaven and a certain constellation and this virtue descend by a certain likeness and aptness and is in things amongst themselves towards their superior and just as much as the following do by degree correspond with them that go before where the patient is fitly applied to its agent so from certain composition of herbs vapors and such like made according to natural philosophy and astronomy there results a certain form endowed with many gifts of the stars as in the honey of bees that which is gathered out of the juice of innumerable flowers and brought into one form contains the virtue of all by a kind of divine and admirable art of the bees yet this is not to be less wondered at which edocus gidius reports of an artificial kind of honey which is certain natures of giants in libya knew how to make out of flowers and that very good and not far inferior to that of the bees for every mixture 
which consists of many several things, is then most perfect. When it is so firmly compacted in all parts that it becomes one, is very well firm to itself and can hardly be dissipated, and we sometimes see stones and diverse bodies to be by a certain natural power conjugated and united, and they seem to be wholly one thing, as we see two trees by grafting to become one, also oysters with stones by a certain occult virtue of nature, and there have been seen some animals which have been turned into stones, and so united with the substance of the stone, that they seem to make one body, and that also homogeneous, so the tree ebony is one while wood and another while stone. When therefore any one makes a mixture of many matters under the celestial influences, then the variety of celestial actions on the one hand and natural powers on the other hand being conjoined together does indeed cause wonderful things. By ointments, by collieries, by fumes and such like, which fizz are read in the book of Carmens, Archita, Democritus, and Hermes, who is named Alcorat, and of many others. Next chapter of the union of mixed things and the introduction of a more noble form and the senses of life. Moreover, we must know that by how much the more noble the form of one thing is, by so much the more prone and apt it is to receive and powerful to act, then the virtues of things do then become wonderful, when they are put to matters that are mixed and prepared in fit season to make them alive, by procuring life for them from the stars, as also a sensible soul as a more noble form, for there is so great a power in prepared matter, which we see to then receives life, when a perfect mixture of qualities seems to break the former contrariety, for so much the more perfect things receive, by how much their temper is more remote from contrariety. Now the heaven is a prevalent cause, thus from the beginning of everything to be generated by the concussion and perfect digestion of the matter, together with life, bestows celestial influences and wonderful gifts according to the capacity that is in that life, and sensible soul to perceive more noble and subtle virtues, for the celestial virtue does otherwise lay asleep, as sulfur kept from flame, but in living bodies as does always burn as kindled sulfur. Then, by its vapor, it fills all the places that are next to it, to so certain wonderful works are worth, such as are read in the book of Nemeth, which is titled A Book of the Law of Pluto, because such kind of monstrous generations are not produced according to the laws of nature, for we know that of worms are generated gnats, and horse wasps of calf and ox bees, of a crab his legs being taken off, and he buried into the ground a scorpion, of a dog dried into powder, and put into water, are generated frogs, but if it be baked in a pie, and cut into pieces, and put into a moist place under the ground, those are generated from it. Of the herb, garden basil, bruised between two stones, are generated scorpions, and of the hairs of a menstruous woman put under dung are bred serpents, and the hair of a horse tail put into water receives life, and is turned into a pernicious worm. And there is an art wherewith by a hand setting upon eggs may be generated a form like a man, which I have seen. I knew how to make which magicians say has a wonderful virtue, and this they call the true mandrake. You must, therefore, know which and what kind of matters are either of nature or art, begin or perfected or compounded of more things 
than what celestial influences they are able to receive, for a congruity of natural things is sufficient for the receiving of influence from celestial, because when nothing does hinder the celestials to send forth their lights upon inferiors, they suffer no matter to be destitute of their virtue, whereof is much matter as a perfect and pure, and not unfit to receive the celestial influence for what is the binding and continuity of the matter to the soul of the world, which does so daily flow in upon natural things, and things which nature has prepared, that it is impossible that a prepared matter should not receive life or a more noble form. Next chapter, how by some certain natural and artificial preparations we may attract certain celestial and vital gifts. Platonists, together with Hermes, say that Jerkus Brachmaeus and the Mecubals and the Hebrews confess that all sublunary things are subject to generation and corruption and that also there are the same things in the celestial world but after a celestial manner as also in the intellectual world but in a far more perfect and better fashion and manner but in the most perfect manner of all and the exemplary and after this course that every inferior thing should be in its kind answer its superior and the thought of this supreme itself and receives from the heaven that celestial power they call the quintessence or the spirit of the world or the middle nature and from the intellectual world a spiritual and enlivening virtue transcending all qualities whatsoever and lastly from the exemplary or original world through the mediation of the other according to their degree receive the original power of the whole perfection hence everything may be aptly reduced from these inferiors to the stars from the stars to their intelligences and from hence to the first cause of itself from the series and order whereof whole magic and all occult philosophy flows for every day some natural thing is drawn by art and some divine thing is drawn by nature which the Egyptians, seeing called nature a magicianis, the very magical power of itself in the attracting of like be like, and of suitable things be suitable, not such kind of attractions by the mutual correspondency of things amongst themselves, of superiors with inferiors, the Grecians called sympathies, so the earth agrees with cold water, the water with moist air, the air with fire, the fire with the heaven and water. Neither is fire fixed with water, but by air, not the air with the earth, but with water. So neither is the soul united to the body, but by the spirit, nor the understanding to the spirit by the soul. So we see that when nature has framed the body of an infant, by this very preparative she presently felched the spirit from the universe this spirit is the instrument to obtain of god the understanding and mind in the soul and body as in wood the dryness is fitted to receive oil and the oil being embedded is food for the fire the fire is the vehiculum of light by these examples you see how by some certain natural and artificial preparations we are in a capacity to receive certain celestial gifts from above for stones and metals have a correspondency with herbs with animals animals with the heavens and the heavens with the intelligences and those with divine properties and attributes and god himself after whose image and likeness all things are created now the first image of god is the world and the world the man of man, beasts of beasts, the zeophyton, half animal and half plant, of zeophyton, plants, of plants, metals, of metals, stones, 
and again in things spiritual the plant agrees with a brood in vegetation a brood which a man in sense man with an angel in understanding an angel with god in immorality divinity is annexed to the mind the mind to the intellect the intellect to the intention the intention to the imagination the imagination to the senses the senses at last to things for this is in the band and continuity of nature that all superior virtue does flow through every inferior with a long and continued series dispersing its rays even to the very last thing and inferiors through their superiors come to the very supreme of all for so inferiors are successfully joined to their superiors to their proceeds an influence from their head the first cause is a certain string stretched out to the lowermost things of all of which strings is one end and to be touched the whole does presently shake and such as touch does sound to the other end and at the motion of the inferior the superior also is moved to which the other does answer a string in a little well tuned next chapter how we may draw not only celestial and vital but also certain intellectual and divine gifts from above magicians teach us that celestial gifts may through inferiors being comfortable to superiors be drawn down by opportune influences of the heavens and so also by these celestial gifts the celestial angels as they are servants of the stars may be procured and conveyed to us imblicius proclus and Synesius with the whole school of platonists confirm that not only celestial and vital but also certain intellectual angelical and divine gifts may be received from above by some certain matters having a natural power of divinity i e which have a natural correspondency with the superiors being rightly received and opportunely gathered together according to the rules of natural philosophy and astronomy and mercurius trismegistus writes that an image rightly made of certain proper things appropriated to any one certain angel i will presently be animated by that angel of the same also austin makes mention in his eighth book the Sevitate day or the city of god for this is the harmony of the world that things supercelestial be drawn down by the celestial and the supernatural be natural because there is one operative virtue that is diffused through all kinds of things by which virtue indeed as manifest things are produced out of occult causes so a magician does make us of things manifest to draw forth things that are occult through the rays of the stars through plumes lights sounds and natural things which are agreeable to celestial in which besides corporeal qualities there is a kind of season sense and harmony and incorporeal and divine measures and orders so you read that the ancients were fond often to receive some divine and wonderful thing by certain natural thing so the stone that is bred on the apple of the eye of a civet cat held under the tongue of a man is said to make him divine or prophesy the same is selenite the moon stone or the moonstone reported to do so they say that the images of god may be called up by the stone called anshites and that the ghosts of the dead may be being called up kept up by the stone sinoshites the like does the herb aglophotus do which is called marmorites growing upon the marbles of arabia is said pliny and the which magicians use 
Also, this is an herb called Rheingeliba, which magicians drink of and prophesy. Moreover, there are some herbs by which the head are raised to life, when Xanthus the historian tells that what a certain herb called Balus, a young dragon being killed, was made alive again. Also, that by the same, a certain man of Tilum, whom a dragon killed, was restored to life. And Juba reports that in Arabia, a certain man was by a certain herb restored to life. But whether or not, no, any such thing can be done indeed upon man by the virtue of herbs or any other natural thing. We shall discourse in the following chapter. Now it is certain and manifest that such things can be done upon other animals. So if flies that are drowned be put onto warm ashes, they revive, and bees being drowned do in like manner recover life in the juice of the herb nip, and eels being dead for want of water, if with their whole bodies they be put under mud in vinegar, and the blood of a vulture being put up on them, with all of them a few days recover life, they say that if the fish and shimmies be cut into pieces and eased into the sea, the parts will within a little time come together and alive. Also we know that the pelican does restore her young to life, being killed with her own blood. Next chapter, that we may by some certain matters of the world stir up the gods of the world and their ministering spirits. No man is ignorant that evil spirits by evil and profane arts may be raised up, as Psyllus says, sorcerers are wont to do, who most detestable and abnominal filthiness did follow and accompany such as were in times past in the sacrifices of Prapus and in the worship of the idol which was called Painor, to whom they did sacrifice with their privy members, or that genitals, uncovered. Neither to these is that unlike, if it be true and not a fable, which is read concerning it detestable heresy of old churchmen, and like to these are manifest in witches and mischievous women, which wickedness the foolish those dotage of woman is subject to fall into by these and such as these evil spirits are raised as a wicked spirit spake once john of one synops a sorcerer all the power says he of satan dwells there and he is entered into a confederacy with all the principalities together and likewise we with him and synops obey us and we again obey him. Again, in the contrary side, no man is ignorant that super celestials, angels, and spirit may be gained by us through good works, a good, pure mind, secret prayers, devout humiliation, and the like. Let no man therefore doubt that in like manner, by some certain matters of the world, the gods of the world may be raised by us or at least the ministering spirits or servants of these gods. And as Mercurius Hermes Trismegistus says, the airy spirits, not super celestial, much less higher, so we read that the ancient priests made statues and images foretelling things to come, and infused into them the spirits of the stars, which were not kept there by constraint, and in some certain manners, but rejoicing in them, as acknowledging such kind of matter to be suitable to them, they do always and willingly abide in them, and speak and do wonderful things by them, no otherwise than evil spirits are wont to do when they possess men's bodies. Next chapter. Of bindings, what sorts they are of and in what ways they wont to be done. 
We have spoken concerning the virtues and wonderfully efficiency of natural things. It remains now that we understand the thing of great wonderment, and it is a binding of men into love or hatred, sickness or health, and such alike. Also the bindings of thieves and robbers, that they cannot steal in any place the binding of merchants, that they cannot buy or sell in any place the binding of an army, that they cannot pass over any bound, the binding of ships, that no winds, though never so strong, shall be able to carry them haven, also the binding of a mill, that it can by no force whatsoever be turned round, the binding of a cistern or fountain, that the water cannot be drawn out of them, the binding of the ground, that it cannot bring forth fruit, the binding of any place, that nothing can be built upon it, the binding of fire, that, though it be never so strong, can burn no combustible thing that is put to it, also the binding of lightnings and attempts that they shall do no hurt, the binding of dogs that they cannot bark, also the binding of birds and wild beasts that they shall not be able to fly or run away, and such like as these, which are scarce credible yet often known by experience. Now there are such kinds of bindings as these made by sorceries, collieries, ungunets, love potions, by binding to and hanging up of things, by rings, by charms, by strong imaginations and passions, by images and characters, by enchantments and imprecations, by lights, by sounds, by numbers, by words and names, invocations, sacrifices by swearing, conjuring, concertation, devotion, and diverse superstitions, and observations, and such like. Next chapter of Sorceries and Their Power The force of sorceries is reported to be so great that they are believed to be able to subvet, consume, and change all inferior things according to Virgil's muse. Morers for me, these herbs in Pontus chose and curious drugs for their great plenty grows. I many times with these have more spied, changed to a wolf and in the woods to hide from spellshers with souls depart charm and corn bear standing from others farm. Also in other place concerning the companions of Ulysses, whom the cruel goddess serves their invests with fierce aspects and chained to savage beasts, that's changed to savage beasts. And a little after, when love from pieces Ceres could not gain, him with her charming wand and hellish bane, changed to a bird and spots her speckled wings with sundry colors. Now there are some kinds of these sorceries mentioned by Lycan concerning that sorcerer's Tassila calling up ghosts where he said, Here all natures produce for unfortunate form of mad dogs, which waters fear and hate, gods of the lynx hyena, not inbred, the marrow of a heart with serpents fed. We are not wanting, no, nor the sea lamprey, which stops the ships, nor yet the dragon's eye. And such as Apelius tells concerning Ophelia, that sorcerers, endeavoring to procure love, to whom Photis a certain maid brought the hairs of a goat cut off from the bogger bottle, made with the skin thereof, instead Boethus, a young man's hair. Now, she says, being out of her wits for the young man, goes up the tiled roof, and in the upper part thereof makes a great hole open, 
to all the oriental and other aspects and most fit for these her arts and their privately worships having before furnished her mournal house with suitable furniture with all kinds of spices with plates of iron with strange words engraved upon them with sterns of ships that were cast away and much lamented and with diverse members of buried carcasses buried cast abroad her noses and fingers there the fleshy nails of those that were hanged and another place the blood of them that were murdered and their skulls mangled with the teeth of wild beasts and she offered sacrifices there enchanted entrails lying painting and sprinkles them with diverse kinds of liquors sometimes with fountain water sometimes with cow's milk sometimes with mountain honey and mead then she ties those hairs into knots and lays them on the fire with diverse odors to the burnt then presently with an irresistible power of magic and blind force of the gods the bodies of those whose hairs did smoke and crash assume the spirit of a man and feel and hear and walk and come together with the stink of their hair led them and instead of Buitis the young man comes skipping and leaping with joy and love into the house of augustine also reports that he heard of some woman sorcerers that were so versed in these kinds of arts that they by giving cheese to man they could presently turn them into working cattle and the work being done restored them into men again next chapter of the wonderful virtues of some kinds of sorceries now i will show you what some of the sorcerers are that they by example of these there may be a way opened for the consideration of the whole subject of them of these therefore the first is menstrual blood which how much power it has in sorcery we will now consider for as they say if it comes over new wine it makes it so sour and if it does by touch the vine it spoils and for fever it is by its touch it makes all plants and trees barren and they shall be newly set to die it burns up all the herbs in the garden and makes fruit fall of the trees it darkens the brightness of a looking glass dulls the edges of knives and razors dims the beauty of ivory and makes iron presently rusty it makes brass rust and smell very strong it makes dogs mad if they do but taste of it and if they being thus mad shall bite anyone that wound is uncurable it kills whole hives of bees and drives them from the hives that are but touched with it it makes linen black that are boiled it makes mirrors cast their foil off if they do not be touched it makes women miscarry if they be but smeared with it it makes asses burn as long as they eat of the corn that has been touched with it the ashes of menstrual clothes if they be cast upon purple garments that are to be washed change the color of them and takes away colors from flowers they say that it drives away tartan and curtain august if it be put into the wool of a black ram and tied up in a silver bracelet as also of the soles of the patient's feet be anointed therewith and especially if it be done by the woman herself she patients not knowing of it moreover it cures the fits of the falling sickness but most especially it cures them that are afraid of water or drink nearby or bitten by the mad dog if all the menstrual cloth put under the cup besides they report that if menstrual woman shall walk naked abound the standing corn they make all cankers worms beetles flies and all hurtful things fall off from the corn but they must take heed that they do it before sunrise or else they will make the corn wither also they say that they are able to expel hail tempest and lightnings 
more of which Pliny makes mention of. Now, this is that they are greater poisons if they happen in the decrease of the moon and yet much greater if they happen between the decrease and change of the moon but if they happen in the eclipse of the moon or sun they are an incurable poison but they are the greatest force of all when they happen in the first years even in the first years of virginity for if they do but touch the posts of the door there can no mischief take effect in it also they say that the threads of any garment touched therewith cannot be burned and if they be cast into fire it will spread no further also it is said that the root of peony being given by castor oil and smeared over with a menstruous cloth cured the falling sickness moreover of the stomach of a heart be burned or roasted and to it be put perfuming made with a menstruous cloth it will make crossbows useless for the killing of any game the hairs of a menstruous woman put under dung breed serpents and if they be burnt will drive away serpents with their smell so great a poisonous fierce is in them that they are poison to poisonous creatures also hippomonas which among sorceries is not the least they can notice of, and it is little venomous piece of flesh as big as a fig, and black which is in the forehead of a cloth newly folded, which unless the mare herself does presently eat, she will never after love her foals or let it suck. And for this cause they say there is most wonderful power in the procuring love of it be powdered and drank in a cup with the blood of him is in, that is in love there is also another sorcery which is called hippomonas a venomous humor assuming out of the share of a mare what time she desires a horse of which virgil makes mentions when he say hence come that poison which she shepherd call Hopomonis and from mares groans thus fall. The woeful, vain, and cruel step dames use, and with a charm amongst powerful drugs infuse. If this does juvenile, the satirist make mention. Hippomas, poisons that boil, are in the charms, are given to sons in law with such like harms. Apollonius also in his Argonetics makes mention of the herb Prometheus when he says, Growth from corrupt blood dropping on the earth whilst the vulture was gnawing upon the liver of Prometheus upon the hill of Cososus. The flower of this herb, he said, is like saffron, having a double stank hanging out one feather then the other the length of a cubit the root under the earth as fleshly newly cut sense from a blackish juice as it were a beech with which says he if any one shall after he has performed his devotion to person pia smear over his body he cannot be hurt either with sword or fire also saxo grammaticus writes that there was a certain man called Froton who had a garment which when he had put on he could not be hurt with the point or edge of any weapon the civet cat also abounds with sorceries for as pliny reports the posts of a door being touched with her blood the arts of jugglers and sorcerers are so invalid that the gods cannot be called up and will by no means be persuaded to talk with them also that they are anointed with the ashes of the ankle bone of her left foot being the coated with the blood of a weasel shall become odious to all the same also is done with the eye being the coated also it is said that the straight cut is administered against the injustice and corruption of princes and great men in power 
and for success of petitions and to conduce the ending of suits and controversies if any has never so little of it about him and that if it be bound unto the left arm it is such a present charm that if any man does but look upon a woman it will make her follow him presently and that the skin of her civitcat's forehead does withstand bewitchings they say also that the blood of a basilisk which they call the blood of saturn has such a great force in sorcery that it procures for him that carries out about him good success of his petitions from great men in power and his prayers from god and also remedies of diseases and grant of any privileges they also say that the tick if it be pulled out of the left ear of a dog and if it be altogether black has great virtue in the prognostic of life for if the sick party shall answer him that brought it in who standing at his feet and shall ask of him concerning his disease there is certain hope of life and he shall die if he makes no answer they also say that a stone that is bit a mad dog has power to cause discord if it be put in drink and that he shall not be barked up by dogs that puts the tongue of a dog in his shoe under the, his great toe especially if in the herb of the same name houndstone be joined with it and that a membrane of the second dines of a dog has the same and that dogs will shun him that has a dog's heart and pliny reports that there is a red toad that lives in briars and brambles and is full of sorceries and does wonderful things for the little bone which is in his left side being cast into cold water makes it presently very hot by which also the rage of dogs is restrained and their love is procured if it be put in drink and if it be bound to any one it stirred up lust in the contrary the little bone which is on the right side makes hot water cold and that it can never be hot again unless that be taken out also it is said to cure curtains if it be bound to the sick in a snake's skin as also all other fevers and restrain love and lust and that the spleen and heart is an effectual remedy against the poison of the said toad thus pliny writes also it is said that the sword which a man is slain hath wonderful power in sorceries for if the snaffle of the bridle or spurts be made of it they say that with these any horse through never so wild may be tamed and gentled and if a horse should be showed with shoes made with it he would be most swift and fleet and never though never so hard tire but yet they will that some characters and names should be written upon it they say also if a man shall dip his sword wherewith men were beheaded in wine and the sick drink thereof he shall be cured of his carotene. They say also that a cup of liquor being made with the brains of a pear and drank out of the skull shall make him that drinks it to be as fierce and raging as a bear and think himself to be changed into a bear and judge all things he sees to be bears. And so to continue in that madness until the force of that draught shall be dissolved no other distemper being all the will received in him next chapter of perfumes or suffumigations their manner and powers some suffumigations also or perfumes that are proper to the stars are of great force for the opportune receiving of celestial gifts under the rays of the stars and such as much as they do strongly work upon the air and breathe 
for our breath is very much changed by such kind of vapors if both vapors be of another alike the air also is being through the said vapors easily moved or affected with the qualities of inferiors or those celestials daily and quickly penetrating our breast and vitals does wonderfully reduce us to the like qualities wherefore suffumigations are wont to be used to by them that are about to suit say for to affect their fancy which indeed being duly appropriated to any certain deities do fit us to receive divine inspiration so they say that perfumes made with linseed and flaby seed and roots of violets and parsley do make one of the four seed things to come and thus conduce to prophesy let no man wonder how great things suffumigations can do in the air especially when he shall with profier consider that by certain vapors exhaling from proper suffumigations airy spirits are presently raised as also thunderings and lightnings and such like things as the liver of a chameleon being burnt in the top of the house the as it manifests raises showers and lightnings in like manner the head and throat if they be burned with oak wood causes storms and lightnings there are also suffumigations under opportune influences of stars that make the images of spirits forthwhile appear in the air or elsewhere so they say that if of coriander smellange and bane and hemlock be made of perfume that spirits will presently come together hence they are called spirits herbs also it is said that if you made of the roots of a herb sagapin with the juice of hemlock and henbane and the herb thepsis barbatos and sanders and black poppy make spirits and strange shapes appear and if smellage be added to them gasseth away spirits from any place and destroys their visions in like manner a fume made of calamint peony mints and palma christi drives away all evil spirits and vain imaginations moreover it is said that by certain fumes certain animals are gathered together and put to flight as Pliny mentioned concerning the stone liberties that with the flume thereof all beasts are called out so the bones in the upper part of the throat of a heart being burned gather all the serpents together but the horn of a heart being burned thus with his fume chase them all away the same does a flume of the fetters of peacocks also the lungs of the assy being burned puts all poisonous things to flight the flume of the burnt hoof of a horse drives away mice the same does the hoof of a mule which also if it be hoof of the left left foot flies are driven away and they say if a house or any place be smoked with the gall of the cuttlefish made into confection with red storax roses and lignum olus and if then there be some sea water or blood cast into that place and the whole house will seem to be full of water or blood and if some earth be pulled ground be cast there the earth will seem to quake no such kinds of vapors we must conceive to infect any body and infuse virtue into it which does continually even as any contagious or poisonous vapor 
of the pestilence being kept for two years in the walls of a house infect the inhabitants and as the contagious pestilence or leprosy laying hid in a garment does long after infect him that wears it therefore when certain seraphimigation used the images rings and such like instruments of magic and hid treasures as porophyr said very effectually so they say that if any one shall hide gold or silver or any other precious things, the moon being in conjunction with the sun, and shall fume the place with coriander, saffron, handbane, smellage, and black poppy, if each alike quantity bruised together and tempered with the juice of hemlock, that which is so hid shall never be found or taken away and that spirits shall continually keep it and if any one shall endeavor to take it away he shall be hurt by them and shall fall into a fancy and hermes said that there is nothing like the fume of spermesteti for the raising of spirits wherefore if a fume be made of that and lignum alus pepperwort musk saffron red storks tempered together with the blood of a lapwing it will quickly gather airy spirits together and if it be used about the grace of the dead it gathers together spirits and the ghosts of the dead so as often as we direct any work to the sun we must make suffumigations with solary things if to the moon with luminary things and so of the rest and we must know that as there is contrariety and enmity in stars and spirits so also in supplementations unto the same so there is also a contrariety between lignum apis and sulfur frankincense and quicksilver and spirits that are raised by the fume of lignum alus are allied by the burning of sulfur as Procrus gives an example of a spirit which was wont to be <coughs> which was wont to appear in the form of a lion but by the set of a cock before it vanished away because there is a contrariety between a cock and the lion and so the like considerations and practice is to be observed concerning such like things next chapter the composition of some fumes appropriated to the planets we make suffumigations for the sun in this manner saffron ambergris musk lignum alus lignum balsam the fruit of the laurel cloves myrrh and frankincense all which being bruised and mixed in such a proportion as makes a sweet odor must be incorporated with the brain of an eagle or the blood of a white cock after the manner of pills or troches for the moon we make a suffumigation of the head of a frog dried and the eyes of a bull the seed of white poppy frankincense and camphor which must be incorporated with menstrual blood or the blood of a goose. For Saturn, take the seed of black poppy, of hembane, root of mandrake, and lodestone, and mare, and make them up with the brain of a cat or the blood of a bat. For Jupiter, take the seed of ash, lignum aedus, storax, the benzoin, gum, the lazuli stone the tops of the feathers of a peacock and incorporate with them the blood of a stork or a swallow or the brain of a heart for mars take euphorbrium pedalium gum armoniac the roots of both hellebores the lodestone and a little sulfur and incorporate them all with the brain of a heart the blood of a man and the blood of a black cat for venus take musk umber grace lignum alis red roses and red coral 
and make them up with the brain of sparrows and the blood of pigeons. From mercury take mastic frankincense, cloves and the herb, syncophoil and the stone achetis, and incorporate them all with the brain of a fox, weasel and the blood of a magpie. Besides the Saturn are appropriated for fumes all odorpheous roots as pepper or root, and the frankincense tree, the Jupiter odorpheous fruits as nutmegs, cloves to Mars all odorpheous woods as sandalwood, cypress lignum balsam, ignum balsam and lignum alus to the sun all gums, frankincense, mastic, benjamin storax, laudanum, that's cistus, ambergris, and musk, to Venus, flowers as roses, violets, saffron, and such like, to Mercury, all peels of wood and fruit as cinnamon, lignum cassia, maize, citron pile, and bayberries, and whatsoever seeds are odorpheous to the moon, the leaves of all vegetables as the leaf in them, the leaves of the myrtle and bay tree. Know also that according to the opinion of the magicians, in every good matter, as love, goodwill, and the like, are must be a good fume, odorpheous and precious, and in every evil matter, as hatred, anger, misery, and the like, must be a stinking fume that is of no worth. The twelve signs of also of the zodiac have their proper fumes, as Aries has myrrh, Taurus, pepperwort, Gemini, mastic, Cancer, camphor, Leo, frankincense, Virgo, sanders, or that sandalwood, Libra, Calbanum, Scorpio, opopanox, Sagittarius, Lignum Aeolus, Capricorn, Benzoin, Aquarius, Euphorbium, Pisces, Red Storax. But Hermes describes the most powerful fume to be Fizz, well, that which is compounded of the seven aromatics according to the powers of the seven planets. For it receives from Saturn, pepperwort, from Jupiter, nutmeg, from Mars, lignum alus, from the sun, mastic, from Venus, saffron, from Mercury, cinnamon, and from moon, the myrtle. Next chapter of Colleries, Unctions, Love Medicines, and Their Virtues. Moreover, Colleries and Anguins conveying the virtues of all things and celestial to our spirit can multiply transmute transfigure and transform it accordingly as also transpose those virtues which are in them into it that is so it cannot act only upon its own body but also upon that which is near it and affected by the visible rays charms and by touching it with some like quality, for because our spirit is in the subtle, pure, lucid, airy, and unctuous vapor of the blood, it is therefore fit to make colories of the like vapor, which are more suitable to our spirit in sub substance. For then, by reason of their likeness, they do the more stir up, attract, and transform the spirit the like virtues have certain ointments and other confectious. Hence by the touch sometimes sickness, poisonings, and love is induced. Some things as the hands or garments being anointed also by kisses. Some things being held in the mouth, love is induced as in Virgo we read that Venus prays Cupid, that when glad Dido hugs him in her lap, at royals feasts crowned with the cheering grape when she embracing she shall sweet kisses give inspire hid flame with deadly bane deceive now the sight 
because it perceives more purely and clearly than the other senses and fastening in us the marks of things more accurately and deeply does most of all and before others agree with the festestic spirit as a apparent in dreams when things see do more often present themselves to us with things heard or anything come under the other senses therefore when colories transform visual spirits that spirit does easily affect the imagination which indeed being affected with diverse species and forms transmit the same by the same spirit into the outward sense of sight by which occasion there is caused in it a perception of such species and forms in that manner as if it were moved by external objects that there seem to be terrible images in spirits and such like so there are made colories making us forthwith to see the images of spirits in the air or elsewhere i know how to make of the gal of a man and the eyes of a black cat and some other things the like is made also of the blood of laughing of a bat of a goat and they say if a smooth shining piece of steel be smeared over with the juice of mugwort and made to fume it will make invocated spirits to be seen in it so also there are suffumigations or unctions which make men speak in their sleep to walk and do those things which are done by men that are awake and sometimes to do those things which men are awake cannot or dare not some there are that make us hear horrid or delectable sounds and such like and this is the cause why maniacal and melancholy men believe to see and hear those things without which imagination imagination does only fancy within hence the fear things not to be feared and fall into wonderful and most false suspicions and fly when none pursues them or angry and content no body being present and fear where no fear is such like passions also can magical confections induced by suffumigations by colories by ingrants by potions by poisons by lamps and lights by looking glasses by images enchantments charms sounds and music also by diverse rites observations ceremonies religions and superstitions all which shall be handled in their place and not only by these kind of arts passions apparitions and images induced but also things themselves which are really changed and transfigured into diverse forms as the poet relates of proteus periclaminus archelaus and mera the daughter of Erichtlon. So also Sirs changed the companions of a Lysis or and a old in the sacrifices of Jupiter, Lysias, the man that tasted of the inward of the sacrifices were turned into wolves, which Pliny says befell a certain man called Demarchus, the same opinion was Austin of for he said whilst he was in italy he heard of a woman that by giving sorceries and cheese to travellers turned them into working cattle and when they had done such work as they would have them turned into men again and that was befell a certain father called prastantius the scriptures themselves testified that pharaoh sorcerers turned their rods into serpents and water into blood and did such like things next chapter of natural allegations and suspensions when the soul of the world by its virtue does make all things that are natural generated are artificially made fruitful by infusing them into celestial properties for the working of some wonderful effects then things themselves not only when applied by suffumigations or colliers or ointments or potions or any other such like way 
but also when they being convention con <coughs> conveniently wrapped up or bound to or hanged about the neck or in any other way applied although by never so easy contact do impress their virtue upon us by these allegations therefore suspensions wrapping up applications and contacts the accidents of the body and mind are changed into sickness health boldness fear sadness and joy and the like they render them that carry them gracious or terrible acceptable or rejected honored and beloved or hateful and abominable now these kind of passions are conceived to be by the above said infused no otherwise this is manifest in the grafting of trees where the vital virtue is sent and communicated from the trunk to the twig grafted into it by way of contact and allegation so in the female palm tree when she comes near to the male her buds bend to the male and are bowed which the gardener seeing bind ropes from the male to the female which becomes straight again as if it had by continuation of the rope received the virtue of the male and like manner we see that the cram fish being touched afar off with a long pole does presently stupefy the hand of him that touches it and if any shall touch the sea here with his hand or stick does presently run out of his wits also if the fish called stella the starfish as they say being fastened with the blood of a fox and a brass nail to a gate evil medicines can do no hurt also it is said that if a woman take a needle and betray it with tongue and then wrapped it up in earth in which the carcass of a man was buried and shall carry it about in her cloth which was used at the funeral that no man shall be able to have sex with her as long as she has it about her now by these examples we see how by certain allegations of certain things as also suspensions or by simple contact or the continuation of any threat may be able to receive some virtues thereby it is necessary that we know that certain rule of allegation and suspension and the manner which the art requires that they be done under a certain and suitable constellation and that they be done with wire or silken thread with hair or sinews of certain animals and things that are to be wrapped up must be done in the leaves of herbs or the skins of animals or fine cloths and the like according to the suitable of things as if you would procure the solary virtue of anything this being wrapped up in bay leaves or the skin of a lion hanged it about the neck with a golden thread or a silken thread of a yellow color whilst the sun rules in the heaven so shalt thou be endued with the solary virtue of that thing but if you do desire the virtue of any saturnian thing you shall in like manner take that thing while saturn ranges and wrap it up in the skin of an ass or in a cloth used at a funeral especially if you desire it for sadness and with a black thread hang it about your neck in like manner we must conceive of the rest next chapter of rings and their compositions rings also which were always much esteemed by the ancients when they are opportunely made do in like manner impress their virtue upon us in as much as they do affect the spirit of him that carries them with gladness or sadness and render him cautious or terrible bold fearful amiable or hateful in as much as they do fortify 
as against sickness, poisons, enemies, evil spirits, and all manner of hurtful things, or, at least, will not suffer us to be kept under them. Now the manner of these kinds of rings, as this, when any star is sent fortunately, with the fortunate aspect or conjunction of the moon, we must take a stone and herb that is under that star and make a ring of the metal that is suitable to this star and in it fasten the stone putting the herb or root under it not omitting the inscriptions of images names and characters as also the proper self-imigations but we shall speak more of this in another place where we shall treat of images and characters so you read in Philostratus Jarchus, that a wise prince of the Indians bestowed the seven rings made after this manner, marked with the virtues and names of all seven planets, the Apollonius of which he were every day one, distinguishing them according to the names of the days by the benefit of which he lived above one hundred and thirty years, as also always retained the beauty of his youth in like manner. Moses, the lawgiver and ruler of the Hebrews, being skilled in the Egyptian magic, he said that Josephus, to have rings of love and oblivion, there was also, as said Aristotle, amongst the Cyrenians a ring of Bettus, which could procure love and honor. We read also that Edamus, a certain philosopher made rings against the bites of serpents bewitching and evil spirits the same does josephus related of solomon also we read in plato gigas king of lydia had a ring of wonderful and strange virtues the seal of which when he turned it towards the palm of his hands nobody could see him but he could see all things by the opportunity of which ring he varished the queen and slew the king his master and killed whoever so he thought stood in his way and in this villainies nobody could see him and at length by the benefit of this ring became king of lydia next chapter of the virtues of places and what places are suitable to every star there be wonderful virtues of places accompanying them either from things that they're placed or by the influences of the stars or in any other way for as pliny relates of a cuckoo in what place anyone does first hear him if his right foot be marked about and that footprint digged up there will no fleas be bred in that place where it is scattered so they say that the dust of a track of a snake being gathered up and scattered amongst bees makes them return to their hives so also that the dust in which a mole has rolled himself being cast upon the body does mitigate that heat of love and that the dust wherein a hawk has rolled herself of it be bound to the body of a bright red cloth cures the curtain so does the stone taken out of the nest of a swallow as they say presently relieves those that have the falling sickness of epilepsy and being bound to the party continually preserve them especially if it be rolled in the blood of a heart or swallow and it is reported that if any one shall cut a vein and being fasting shall give over a place where any one lately fell with the fit of falling sickness that he shall fall into the same disease and plonio reports that to fasten an iron nail in that place where he that fell with a fit of the falling sickness first pitched his head will free him from his disease so they say that an herb growing upon the head of any image being gathered and bound up in some parts of one's garments with a red thread shall presently allay the headache and that any herb gathered out from 
the brooks of rivers before sunrise, and nobody seeing them that gathers it shall cure the tertian, of it be bound to the left arm, the sick party not knowing what is done, but amongst places that are appropriated to the stars, all stinking places, dark, underground religious and mournful places as churchyards tombs and houses not inhabited by man any old tottering obscure dreadful houses and solitary dense caves and pits and also fish ponds standing pools fennes and such like are appropriated to saturn and jupiter are ascribed all privileged places consistories of noble men tribunals, chairs, places of, for exercises, schools, and all beautiful and clean places scattered or sprinkled with diverse odors to Mars, fairy and bloody places, furnaces, bakehouses, shambles, places of executions, and places where there have been great battles, fought and slaughters made, and the like to the sun, light places the serene airy kings palaces and princes courts pulpits theatres thrones and all kingly and magnificent places to venus pleasant fountains green meadows flourishing gardens garnished beds stews and according to orpheus the sea the seashore baths sink places and all things belonging to women the mercury shops schools warehouses exchange of merchants and the like to the moon wilderness wood rocks hills mountains forest fountains waters rivers seas seashores ships groves highways and granaries for corn and such like upon this account they that endeavor to procure love are wont to bury for a certain time the instruments of their art, whether they be rings, images, looking glasses, or any other, or hide them in a stew house, because in that place they will contract some venerable faculties, no otherwise than things that stand in a stinking place become stinking, and those in an aromatical place become aromatical and of a sweet savour the four corners of the earth also pertain to this matter hence they that are to gather a saturnian martial or jovial herb must look towards the sea or south partially because they desire to be oriental from the sun and partially because of their principal house Aquarius, Scorpio, Sagittarius are southern signs, sign, signs. So also are Capricornus and Pisces, and they that will gather a Venetian, Mercurial, or lunary herb must look towards the west because they delight to be western, or else they must look northward because their principal houses, Doris, Gemini, Cancer, Virgo are northern signs, so in any solary work we must look towards the east or south, or rather towards the solary body and light. Next chapter of light, colors, candles and lamps, and to what stars, houses and elements several colors are ascribed light also is a quality that partakes much of form and is a simple act and a representation of the understanding it is first diffused from the mind of god into all things but in god the father the father of light it is the first true light then in the sun of beautiful overflowing brightness and in the holy ghost a burning brightness exceeding all intelligencies as Dionysus says of seraphims, in angels, therefore, it is a shining intelligence diffused and abundant joy beyond all bounds of reason, yet received in diverse degrees according to the nature of the intelligence that receives it. Then it descends into the celestial bodies where it becomes a sort of life and an effectual propagation 
even a visible splendor, and the fire of a certain natural liveness infused into it by the heavens, and lastly in man, it is a clear discourse of reason and knowledge of divine things that the whole rationale of this is manifold, either by reason of the disposition of the body, as the peripatics will have it, or which is more true, by reason of the good pleasure of him that bestows it, who gives it to everyone as he pleases, from there it passes to the fancy, yet above the senses, but only imaginable, and then to the senses, but especially to that of the eyes. In them it becomes a visible clearness, and is extended to other prespish bodies, in which it becomes a color and a shining beauty, but in dark bodies it is a certain beneficial and generative virtue, and penetrates to the very center where it becomes, of it being collected into a narrow place, it becomes a dark heat, tormenting and scorching, so that all things perceiving the vogue of the light according to their capacity, all which joining to itself an enlivening heat and passing through all things, thus convey its qualities and virtues through all things. Therefore, magicians forbid the urine of a sick man to be sprinkled in the shadow a sick man, or to be uncovered against the sun or the moon, because the rays of the light penetrating bring suddenly within it nauseous qualities of the sick bodies, conveying them into the opposite body, and affect that with a quality of the same kind. This is the reason why enchanters have a care to cover their enchantments with their shadow, so the civet cat make all dogs dumb with the very touch of her shadow. Also, there are made artificially some lights, lamps, torches, candles and such like of same certain things and liquors opportunely chosen according to the rule of the stars and composed amongst themselves according to their congruity which when they be lightened and shine along are wont to produce some wonderful and celestial effects which men many times wonder at as Pliny reports out of Anaxilas of a poison of mares after copulation, which being lighted in torches, thus monstrously represent a sight of horse heads, the like may be done of asses and flies, which being tempered with wax and lighted, make a strange sight of flies, and the skin of a serpent lighted in a lamp makes serpents appear, and they say when grapes are in their flower, if any one shall bind in a vial to them full of oil and shall let it alone, they will be ripe, and then the oil be lighted in a lamp, it makes grapes to be seen, and so in other fruits, of contrary, to be mixed with honey and the blood of a lamping, and be put in a lamp, they say, that stand about will seem a great deal bigger than they are wont, and if it be lighted in a, in a clear night, the stars will seem to be scattered the one from the other. Such force also is in the ink of the cuttlefish, that it being put into a lamp makes black moors appear. It is also reported that a candle made up of some certain Saturnian things it being lighted, it be extinguished in the mouth of a man newly dead, will afterwards, as oft as it shines alone, bring great sadness and fear upon them that stand about it. Of such like torches, lamps, does Hermes speak more of, also Plato and Chironides, and of the latter writers, Albertus, in a certain treatise of this particular thing. 
Colors all are a kind of lights, which being mixed with things are wont to expose them to those stars to which they are agreeable. And we shall afterwards speak of some colors which are the lights of the planets, by which even the natures of fixed stars themselves are understood, which also may be applied to the flames of lamps and candles. But in this place we shall relate them how the colors of inferior mixed things are distributed to diverse planets, for all colors, black, lucid, earthy, lead, brown, have relation to Saturn, sapphire, and airy colors, and those which are always green, clear, purple, darkish, golden, mixed with silver, belong to Jupiter. Red colors are burning, fiery, flaming, violet, purple, bloody, and iron colors, resemble Mars, golden, saffron, purple, and bright colors resemble the sun. But all white, fair, curious, green, ruddy, between saffron and purple resemble Venus, Mercury, and the moon. Moreover, amongst the houses of the heaven signs of the zodiac, the first and seventh has white color, the second and twelfth green, the third and eleventh saffron, the fourth and the tenth red, the fifth and ninth honey, sixth and eighth black. Elements also have their colors, by which natural philosophers judge of the complexity and property of their nature. For an earthy color caused of coldness and dryness is brown and black and manifest black color, and a Saturnian color, the blue tending towards whiteness, does denote phlegm. For cold makes white moisture and dryness makes black. Reddish color shows blood, but fiery flaming burning hot shoe color, which by reason of its subtlety and aptness to mix with others, does cause diverse colors more. For if it be mixed with blood and blood be most predominant, it makes a florid red. It color predominate, it makes a reddish color. If there be an equal mixture, it makes a red sad. But if a dust color be mixed with blood, it makes a hempen color any red. If blood predominate and somewhat red of color prevail, but if it be mixed with a melancholy humor, it makes a black color, but with melancholy and phlegm together in an equal proportion, it makes hempen color if phlegm abound a mud color of melancholy, a bluish, but if it be mixed with phlegm alone in an equal proportion, it makes a citron color if unequally a pale or pellish. Now all colors are more prevalent which they be in silk or in metals or in prespicious substances or precious stones and in things which resemble celestial bodies in color especially in living things next chapter of fascination and the art thereof fascination is a binding which comes from the spirit of the witch through the eyes of him that is bewitched entering to his heart now the instrument of fascination is the spirit a certain pure lucid substance subtle vapor generated of the pure blood by the heat of the heart that does always send forth through the eyes rays like to itself those rays being sent forth do carry with them a spiritual vapor and that vapor a blood as it appears a blurry and red eyes whose rays being sent forth to the eyes of him that is opposite and looks upon them carries the vapor of the corrupt blood together with itself by the contagion of which it does infect the eyes of the beholder with the like disease. So the eye being opened and intent upon any one with a strong imagination does dart its beams, which are the vehiculum of the spirit into the eyes of him that is opposite to him, which tender spirits strikes the eyes of him that is bewitched, 
being stirred up from the heart of him that strikes and possesses the breath of him that is stricken, wounds his heart and infects his spirit, whence Apuleius says, Thy eyes sliding down through my eyes into mine inward breast, stir up most vehement burning in my marrow. Now therefore that men are most bewitched, when with often beholding they direct the edge of their sight to the edge of their sight that bewitch them, and when their eyes are reciprocally intent one upon the other, and when rays are joined to rays, and lights to lights, for then the spirit of the one is joined to the spirit of the other, and fix it, it sparks, so are strong legations made, and so most vehement loves are inflamed, with the only rays of the eyes, even with a certain sudden looking on, as if it were with a dart or stroke penetrating the whole body, when the spirit and amorous blood being thus wounded are carried forth upon the lover and enchanter, no otherwise than the blood and spirit of vengeance of him that is slain are upon him to slay him, Whence Lucoritus said concerning those amorous bewitchings, The bloody smitten is, but yet the mind, is wounded by the darts of Cupid blind. All parts do sympathize it wound, but no, the blood appears in that which had the blow. So great is the power of fascination, especially when the vapors of the eyes are subservient to the affection. Therefore witches use colorways, ointments, allegations, and such like to effect, and corroborate the spirit thus or that matter. To procure love, they use veneral colorways as hippomonas, the blood of doves or sparrow and such like, to induce fear, they use martial colouries, as of the eyes of wolves, the civet cat, and the like. To procure misery or sickness, they use saturnine, and so of the rest. Next chapter, of certain observations producing wonderful virtues. They say that certain acts and observations have a certain power of natural things, that they believe diseases may be expelled or brought thus and thus, so they say that quartains may be driven away if the parings of the nails of the sick be bound to the neck of a live eel in a linen cloth, and she be let into the water. And Pliny said that the paring of a sick man's nails of his feet and hands being mixed with wax cure the carton, tertian, and quadian ache. And if they be, before sun rising, fastened to another man's gate, will cure such like diseases, in like manner, let all parings of the nails be put into psimerous caves, anti-hills, and they say that which begun to draw the nails first must be taken and bound to the neck and by these means will the diseases be removed they say that by wood stricken with lightning and cast behind the back with one's hand any disease may be cured and in a curtain a piece of nail from a gibbet wrapped upon wool and hanged about the neck cures them also a rope does the like, and is taken from a gallow, and hid under the ground, and the sun cannot reach it, also the throat of him that has a heart swelling, or a posternopsis, being touched with the hand of him that died by an immature death, is cured thereby. Also they say that a woman is presently eased of her hard travel labor, of any one shall put into the bed where the woman in travel or labor is a stone or dart which 
either of these animals, a man, a boar, or a bear, were it one blow killed, the same also, as they say, does a spear that is pulled out of the body of a man, if it shall not first touch the ground. Also they say that arrows pulled out of the body of a man, if they have touched the earth and be put under any one lying down, will procure love. Also they say that the falling sickness is cured by meat made of the flesh of a white bee, wild beast slain in the same manner as a man is slain. Also they say that a man's eye that are washed three times with the water wherein he has washed his feet shall never be sore or bleary. It is said that some do cure diseases if the groin with thread taken out of the weaver's loom being tied, and in nine or seven knots the name of some widow being named at every knot, also the spleen of the cattle extended upon plain spleens current them if he that applies it says that he has applying a medicine to the spleen to cure and ease it after this they say the patient must be shut into a sleeping room the door being sealed up with a ring and some verse be repeated over nineteen times the urine of a green lizard cures the same disease if it be hanged up in a pot before the patient's bedchamber, so that he may, as he comes in and out, touch it with his hand. Also, a lizard killed in the urine of a calf, as they say, retains his lust that put it in, but he that shall put it, his own urine, into a dog urine, is said to be made thereby dull, by venerous acts to feel benumbedness in his loins they say that if one's own urine be trapped upon the foot of the morning it is remedy against the evil medicines and a little frog climbing up a tree if any one shall spit in his mouth and then let him escape is said to cure the cough it is wonderful thing but easy to experience what pliny speaks of any one shall be sorry for any blow that he has given another afar off or night at hand if he shall presently spit into the middle of that hand with which he gave the blow the party that was smitten shall presently be freed from pain this has been approved of in the four-footed beast that had been sorely hurt some there are that aggravate the blow before they give it in like manner spittle carried in the hand are the spit in the shoe of the right foot before it being put on as it's good when any one passes through a dangerous place they say that wolves will not come to a field if one of them be taken and the blood led by little and little out of his legs being unbroken with a knife and sprinkled about the outsides of the field and he himself be buried in that place from which he was first drawn the metanenses citizens of tezenium accounted it as a present remedy for preserving the vines from the wrong of the southern wind having always found it by most certain experience of whilst the wind blow and what cock should be pulled to pieces in the middle by two men both which keeping their part must walk round the vineyard and both meeting in the place from whence they began their circuit must that place bury the pieces if the cock they also say that if any one shall hold a viper over a vapor with a staff he shall prophesy and that the staff wherewith a snake was beaten is good against diseasing of breeding woman these things pliny recites it is said also in gathering roots and herbs we must draw three circles round about them first with a sword then dig them up taking heed in the meantime of a contrary wind also they say that if any one shall measure a dead man with a rope 
first from the elbow to the biggest finger, then from the shoulder to the same finger, and afterwards from the head to the feet, making thrice those measurements of any one afterwards shall be measured with the same rope in the same manner, he shall not prosper, but be unfortunate and fall into misery and sadness. And Albertus, soul of Chiranus, said that if any woman has enchanted thee to love her, take the sheet she lies in and fist through her hood and her right sleeve out of doors and the enchantment will be quitted. And Pliny says that to sit by woman, great with child pregnancy, or when a medicine is given to any one of them, the fingers being joined together like the teeth of a comb is a charm. This was known by experience in Alcumena breeding Hercules, and so much the worse if that be done about one or both knees. Also to sit cross legs is sorcery. Therefore it was forbidden to be done in the councils of princes and rulers as a thing which hindered all acts and it is said if any one standing before the door call the man by his name that is lying with a woman and he answer if then he fasten a knife or needle on the door and break it the edge being downward he that sat in the bed of the woman cannot couple with her as long as those things shall be there Next chapter, of the countenance and gesture, the habit and figure of the body, and to what stars any of these do answer, whence physiognomy and metaphoscopy and chiromancy, arts of divination, have their grounds. The countenance, gesture, the motion, setting and figure of the body, being accidental to us, conduce to the receiving of celestial gifts and expose us to the superior bodies and produce certain effects in us, no otherwise than in Halliburr, which when you gather up, you pull the leaf upward, it draws the humors upward and causes vomiting, if downward it causes purging. By drawing the humor downward, he much also, continence gesture, do affect the sight, imagination and animal spirit no man is ignorant, so they that couple for generation, for the most part, won't make an impression on the child that are then begotten. So a mild and cheerful countenance of a prince in the city makes the people joyful, but fierce and sad terrifies them, but the gesture and countenance of any one lamenting does easily move to pity, so the shape of an amiable person does easily excite love. You must know that such like gestures and figures as harmonies of the body do expose it no otherwise to the celestial than indoors, and the spirit of a medicine and internal passions do the soul, for as medicines and passions of the mind are by certain disposition of the heaven increased, so also the gestures and motion of the body do get an efficiency by certain influences by the heavens for there are gestures resembling saturn which are melancholy and sad and as are beating of the breast striking of the head also such as are religious as the bowing of the knee and a fixed look downward as if one is praying also weeping up much like as are used by an auster and saturnian man such and one is satirist describes saying with hang down head with eyes fixed to the ground he raging words bites in and a muttering sound he does express with pouting lips a cheerful and honest countenance a worshipful gesture clapping of the hands as a rejoicing and praising also the bending of the knee with the head lifted up as of one is worshipping are ascribed to Jupiter, is sore, fierce, cruel, angry, rough, 
countenance and gesture are ascribed to Mars, Solary are honorable and courageous gestures and countenance, also walkings abroad, bending of the knee, as of the honoring of a king with a knee. Venerable are dances, embraces, laughters, amiable and cheerful countenance. Mercurial are inconstant, quick, variable, and such like gestures and countenance. Lunary are such like movable, poisonful, and childish, and such like. As we have spoken of gestures, so also are the shapes of man distinct, for Saturn bespeaks of a man be of a black and yellowish color, lean, crooked, of a rough skin and great veins, hairy all over his body, little eyes, of a frowning forehead, of a thin beard, great lips, eyes, intent upon the ground, of a heavy gait, striking his feet together as he walks, crafty, witty, a seducer, and murderous. Jupiter signifies a man to be of a pale color, darkish red, a handsome body, good gesture, bull, of great eyes, not black altogether, large pupil, short nostrils, not equal, great teeth, before, curled hair, of good disposition and manners. Mars makes a man red of red hair round face yellowish eyes of a terrible and sharp looks bold chisoid proud crafty the sun makes the man tony colory betwixt yellow and black dashed with red of a short stature yet of a handsome body without much hair and curled of uh, yellow eyes, wise, faithful, desirous of praise. Venus signifies a man to be tending towards blackness, but more white, with mixture of red, of a handsome body, fair, and round face, fair hair, fair eyes. The blackness whereof is more intense, of good manners, and honest love, also kind, patient, and jocund. Mercury signifies a man not much white or black, of a long face, high forehead, fair eyes, not black, to have a straight and long nose, thin beard, long fingers, that he ingenious, a subtle inquisitor, turncoat, and subject to many fortunes, signifies a man by the moon to be a color white mixed with little red, of a fair stature, round face, with some marks in it, eyes not fully black, frowned forehead, also kind, gentle, sociable. The signs also, and faces of signs have their figures and shapes, which he that would know must seek them out in books of astrology. Lastly, upon these figures and gestures, physiognomy and Metoposcopy, arts of divination do depend, also chiromancy, foretelling future events not as causes but as signs through like effects caused by the same cause, and although these diverse kinds of divinations may seem to be done by inferior and weak signs, yet the judgment of them are not to be cited or condemned with pro prognostication is made by them, not out of superstition, but by reason of the harmonical correspondency of all the parts of the body. Whosoever, therefore, does the more exactly imitate the celestial bodies, either in nature, study, action, motion, gesture, countenance, passions of the mind, and opportunity of the season, it is so much the more like to the heavenly bodies and can receive larger gifts from them next chapter of divination and its kinds there are some other kinds of divinations depending upon natural causes which are known to everyone in this art and experience to be in diverse things by which physicians husbandmen shepherds marines and every other of these out of probable signs 
do prognosticate. Many of these kinds of Aristotle made mention of in his Book of Times, amongst which Aguria and Auspicia are the chiefest, which were in former time in such esteem amongst the Romans that they would do nothing that did belong to private or public business without the consul of the Agurus. Cicero, also in his book of divinations, largely declares that the people of Tusia would do nothing without this art. Now there are diverse kinds of auspicias, for some are called pedestria, which are taken from four-footed beasts. Some are called auguria, which are taken from birds. Some are celestial, which are taken from thunderings and lightnings. Some are called Cadusa, when any fell in the temple or elsewhere, some were sacred, which were taken from sacrifices, some of these were called Piacula, and said Auspicia, as when a sacrifice escaped from the altar, or being smitten, made a blowing, or fell upon another part of his body, then he should, to this is added, exaggeration, when the rod fell out of the hand of our guru, with which it was the custom to view and take notice of the aupicum, Michael Scotus makes mention of twelve kinds of augurias, six on the right hand, the names of which, he says, are Fernova, Fervitus, Confert, Omponetum, Sonasranum, Sona Sarvetus, and the other six on the left hand, names which are Confernova, Confervitus, Fiaram, Horinam, Sasornova, and Sasurvetus. Then expounding their names, he says, Fernova is an agnerum, when you go out of the house to do any business, and going to see a man or a bird going, or flying so that either of them himself is before three upon your left hand. This is good signification in reference to your business. Fervitus is an augurium when you shall go out of your house to do any business and on going you find or see a bird or a man resting himself before you on the left side of the tree that's an ill sign in reference to your business. Ferium is an augurium when a man or a bird is on his journey or flying passes before you, coming from the right side of you and bending towards the left, goes out of your sight. That's a good sign concerning your business. Confernova is an augurium when you do find a man or a bird or go flying and then you rest yourself before you on the right side you see of them it is a good sign concerning your business confervitus in augurium when first you find or see a man or a bird bending from your right side it is an ill sign concerning your business sigma sarnova is an augurium when you see a man or a bird come behind you and outgo you before you come on you he rests you see of him on your right side it's a good sign sacrum eventus is an augurium when you see a man or bird behind you but before he comes to the the rest on that place you see of it it is a good sign convert is an augurium when a man or bird journeying or flying shall pass behind you coming from the left of you and bending towards your right, passing out of your sight is an evil sign concerning your business. Scarabentus, when you see a man or bird passing by you and resting on a place on your left side, it is an evil sign to you. Sasarnova is when you see a man or a bird passing by you and resting on a place on your right side is an augurium for good for you. Emponentem is when a man or a bird coming from your left side and passing 
to your right goes out of your sight without resting it is a good sign hartena is an augurium if a man or a bird coming from the right passes behind you to the left and through you shall see him resting anywhere it's an evil sign thus much scotus the ancients did also prognostate from sneezing of which omer and the 17th book of the odyssey makes mention because they thought they proceeded from a sacred place they had in which the intellect is vigorous and operative whence also whatsoever speech came in the breast or mind of a man rising in the morning unaware is said to be some passage on an augurium next chapter of diverse certain animals and other things which have a significance in augurius all the auspices which first happen in the beginning of any enterprise is to be taken notice of if in the beginning of your work you shall perceive that rats have grown thy garments desist of your undertaking if going forth you shall stumble at the threshold or if in the way you shall dash your foot against anything forbear your journey if any ill man happen in the beginning of your business put off your undertakings lest your mention of the whole frustrated or accomplished to no purpose but accept and wait for a fortunate hour for the dispatching of your affairs with a better omen we see that many animals are by natural power inbred in them prophetical do not the cook by his crowning diligently tell you the hours of the night and morning and with these wings spread forth chase away the lion and many birds with their singing and chattering and flies by their sharp pricking foretell rain and dolphins by their often leaping above the water forerun of tempests it would be too long to relate all the passages which the phagirians cilicians and arabians umbrians tushians and other people which follow the augurias learned by birds these they have proved by many experiments and examples for in all things the oracles of things to come are hid but those are the chiefest among Ominal birds shall foretell. These are those which the poets relate were turned from man into birds. Therefore, what the daw declares, Herx and marks, observing her setting as she sits, and her manner of flying, whether on the right hand or left, whether clamorous or silent, whether she goes before or follows after, whether she waits for the approach of him that passes by. Or flies from him in which way she goes all things must be diligently observed or as apollo said in his hieroglyphics those that are twins signify marriage because this animal brings forth two eggs of out of which male and female must be brought forth but if which seldom happens two males be generated or two females the males will not couple with any other females nor females with any other males but will always live without a mate in solitary therefore they that meet a single doll divine thereby that they shall live a single life the same as does a black hen pigeon betoken for after the death of her mate she always lives single you shall as carefully observe crows which are as significant as does ye and a greater manner it was epictus the stoics philosopher's judgment who was a sage author that if a cow did croak after against any one it did betoken some evil either to his body fortune honor wife or children then you shall take the heed to swans who foreknow the secrets of the waters for their cheerfulness those passage happy events not only to mariners but 
all other travelers unless they be overcome by the coming over of a stronger bird as of an eagle when by the most potent majestic of her sovereignty makes known the predictions of all other birds she speaks to the contrary for she flies higher than all other birds then is more of a cute sign and is never excluded from the secrets of jupiter she portends advancement and victory but by blood because she drinks no water but blood and eagle flying over the locrians fighting against the crotonicians gave them victory an eagle setting herself awareness upon the target of hero going forth to the first war betokened that he should be king two eagles sitting all day upon the house of the birth of alexander of macedonia did portend to him an omen of two kingdoms that asia and europe an eagle also taken off the head of lucius tarquinus Priscus, son Damaratus, and Corinthian, flying from home by reason of some discord, and being came into Hetraria and going to Rome, and then flying high with it, and afterwards putting it upon his head, did portend to him the kingdom of the Romans. Vultures signify difficulty, hardness, revenousness which was verified in the beginning of building of cities. Also they foretell the places of slaughter, coming days of the seven days beforehand, and because they have most respect to that place where the greatest slaughter shall be, as if they gaped after the great number of the slain, therefore the ancient kings were wont to send out spies to take notice what place the vultures had most respect to, the phoenix promised it signal goodness success which being seen anew rome was built very auspiciously the pelican because she hazards herself for her young signifies that a man shall out of the zeal of his love undergo much hardship the painted bird gave the name of the city pictavia and foreshewed the lenity of the people by its color and voice the hero is augurium of hard things the stork is a bird of concord and makes concord cranes gives us justice of treachery of enemies the bird kaukupa betokens gratitude for she alone does express the love to her man or her mother being spent with old age and the contrary hippopotamus that kills his mother thus betoken and gratitude for him turns also in justice the bird origes is most envious and betokens envy amongst the smaller birds the pious talkative and foretells guests the bird albanellus flying by anyone if from the left to the right betokens cheerfulness or entertain if contrariwise betokens the contrary the screech or screech owl is always unlucky so also is the horn owl who because she goes to her young by night unawareness or as death comes unawares is therefore said to foretell death yet sometimes because she is not blind in the dark of the night thus betoken diligence and watchfulness which she made good when she set upon the pier of hero dido when she sees the unlucky owl pited whence the boat sang the owl sitting on top of the house alone sends forth her sad complaints with mournful tone out of another place the slothful owl by mortals is esteemed a fatal omen the same bird sang in the capital when the roman affairs were low at numantia and when fregalia was pulled down for a conspiracy made against the romans aldemel said that owls at night raiments when they turned aside to strange contraries or houses betokened the death of a man of that country 
and those houses for those birds are delighted with dead carcasses and perceives them beforehand for men that are dying have a near affinity with dead carcasses the hod also is a foretelling contention as nestle's song goes we hate the hog because that arms amongst she always lives Lelius, the ambassador of Pompey, was slain in Spain amongst the Porviers, which misfortune, a hawk flying over the head, is said foretell, and Almedel says that these kinds of birds, fighting amongst themselves, signify the change of a kingdom, but if birds of another kind shall fight with them, and ever seen to come together again it portends in a good condition and state of that country also little birds by their coming up or departing from foreshow that a family shall be enlarged or lessened and their flight by how much the more serene it is so much the more laudable whence melampus the augur conjectured to the slaughter of the Greeks by the flight of little birds, when he says, Thou seest that no bird taketh his flight in fair weather. Swallows, because when they are dying, they provide a place of safety for their young, do portend a great patrimony or legacy after the death of friends. A bet, meeting anyone, running away signifies an invasion for although she has no wings yet she flies a sparrow is a bad omen to any one that runs away for she flies from the hog and makes haste to the owl where she is in great danger yet in love she is fortunate for being stirred up with lust couples seven times in an hour these are a good omen to kings for they signify an obscurious people. Flies signify opportunity and impudence, because being without some augurious forecogs, by their growing promote hope and the journey of him that is undertaking it. Moreover, Livia, the mother of Tiberius, when she was great with him, took a hen egg and hatched it in her bosom, and at length came forth a cock chick with a great comb which the augurius interpreted that the child that should be born of her should be king and cicero writes that at tebius cocks by their crowing all night did presage that the Bithyans would obtain victory against the laudemonians and the reason is according to the augurus interpretations because that bird which he is beaten is silent but when he himself has overcome crows in like manner also omens of events are taken from beasts for the meeting of a weasel is omnius also meeting of a hare is an ill omen to the traveller unless she is betaken a mole also is bad because barren a hog is pernicious for such is his nature and therefore signifies pernicious omen a horse betokes quarrelling and fightings whence anicious seeing of white horses cries out in virgo with war are horse armed yet treated war but when they are joined together in a chariot because they draw with an equal yoke they signify that peace is to be hoped for and as he is an unprofitable creature yet that maori is good but when he was pronounced an enemy to his country, so an assy disdaining provender that was offered to him, and running to the water, by which augury he, supposing he saw a way of safety showed to him, entreated the aid of his friends that they would convey him to the sea, which being granted, he was set into a little ship, and so escaped the treats of Scylla, the conqueror to the fall of an assy meet any going to an augury he signifies labor patience and hideroans 
A wolf meeting anyone is a good sign. The effect whereof was seen in Hiero of Sicilia, from whom a wolf, snatching away a book whilst he was at school, confirmed to him the success of the kingdom, but yet the wolf makes him speechless whom he sees first. A wolf rent in pieces a wedgeman of P. Africanus and C. Fulvius at Mintern, when the Roman army was overcome by the fugitives in Sicilia, also he signifies prefudent men, such as you can give no credit to, which was known in the progency of Romans, for the fate which they long since sucked from the mother of the wolf and kept to themselves from the beginning, as by certain law of nature passes over to their posterity to meet a lion seeing she amongst lion animals of the strongest and striking terror into all the rest is good but for a woman to meet a lioness is bad because she hinders conception for a lioness brings forth but once to meet sheep and goats is good it is read also in the austenian of tuscians of this animal she wear any unusual color pretends to the imperial plenty of all things together with much happiness when virgil it apodio sings to us but in the medius realms shall scarlet bear and changing sometimes golden fleeces wear it is also good to meet oxen treading out corn but better to meet them ploughing, which although breaking the way hindered your journey, yet by the favour of their auspicium will recompense thee again. A dog a journey is fortunate, because Cyrus, being cast into the woods, was nourished by a dog till he came to the kingdom, which also the angel, companion of Tobit, did not scorn as a companion. The caster, because he bites off his testicles and leaves them to the hunters, is an ill omen and pretends that a man will injure himself also among small animals. My signified danger, for the same day that they did know gold and the capital, both the consuls were interpreted by Hannibal by way of ambush near Tarentum. The locust making a stand in any place or burning the place hinders any form of their wishes and is an ill omen in the contrary the grasshoppers promote a journey and foretell a good event of things the spider weaving a line downwards is said to signify hope of money to come also the ants because they know how to provide for themselves and to prepare safe nests for themselves portend security and riches a great army hence when the Ants had devoured a tame dragon of Tibetus Caesar. It was advised that he should take the heed of the tumult of a multitude. If a snake meet you, take heed of an ill-tongued enemy, for this animal has no power but in his mouth. A snake, creeping into Tiberius his place or palace, portended his fall. Two snakes were found in the bed of Semperonius Cracunus whereby a soothsayer told him if he would let the male or the female escape either he or his wife shall shortly die after he preferring the life of his wife killed the male and let the female escape and within a few days he died so a vapor signifies lewd woman and wicked children and the eel signifies a man displeased with everybody for she lives apart from all other fishes nor ever found in the company of any of amongst augurians and omens there is none more effectual and potent than man none that does signify the truth more clearly you shall therefore diligently note and observe the condition of the man that meeted you his age profession station gesture motion and exercise complexion habit name words speech and all such like things foreseeing there are in all 
other animals so much discoveries of passages without all question these are most efficacious and clear which are infused into man's soul which cicero himself testifies saying that there is a certain auspicium naturally in men's souls of their eternity for the knowing of all the courses and causes of things in the foundation of the city of rome the head of a man was found which his whole face which did passage the greatness of the empire and gave the name to the mountain of the capital the brucian soldiers fighting against octavius and m antonius found an ethiopian in the gate of their castle whom they say as a passage of ill success slay yet they were unfortunate in the battle and brutus and cassius both generals were slain meeting of monks is commonly accounted an ill omen and so much the rather if it be early in the morning because these kinds of men living for the most by sudden death of men as vultures do by slaughters next chapter how aspicus are verified by the light of natural instinct and of some rules of finding of it out auspicia and auguria which foretell things to come by animals and birds orpheus the divine himself as we read did teach and show first of all which afterwards were had in great esteem with all nations now they are verified by the light of natural instinct as if from this some lights of divination may descend upon four-footed beast winged and other animals by which they are able to presage to us of the events of things which virgil seems to be sensible of when he sings nor think i heaven on them such knowledge states nor that are produced or as above the fates now this instinct of nature as says william of paris is more sublime than all humane apprehensions and very near and most like to prophecies by this instinct there is a certain wonderful light of divination in some animals naturally by this it is magnifestly appears in some dogs who know by this instinct thieves and men and find them out and apprehend them falling upon them with a full mouth by the like instinct vultures foresee future slaughters in battles and gather together into places where they shall be as if they foresaw the flesh of dead carcasses by the same instinct patridges know their dam which um, they never saw and leave the patridge which stole away her dam's eggs and set upon them by the same instinct also her hurtful and terrible things are perceived the soul of the man being altogether ignorant of them when terror and horror ceased much upon men when they think nothing of these things so a thief lying hid in any house although nobody knows or thinks of his being there strikes fear and terror and a troublesomeness of mind into the inhabitants of that house although haply not of all because the brightness of this instinct is not in all men yet of some of them so a harlot being hid in some very large house is sometimes perceived to be there by some one that is altogether ignorant of her being there it is mentioned in histories that hyresis a certain egyptian a man of a divine nature could discern unclean women not only by his eyes but by their voice being heard afar off and thereupon did fall into a most grievous headache william of paris also makes mention of a certain woman in his time that by the same instinct perceived a man whom she loved coming two miles off also he relates that in his time was a certain star convicted of unchastity by the smell of the male who being judged guilty by a multitude of storks 
whom the male gathered together, discovering to them the fault of his mate was her feathers being pulled off, torn in pieces by them. He also makes mention of a certain horse, who not knowing his damn mother, and leaping off copulations with her, when afterwards he understood that he had done, bit off his own stones, or that testicles, by way of revenge upon himself for his incest, the same that Vero, Aristotle, and Pliny relate concerning horses, and Pliny makes mention of a certain serpent called the asp, and did such a like thing, for she coming to a certain man's stable in Egypt, was there daily fed, and she having brought forth some young, but one of which a son of her hosts was killed, after she knew of it, killed that young one, and would never return to that house any more. Now by these examples you see how the lights of a passage may descend upon some animals as signs or marks of things and are set in their gestures, motion voice, flying, going meat, color and such like, for according to the doctrine of the Platonists there is a certain power put into inferior things by which for the most part they agree with the superiors. Whence also the tacit consents of animals seem to agree with the divine bodies and their bodies and affections to be affected with their powers, by the name of which they are ascribed to the deities. We must consider, therefore, what animals are saturnal, what are jovial, and what are martial, and so of the rest, and according to their properties to draw forth the presages, so also, those birds which resemble Saturn and Mars are all of them called terrible and deadly, as to scritch, oh, the holdet, and others which we have mentioned before, also the horn owls, because she is a Saturnia, a solitary bird, also nightly, and is reputed to the most unfortunate omnius of which the poet said, the ugly owl, which no bird will resent, foretells misfortunes and the most sad events. But the swan is a delicious bird, venerable, of Venus, and dedicated to Phoebus, and is said to be most happy in her presages, especially in the auspicious of mariners, because she is never drowned in water, when Ovid sings, most happy is the cheerful, singing the swan in her presages. There are also some birds, that presage with their mouth, and singing as the crow, pi, do, whence Virgil, this did foreshow oft the hollow home that omnius crow, now the birds that portrand future things by their fiery air, buzzards, the bone-breakers, eagles, vultures, cranes, swans, and the like, for they are to be considered in their flying, whether they fly slowly or swiftly, whether to the right hand or to the left, how many fly together upon the account of cranes flies a space. They signify a tempest, when slowly fair weather, also when two eagles fly together, they are said to pretend evil, because this is a number of confusion. In like manner, thou should inquire into the reason of the rest, as this is showed of number. Moreover, it belongs to an artist to observe a similitude in these conjectures, as in Virgil, Venus dissembling teached her son Aenas in these verses. All this is not for naught, else we in vain my parents augury taught. Lo, twice six swan in glad company, Jove's bird pursued through the eternal, ethereal sky, in heaven's broad attacks, now earth in a long train, they seem to take or taken to disdain, as they return, with sounding wings they sport, and heaven surrounding in a long consort. Just so I say, thy friends, and flee, have gained the port, or with full sails the bay obtained. 
The most wonderful is that kind of ignorance of theirs who hear and understand the speeches of animals, in which, as amongst the ancients, Melampius and Tiresias and Thales and Apollonius, the Tyanean of the Apollonius of Tiana, who, as we read, excelled, and whom they report and had excellent skill in the language of birds, of whom Philostratus and Porphyrius, Porphyri speak, a saying that of old when Apollonius stayed in a company amongst his friends, seeing sparrows sitting upon a tree, and one sparrow coming from elsewhere unto them, making a great chattering and noise, and then flying away, all the rest following him, he said to his companions that that sparrow told the rest that an ass being burned with wheat fell down in a hole near the city, and that the wheat was scattered upon the ground. Many, being much moved by these words, went to see, and, and so it was, as Apollonius said, at which they much wondered. Also, Porphyrius, the Platonist in his third book of Sacrifices, said that there was a swallow, for it was certain because every voice of any animal is significantly of some passion in his soul, as joy, sadness, or anger, or the like, which voices is not so wonderful of thing should be understood by men conversant about them. But Democritus himself declared this art as said Pliny by naming the birds of whose blood mixed together was produced a serpent of which whosoever did eat should understand the voices of birds. And Hermes said, If any one shall go forth to catch birds in a certain day of the calendar of November and shall boil the first bird which he catches with the heart of a fox and all that shall eat of this bird shall understand the voices of birds and all other animals. Also the Arabians say that they can understand the meaning of brutes who shall eat the heart and liver of dragons. Proclus also the Platonists believe and wrote that the heart of a mole conduced the passages. These were also divinations and auspicious which were taken from the inward of sacrifices, the inventor whereof was Tiggs, of whom Lucian sang. And if he inwards have no credit gained, and if this art by Tiggs was but for, for inked, the Romans' religion thought that the liver was the head of the inwards, hence the soothsayers, inquiring after future things in the inward, did first look into the liver, in which were two heads, whereof the one was called the head for, for the city, and the other for the enemy. And the heads of this, another part being compared together, they pronounced victory, as we read in Lincoln, that the inward did signify the slaughter of Pompey's man, and the victory of Caesar's, according to these verses. I, inwards, all defects are omnias, on part and branch of the entrails those increase another part is weak and flagging lies beats and moves with quick pulse the arteries then the bowls being finished they search the heart now if there were a sacrifice found without a heart or a head was wanting in the liver these were deadly passages and were called Pia Cluria, also if a sacrifice fled from the altar, or being smidden, made a lowing, or fell upon any part of his body, then he ought to do. It was like Omnius. We read that when Julius Caesar, on a day, went forth procession with his purple robe, and sitting in a golden chair, and sacrificing, there was a twice heart wanting, and when C. Marius Attica was sacrificing, there was wanting a liver. Also when Canius, the prince, and M. Marcellus, C. Claudius, and L. Petelius Cos 
was offering sacrifices that the liver was consumed away suddenly and not long after. One of them died of a disease, another was slain by man of Laguria, the entrails, foretelling so much which was thought to be done by the power of the gods or help of the devil, hence it was encountered a thing of great concernment amongst the ancients as oft as anything unusual was found in the inwards, as when Scylla was sacrificing at Laurentum, the figure of a crown appearing in the head of the liver, which Postumius, the soothsayer, interpreted the portrayed a victory with a kingdom, and therefore advised that Scylla should eat those entrails himself, the color also of the inwards is to be considered of these lucans made mention struck at the color prophets were with fear for with soul spots pale entrails stinged were both black and blue with specks of sprinkled blood they were there were in past such times such a venerable esteem of these arts that the most potent and wise men sought after them. Ye, the senate and kings did nothing without the counsel of the augurs, but all things in these days, partly and negligence of men, and partly by the authority of the fathers, are abolished. Next chapter of the soothsayings of flashes and lightnings and how monstrous and prodigious things are to be interpreted now the soothsayers of flashes and lightnings and of wonders and how monstrous and prodigious things are to be interpreted the prophets and priests of hatrusus have taught the art for they have ordained sixteen religions of the heavens and have ascribed gods to every one of them and besides eleven kings of lightnings and nine gods which should dart them forth by showing rules for understanding the significance of them but as often as monstrous prodigious and wondrous things happen they do presage as is most certain some great matter now their interpreter must be some excellent conjecture of similitudes as also some curious searcher and of them who at time are employed about the affairs of princes and provinces for the celestials take such care only for princes peoples and provinces that before the rest they might be prefigured and abnomished by stars, by constellations, by wonders, and by prodigies. Now, if the same thing or the like has been seen in former ages, we must consider that very thing that what happened after that, and according to these, to foretell the same or the like, because the same sign are for the same things and the like for like. So prodigies have come before the birth and death of many eminent men and kings, as Cicero makes mention of Midas a boy, into whose mouth, while he was sleeping, the ant put corns of wheat, in which an omen of great riches, so be set upon the mouth of Plato, when he was sleeping in the cradle, by which was foretold the sweetness of the speech. Hecuba, when she was bringing Fort Paris saw a burning torch which should set on fire Troy and all Asia. There appeared unto the mother of Phalaris the image of Mercury pouring blood upon the earth with which the whole house was overflowed. The mother of Dionysus dreamed she brought forth a satyr which prodigious dreams the event that followed made good. The wife of Tarquinius Precus, seeing a flame lick the head of Servius Tinius, foretold that she should have the kingdom. In like manner, after Troy was taken, Aeneas, disputing with Anchises, his father concerning a flight, there appeared a flame licking the crown 
of Asinius's head and doing him no harm, which thing, seeing it did pretend the kingdom of Asinius, persuaded him to depart for monstrous prodigies, did force run great and imminent destruction. So we read in Pliny that Atilius and C. Portius being consuls, it rained milk and blood, which did presage that a very great pestilence should the next year overspread Rome. Also in Lucania, it rained sponges, iron, and the year before Marcus Crassus was slain in Partia, with which also all the soldiers of Lucania, being a very numerous army, were slain. Also, L. Paulus and C. Marcellus, being consuls, it rained wool about the castle of Corisnam, near which place a year after Tianius was slain by Milus, and in the wars of Denmark the noise of arms and sound of a trumpet was heard in the air, and Livy concerning the Macedonian wars saith in the year when Annibal died. It rained blood for two days. Also concerning the Second Punic War, he said that water mixed with blood came down from heaven like rain, and that time when Annibal died spoiled Italy. A little before the destruction of Leuctra, the Lacedonians heard a noise of arms in the temple of Hercules, and at the same time in the temple of Hercules the door that was shut with bars opened themselves, and the arms that were hanged on the wall were found on the ground. The like events may be prognosticated of other like things, as oftentimes past something has been foretold of them, but concerning these also, the judgment of celestial influences must not be neglected, of which we shall no more largely treat in the following chapters. Next chapter of Geomancy, Hydromancy, Aromancy, Pyromancy, Four Divinations of Elements. More of the elements themselves teach us fatal events when those four famous kinds of divinations, Geomancy, Hydromancy, Aromancy, and Pyromancy have gotten their names, of which sorceress in Lucian seems to boast herself when she says, the earth, the air, the chaos and the sky, the sea, the field, the rocks and the mountains, high foretell the truth. The first, therefore, is geomancy, which foreshoot future things by the motions of the earth, as also the noise, the swelling, the trembling, the chops, the pits, and exhalations, and other impressions, the art of which Almandel, the Arabian set forth. But there is another kind of geomancy, which divines by points written upon the earth by a certain power in the fall of it, which is not present speculation, but of that we shall speak hereafter. Now, hydromancy does perform its presages by the impressions of water, their ebbing and flowing, their increases and depressions, their tempests and colors and the like, to which also are added visions which are made in the waters, a kind of divination found in the Persians, as Vera reports, a boy saw in the water the effigies of Mercury, which foretold in an hundred and fifty verses all the events of Mithridates, his war. We read also that Numa, Pompilius, practiced hydromancy, for in the water he called up the gods, and learned of them things to come, which also Pythagoras, a long time after Numa, practiced. This there was also an old boy of hydromancy, had in great esteem amongst the Assyrians, and it was called Lysonomancy, from a skin full of water, upon which they put plants of gold and silver and precious stones written upon with certain images names and characters to this may be referred that art 
by which lead and wax being melted and cast into the water do express manifest marks of images what we desire to do. There were also in former years fountains that did foretell things to come, as the father's fountain of Achaya and that which was called the water of Juno in Apidaurus, but of these more in the following chapters here we shall speak of oracles hither also may be referred the divination of fishes of which kind there was use made by the lycians and a certain place which was called dina near the sea in a wood dedicated to apollo made hollow and dry sand into which he that went the consult of future things let down roasted meat and presently that place was filled with waters and a great multitude of fishes and of strange shapes unknown to man did appear by the forms of which the prophet foretold what should come to pass these things does Ateneus more at large relate out of polycarmus in the history of lycians after the same manner does aromancy divine by airy impressions by the blowing out of winds by rainbows by circles about the moon and stars by mists and clouds and by imaginations and clouds and visions in the air so also pyromancy divines by fairy impressions and by stars with long tails by fairy colors by visions and imaginations in the air so also pyromancy divines by fairy impressions and by stars with long tails and fairy colors by visions and imaginations in the fire so the wife of cicero foretold that he would be counseled next year because when a certain man after the sacrifice was ended would look in the ashes there suddenly broke forth a flame of this kind are those that pliny speaks of that terrain pale and buzzing fires presage tempests circles about the snuffs of candles betoken rain if the flame fly tuning and winding it portrays wind also torches when they take strike the fire before them and are not kindled also when a coal sticks to pots taken off from the fire and with the fire casts off the ashes and sparkles or when ashes are hard grown together on the heart and when a coal is very bright to this is added capnomancy so called smoke because it searches into the flame and smoke and tin colors sounds and motions and where they are carried upright or on one side or round which we read in these verses in statius <clears throat> let pity be bound and on head altar laid let us implore the gods for divine aid she make it acute red towering flames and bright increase it by the air the middle being white and then she makes the flames without all bound for to wind in and out to run round like to a serpent also the atian caves and fields of the nymphs in Apollonia, augurs were taken from fires and flames joyful, and they did receive what was cast into them, and said if they did reject them, but these things we shall speak in following chapters amongst the answers of the oracles. Next chapter, of the receiving of the dead, and of sleeping, and wanting victuals many years together. The Arabian philosophers agree that some men may elevate themselves above the powers of their body and above their sensitive powers and those being surmounted to receive into themselves by the perfection of the heavens and intelligences a divine figure. Seeing, therefore, all the souls of men are perpetual and also all the spirits obey the perfect souls, magicians think that perfect men may by the powers of their soul repair their dying bodies with other inferior souls newly separated and inspire them again as a weasel that is killed is made alive again by the breath and cry of this damn mother the lions make alive their 
dead whelps by breathing upon them, and because, as they say, all like things being applied to their like are made of the same natures, and every patient and thing that receives into himself the act of any agent is endowed with the nature of that agent, and made connatural. Hence they think that the this vivification, or making alive, some herbs and magical confections, such as they say are made of the ashes of the phoenix and the cast skin of a snake, do much conduce, which indeed to main, many seems fabulous, and to some impossible, unless it could be accounted, approved by an historical faith, for we read of some that have been drowned in water, others cast into the fire and put upon the fire, others slain in war, others otherwise tried and after a few days were alive again. As Pliny testifies of Aviola, a man portraying the council of Lamia, Cowus, Tibro, Corpheus, Cabinus, and many others, also we read that Ace of the Tailmaker, Tonderus, Hercules, and Pelisi, the sons of Jupiter, the Talia being dead, were raised to life again. Also that many were by physicians and the magicians raised from dead again. As the historians relate of Asapius, and we have above mentioned out of Juba and Xanthus and Philostratus concerning Tilo, and a certain Arabian and Apollonius the Tynian. Also we read that Glacius, a certain man that was dead, whom they say beyond all exception, the physicians come to see the herb dragonwort restored to life. Some say that he revived by the putting into his body a medicine made of honey, whence the proverb, Glaucus was raised from the dead by taking in honey into his body, Apelius also related the manner of these kinds of restoring to life, said of Zakla, the Egyptian prophet. The prophet, being thus favorable, lays a certain herb upon the mouth of the body of a young man being dead, and another upon his breast, then turning toward the east, or rising of the propitious sun, praying silently, a great assembly of people striving to see it, in the first place, have upon his breast, then makes a beating in his veins, then this body to be filled with breath mouth to mouth, after which the carcass ariseth, and the young man speaks. If these things are true, the dying soul must, sometimes lying hid in her bodies, be oppressed with vehement ecstasies, and by freed from all bodily action, so that the life sense motion forsake the body, and so that the man is not yet truly dead, but lies astonished, dazed, and as it were dead for a certain time. And this is often found that in times of pestilence, many that are carried for dead to the graves, to the buried, revive again. The same also has often befallen woman, by reason of fits of the mother and Rabbi Moses, out of the book of Galen, which Patricia translated, makes mention of a man who was suffocated for six days, and did neither eat nor drink, and his arteries became hard, and it is said in the same book that a certain man, by being filled with water, lost the pulse of his whole body, so that the heart was not perceived to move, and he lay like a dead man. Also it is said that a man by reason of a fall from a high place or great noise or long staying under the water, many men fall into a swoon, which may continue forty-eight hours, and so lay if he were dead, his face being very green. And in the same place there is mention made of a man that buried a man that seemed to be dead seventy-two hours after his seeming decease, and so killed him because he buried him alive. And there are given signs whereby it may be known who are alive, although they seem to be dead, and indeed will die.
unless there be some means used to recover them, as philbotomy or some other cure, and these are such as very seldom happen. This is the manner by which we understand magicians and physicians do raise dead men to life, as they that were tried by the stinging of serpents, whereby the nations of the Marcy and the Psyli restored to life. Now we many conceive that such kinds of ecstasies may continue a long time, although a man be not truly dead, it is endormis and crocodiles and many other serpents which sleep all winter and are in such a dead sleep that they can scarce be awakened with fire. And I have often seen a dormis dissected and continue movable as if she were dead until she was boiled, and when presently in boiling the water the dissected members did show life, also after it be heard to be believed, we read in some approved historians that some men have slept for many years together, and in the time of sleep until they awakened, there was no alteration in them as to make them seem older. The same does Pliny testify of the certain boy whom he said, being wearied with heat in his journey, sleep fifty-five years in a cave, who we read else that Opmedius Gnosius slept fifty-seven years in a cave, hence the proverb arose, the outsleep Epimedius Damascinus tells that in his time a certain countryman, being wearied in Germany, slept for the space of a whole autumn and the winter, following under the heap of hay until the summer, when the hay began to be eaten up, then he was found awakened as a man half dead, and out of his wits, a celestial. His stories confirm this opinion concerning the seven sleepers whom they say slept hundred and ninety-six years. This was in Norway a cave in a high seashore, where, as follows Damascus and Pedodius, the marcher write, seven men lay sleep a long time without corruption, and the people that went in to disturb them were contracted or drawn together, so that after a while, being forewarned by that punishment, they does not hurt them. Now Xenocartus a man of men repute amongst philosophers was of opinion that this long sleeping was appointed by God as a punishment for some certain sin. But Marcus Domiscanus proves if by many reasons to be possible and natural, neither does he think it irrational that some should without meat and drink and avoiding extremes without consuming or corruption, sleep many months, and this may befall a man by reason of some poisonous potion or sleepy disease or such like causes, for certain days, months, or years, according to the intention or remission of the power of the medicine or of the passions of their mind. And physicians say that there are some antidotes with which they that take that too great a potion shall be able to endure hunger a long time, as Elias in former time being fed with a certain food by an angel walked and fasted in the strength of that meat forty days, and John Boccatius makes mention of a man in his time in Venice who would every year fast for four days without any meat. But that was a greater wonder that there was a woman in Lower Germany at the same time who took no food till the thirteenth day of her age, which to us may seem incredible, but that she lately confirmed it as also tells of a miracle of our age that this mother, Nicholas Stone, a Helvetian by nation, who lived twenty years in the wilderness without meat till he died. That also is wonderful, which Theophrastus mentioned concerning a man called Pilnus, 
who used no meat or drink besides milk, and there are grave authors who describe a certain herb of Sparta, with which they say the Scythians can endure twelve days of hunger without meat or drink, or they do but taste it or hold it in their mouth. Next chapter of divinations by dreams. There are also kind of divinations by dreams confirmed by the traditions of philosophers, the authorities of divines, the examples of histories and daily experience. A dreams I call here not vain dreams or idle imaginations, for those are vain and have no divinations in them, but arise from the remains of watching and disturbance of the body. For as the mind is taken up about and wearied with cares, it suggests itself to be that as asleep. I call that a dream here, which is caused by the celestial influences in the fantastic spirit, mind, or body being all well disposed. The rule of interpreting this is found amongst astrologers in that part which is wrote concerning questions but yet that is not sufficient because this kind of dreams come by us to use divers men after a diverse manner and according to the diverse quality and dispositions of the fantastic spirit wherefore there cannot be given one common rule to all of the interpretations of dreams but according to the opinion of synesius seeing there are the same accidents to things and like befall like so be which had often fall upon the same visible thing has assigned to himself the same opinion passion fortune action event and as aristotle says the memory is confirmed by sense and by keeping in memory the same thing knowledge is obtained as also by the knowledge of many experiences by little and little arts and sciences are obtained after the same account you must conceive of dreams whence synesius commands that everyone should observe his dreams and their events and such like rule to commit the memory all things that are seen and accidents that befall as well in sleep as in watching and with diligent observations consider with himself the rules by which these are to be examined for by this means shall a diviner be able by little and little interpretations to his dreams of so be nothing slip out of his memory now dreams are more efficacious when the moon overruns the sign which was in the ninth number of the tb nativity or revolution of that year or in the ninth sign from the sign of perfection for it is a most true and certain divination neither does it proceed from nature or human arts but from purified minds by divine inspiration we shall now discuss and examine that which belongs to prophesying and oracles next chapter of madness and divinations which are made when men are awake and of power of a melancholy humor by which spirits are sometimes induced into men's bodies it happens also sometimes that not only they that are asleep but also they that are watchful do with a kind of instigation of mind divine which divination aristotle calls ravishment or a kind of madness and teaches that it proceeds from a melancholy humor saying it is treatise of divination melancholy men by reason of their earnestness do far better conjecture and quickly conceive habit and most easily receive an impression of the celestials and in his problem said that the sibyls and the bachidus and nicaratus and seros and amon were by their natural melancholy complexion prophets and poets the cause therefore of this madness if it be anything within the body is a melancholy humor 
not that which they call black color, which is so obstinate and terrible a thing that the violence of it is said by physicians and natural philosophers, which it does induce also to entice evil spirits to seize upon men's bodies. Therefore, we understand a melancholy humor here that by a natural and white color, for this, when it is stirred up, burns and stirs up madness conducing to knowledge and definitions, especially if it be held by any celestial influx, especially of Saturn, who seeing he is cold and dry, and a melancholy humor hath his influence upon it, increases and preserves it, besides seeing he is the author of secret contemplation and estranged, from all public affairs and the highest of all planets does always with call his mind from outward businesses so also make it ascend higher and bestows upon him the knowledge and passages of future things and this is aristotle's meaning in the book of problems by melancholy said he some men are made as if it were divine foretelling things to come and some men are made poets he said also that all men that were excellent in any science were for the most part melancholy democraticus and plato attends the same saying that there were some melancholy men that had such excellent wits that they were thought and seem to be more divine than humane so also there have been many melancholy men at first root ignorant and intractable as they say hesoidme ion technicus calcinus homer and lucretus were who on a sudden were taken with madness and became poets and prophesied wonderful and divine things which they themselves scarce understood whence divine plato and ion said many prophets after the violence of their madness was abated do not well understand what they wrote yet treated accurately of each art in their madness it is all arts by reading of them judged so great also they say the power of melancholy is that by its force celestial spirits are also sometimes drawn into men's body by whose presence and instincts antiquity testifies men have been made drunk and speak wonderful things and that they think happens under threefold difference according to a threefold apprehension of the soul imaginative rational and mental they say therefore that when the mind is forced with a melancholy humor nothing moderating the power of the body and passing beyond the bonds of the members is wholly carried into imagination and thus suddenly become a seat of inferior spirits by whom it oftentimes receives wonderful ways and forms of manual arts so we see that any most ignorant man does presently become an excellent painter or contrivers of buildings and to become a master in any such art but when these kinds of spirit portend to us future things they show these things which belong to the disturbed of the elements and which of times as rain tempests inudiates earthquakes and great mortality famine slaughter and the like as we read in aulus genius that cornelius patarus his priest did at the time when caesar and pomne were to fight in tausalia being taken with a madness foretell the time order and issue of the battle but when the mind is turned wholly into reason it became a respectable for middle spirits hence it obtains the knowledge and understanding of natural and humane things so we see that a man sometimes does on a sudden become a philosopher physician or an excellent orator and foretells mutation of kingdoms and restitutions of ages and such things as belong to them as the sibyl did to the romanes but when the mind is wholly elevated and to understanding 
then it becomes a respectable of sublime spirits and learns of them the secrets of divine things such as the laws of god the orders of angels and such things as belong to the knowledge of things eternal and salvation of souls it foresees things which are appointed by god especially predestinations as future prodigies or miracles the prophet to come and the changing of the law so the sibyls prophesied of christ a long time before his coming so virgil understanding that christ was at hand and remembering what sibyl Comdia said and sang to polio last times are come Comnia prophesy now from high heaven spring a new progeny and the times great under now again is born the maid returns saturnial realms return and a little after intimating that original sin shall be of no effect said if any spirit of our old vis remained by thee their void and fear shall leave the land he a god's life shall take with gods shall see mixed heroes and himself their object be rule with paternal power that appeased earth he shall then he adds that thence the fall of the serpent and the poison of the tree of death of the knowledge of good and evil shall be nulled saying the serpent shall and the deceitful herb of venom and fall yet the intimates that some sparks of original sin shall remain when he says some steps of ancient fraud shall yet be found and the last which is most great hyperbole cries out to his child as the offspring of god adoring him in these words dear race of god great stocks of jupiter behold the world shakes in its ponderous x see earth and heavens immense the ocean's tracts how all things approaching i rejoice oh that my life would last so long and voice as would suffice thy actions to rehearse there are also some prognostics which are in the middle between natural and supernatural divinations as in those who are near to death and being wakened without old age being weakened so sometimes foresee things to come because as said plato but how much the more men are less hindered by their sense so much the more accurately they understand and because the nearer to the place whither they must go and their bonds being as it were a little loose seeing there are no more subject to the body easily perceive the light of divine revelations next chapter of the morning of man of the external senses and also the inward and the mind of the threefold appetite of the soul and the passion of the will it is the opinion of some divines that god did not immediately create the body of man but by the assistance of the heavenly spirits compound and frame him which opinion alcinous and plato favor thinking that god is the chief operator of the whole world of spirits both good and bad and therefore immortalized them but that all kind of mortal animals were made of that command of god for if he should have created them they must have been immortal the spirits therefore mixed earth fire air and water together made of them all put together one body which they subjected to the service of the soul assigning in its several provinces to each power therefore to the meaner of them mean and low places as to anger the midriff to lust the womb but the more noble sense is the head as the tower of the whole body and then the manifold organs of speech they divide the sense into external and internal the external are divided into five known to everyone to which were are told five organs or subjects as it were foundations being so ordained that they which are placed in the more eminent part of the bodies have 
a greater degree of purity for the eyes placed in the uppermost parts are the most pure and have an affinity with the nature of fire and light and then the ear have in the second order of place and purity and are compared to the air the nostrils have the third order and have the middle nature between the air and the water then the organ of tasting which is grosser and most like to the nature of water last of all the touching is diffused through the body and is compared to the grossness of earth the more pure senses are those who perceive their objects farthest off as seeing and hearing and the smell and the taste which does not perceive but those that are nigh but the touch perceives both ways for it perceives bodies nigh and the sights discern the medium of air so the touch perceives by the medium of stick or pole bodies hard soft and moist now the touch only is common to all animals for it is most certain that man has this sense and his and this taste as he excels all other animals but in the other three there is excelled by some animals as by the dog who hears sees and smells more accurately than man and lynx and eagles see more accurately than all other animals and the man now the interior senses are according to Averroes, divided into four whereof the first is called common sense because it does first collect and perfect all the representations which are drawn in by the outward senses the second is the imaginative power whose office is seeing it represents nothing to retain those representations which are perceived by the former senses and to present them to the third faculty of inward senses which is the fantasy or power of judging whose work is also to perceive and judge by the representations perceived what are what kind of thing that is of which the representations are and to commit those things which are thus discerned and adjunct to the memory to be kept for the virtues thereof in general are discourse dispositions persecutions and flights and stirrings up to motion but in particular the understanding of intellectuals virtues the manner of discipline counsel election and this is that which shows its future things by dreams whence the fancy is sometimes named the fantastical intellect for it is the last impression of the understanding which is said lamblicus is belonging to all the powers of the mind and forms all figures resemblings of species and operations and things seen and sends forth the impressions of other powers unto others and those things which appear by sense it stirs up into an opinion but those things which appear by the intellect and second place it offers to opinion but of itself it receives images from all and by its property does properly assign them according to their assimilations forms all the actions of the soul and accommodates the external to the internal and impresses the body with its impression now these senses have their organs in the head for the common sense and imagination take up the two former cells of the brain although aristotle places the organ of the common sense in the heart but the cognitive power possesses the highest and the middle part of the head and lastly the memory of hindmost part thereof moreover the organs of voice and speech are many as the inward muscle of the breast between the ribs the breasts and the lungs the arteries the windpipe the bowing and the tongue and all most parts and muscles that serve for breathing but the proper organ of speech is the mouth in which are framed words and speeches the tongue the teeth the lips the palate above the sensible soul which expresses the powers of the organs of the body the incorporeal mind possesses the highest place and it has a double nature 
the one which inquired into the causes, properties, and progress of those things which are contained in the order of nature and is content in the contemplation of the truth, which is therefore called the contemplative intellect. The other is a power of the mind which, discerning by consulting that things are to be done and what things to be shunned, it is wholly taken up in consultation and action, and it's therefore yield the active intellect. This order of power, therefore, nature ordained in man, that by the external senses we might know corporeal things by the internal, the representation of the bodies, as also things abstracted by the mind and the intellect, which are neither bodies nor anything like them, and according to this threefold order of the powers of the soul there are three appetites in the soul the first is natural which is an inclination of nature into its end as of a stone downward which is in all stones another is animal which the sense follows and it is divided into irascible and consubstantial the third intellective which is called the will differing from the sensitive in this the sensitive is of itself of those things which may be presented to the senses desiring nothing unless in some manner comprehended but the will although it be of itself of all things that are possible yet because it is free by its essence it may be also of things that are impossible as if it were in the devil desiring himself to be equal with god and therefore altered and depraved with pleasure and continual anguish whilst it ascends to the inferior powers whence from the depraved appetite there arise four passions in it which with in like manner the body is affected sometimes whereof the first is called obligation which is certain quietness or ascension of the mind or will because it obeys and not willingly consents to that pleasantness which the senses hold forth which is therefore defined to be an inclination of the mind to an affirmative pleasure the second is called effusion which is a remission of the dissolutions of the power when beyond the oblactation the whole power of the mind and intention of the present good is melted and diffused itself to enjoy it. The third vaunting and loftiness, thinking itself to have attained to some great good in the enjoyment of which is deprived itself and glory it. The fourth and the last is envy or a certain kind of pleasure or delight at another man's harm without any advantage to itself. It is said to be without any advantage to itself because if any should for his own profit rejoice at another man's harm this would be rather out of love to himself than out of ill will to another and these four passions arising from a depraved appetite for pleasure the grief or perplexity it is self does also so many contrary passions as horror sadness fear and sorrow at another's good without his own hurt which we call envy sadness at others prosperity as pity is a certain kind of sadness at unlongst misery another's misery next chapter of the passions of the mind their origin difference and kinds the passions of the mind are nothing else but certain motions or inclinations proceeding from the apprehension of anything as of good or evil, convenient or inconvenient. Now these kind of apprehensions are of three sorts, visual, rational and intellectual, and according to these three are three sorts of passion in the soul. For when they follow the sensitive apprehension, then they respect a temporal good or evil under the notion of profitable or unprofitable, delightful and offensive, 
and are called natural or animal passions when they follow the rational apprehension and so respect good or bad under the notion of virtue or vice praise or disgrace profitable or unprofitable honest or dishonest they are called rational or voluntary passions when they follow the intellectual apprehension and respect the good or bad under the notion of just or unjust true or false they are called intellectual passions and synderses now the subject of the passion of the soul is the consuppative power of the soul and is divided into consuppable and irascible and does respect good and bad but under a different notion for when the consuppable power respects good and evil absolutely love or lust or in contrary hatred is caused when it respects good as absent so desire is caused or evil as absent or at hand and so is caused horror flying from or loathing or if it respect good as present then there is caused delight mirth and pleasure but if evil is present then sadness anxiety grief but the irascible power respects good or bad under the notion of some difficulty to obtain the one or avoid the other and this sometimes with confidence and so there is caused hope or boldness but when with diffidency then despair and fear but when that irascible power riseth into revenge and this be only about some evil past as it were of injury or hurt offered there is caused anger and so we find eleven passions in the mind which are love hatred desire horror joy grief hope despair boldness fear and anger next chapter how the passions of the mind change the proper body by changing the accidents and the moving the spirit the fantastic or imaginative power has a ruling power over the passions of the soul when they follow the sensual apprehension for this does of its own power according to the diversity of the passions first of all change the proper body with a sensible transmutation by changing the accidents in the body and by moving the spirit upward or downward inward or outward and by producing diverse qualities in the members so in joy the spirits are driven out in fear drawn back in bashfulness are moved to the brain so in joy the heart is dilated outward but little and little in sadness is constringed by little and little inward after the same manner in anger or fear but suddenly again anger or desire of revenge produced heat redness a bitter taste and a looseness fear produces cold trembling of the heart speechlessness and paleness sadness causes sweat and bluish whiteness pity causes a kind of sadness does often ill affect the body of him that takes pity that itself seems to be the body of another man affected also it is manifest that amongst some lovers there is such strong tie of love that what the one suffers the other suffers anxiety induced dryness and the blackness and how great heats love stirs up in the liver and the pulse physicians know discerning by that kind of judgment the name of her that is beloved in a heroic passion so now stratus knew that antiochus was taken with the love of stratonica it is also manifest that such like passions when they are most vehement may cause death and this manifest to all men that with too much joy sadness love hatred men many times die and are sometimes freed from a disease so we read that sophilus and dionysus the sicilian tyrant did both suddenly die at news of a tragical victory so a certain woman seeing her son returning from the canonician battle 
died suddenly. Now, what sadness can do is known to all. We know that dogs oftentimes die with sadness from the death of their masters, sometimes also by reason of this, like passions, long diseases follow and are sometimes cured. So also some men, looking from an high place by reason of great fear tremble, are dim-sighted and weakened, and sometimes lose their senses so fear and falling sickness. Sometimes follow sobbing, sometimes wonderful effects are produced, as in the son of Croesus, whom his mother brought forth dumb, yet a vehement fear and ardent affection made him speak, which naturally he could never do. So with a sudden fall, oftentimes life, sense or motion on a sudden leave the members and presently gain are sometimes returned. And how much vehement anger joined with great audacity can do, Alexander the Great shows who being circumvined with the battle in India, who seen to send forth from himself lightning and fire. The father of Theodorus is said to have sent forth out of his body sparks of fire, so that sparkling flames did leap out with a noise, and such like things sometimes appear in beasts, as in Tiberius his horse, which is said to send forth a flame out of his mouth. Next chapter. How the passions of the mind change the body by way of imitation from some resemblance, also of the transforming and translating of men, and what force the imaginative power has not only over the body, but the soul. The foresaid passions sometimes alter the body by way of imitation. The reason of the virtue, which like likeness of the thing has to change it, which power the vehement imagination moves as in setting the teeth on edge at the sight of hearing of something, or because we see or imagine another to eat sharp or sore things, so he which sees another yawn, yawns also, and some, when they hear one name sore things, their tongues wax at tart. Also the seeing of a filthy thing causeth nauseousness. Many at the sight of a man's blood fall into a swoon. Some, when they see bitter meat given to any, perceive a bitter in their mouth. And William of Paris said that he saw a man that at the sight of a medicine went to stool as oft as he pleased, when as neither the substance of the medicine nor the odor nor the taste of it came to him but only a kind of resemblance was apprehended by him upon his account some that are in a dream think they burn and are in a fire and are fearfully tormented as if they did truly burn when as the substance of the fire is not near to them but only a resemblance apprehended by their imagination and sometimes men's bodies are transformed and transfigured and also transported and this oftentimes when they are in a dream, and sometimes when they are awake. So Cyprus, after he was chosen king of Italy, did very much wonder at and mediate upon the sight and the victory of the bulls, and on the thought thereof did sleep a whole night, but in the morning was found horned, no otherwise than by the vegetative power being stirred up by a vehement imagination, elevating, corniferous, humorous into his head and producing horns for a vehement cogitation whilst it vehemently moves this species pictures out of the figures of the thing thought on which they represent in their blood and the blood impresses from itself on the members that are nourished by it as upon those of the same body so upon those of others as the imagination of a woman with a child impresses the mark of the thing longed for upon the, her child and the imagination of a man with a mad dog impresses upon his urine the image of dogs so men may grow gray on a sedan and some by the dream of one night have 
grown up from boys into perfect men. Hither, though, may be referred those many scars of kingdom Dagobertus and the marks of Franciscus, which they received in the whilst he was afraid of correction, he other whilst he did wonderfully meditate upon the wounds of Christ, so many are transported from place to place, passing over rivers, fires, and unpassable places, that when the species of any vehement desire or fear or boldness are impressed upon their spirit, and being mixed with vapors, do move the organ of the touch in the original together with fantasy, which is the original of local motion whence they stir up the members and organs of motion to motion and are moved without any mistake unto the imagined place not out of sight but from the inferior fantasy so great a power is there of the soul upon the body that which may soever that imagines and dreams that it goes thither it lead the body we read many other examples by which the power of the soul upon the body is wonderfully explained as it is that which avicen describes of a certain man who when the police could affect his body with the palsy they report of galnus phoebus that the did fall into madness not casually but on purpose for whilst he did imitate madmen he assimilated their madness to himself and became mad indeed and austin or that's augustine makes mention of some men who would move their ears at their pleasure and some that would move the crown of their head to their forehead and could draw it back again when they pleased and of another that could sweat at his pleasure and it is well known that some can weep at their pleasure and pour forth abundance of tears and that there are some that can bring up what they have swallowed when they please as out of a bag by degrees and we see that in these days there are many who can so imitate and express the voices of birds cattle dogs and some men that they can scarce at all be discerned also Pliny relates by diverse examples that women have been turned into men. Pontanus testified in this time a certain woman called Saiteva and another called Aemilia, who after many years after they were married were changed into a man. Now how much imagination can do upon the soul? No man is ignorant for it is nearer to the substance of the soul than the sense is, wherefore it acts upon the soul than the sense does. So woman by certain strong imaginations, dreams and suggestions, brought in by certain magical arts, do oftentimes bind them into a strong love of anyone. So they say that Medea only by a dream burnt in love towards Jason, so the soul sometimes is by a vehement imagination or speculation altogether abstracted from the body, as Celsus related of a certain presbyter who as often as he pleased could make himself senseless and lie like a dead man, that when any one pricked or burnt him he felt no pain but lay without any motion or breathing. Yet he could, as he said, hear men's voices, as it were afar off, if they cried aloud. But in these abstractions we shall discourse more fully in the following chapters. Next chapter. How the passions of the mind work out of themselves upon other bodies. The passions of the soul which follow the fantasy when they are most vehement, can not only change their own body, but also can transcend so as to work upon another's body, so that some wonderful impressions are thence produced in the elements and eccentrical things, and also can so take away or bring some disease of the mind or body, for the passions of the soul are the chiefest cause of temperament of its proper body so the soul being strongly elevated and inflamed with a strong imagination sends forth health or sickness not only in its proper body but also in other bodies so a vision is of the opinion that a camel 
may fall by the imagination of anyone, so he which is bitten with a mad dog presently falls into a madness, and there appears in his urine the shape of dogs. So the longing of a woman with a child does act upon another's body when it signs the infant in the womb with the mark of the thing longed for. So many monstrous generation proceed from monstrous imaginations of women with child as Marcus Damascenus reports that Petra Sancta, a town situated upon the territories of Pisa, wench that was presented to Charles, king of Bohemia, who was rough and hairy all over her body like a wild beast, whom her mother affected with a religious kind of horror upon the picture of John the Baptist, which was by her bed, in time of conception, afterwards brought forth through this fashion, and this we see is not only in man, but also is done amongst brute creatures. So we read that Jacob the patriarch, with his speckled rods set in the watering places, did discolor the sheep of Laban, so the imaginative powers of peacocks and other birds, whilst they be coupling, impress a color upon their wings, whence we produce white peacocks, by hanging round the places where they couple white clothes. Now by these examples it appears how the affection of the fantasy, when it vehemently intends itself, does not only affect its own proper body, but also another's, so also the desire of witches to hurt, does bewitch men most perniciously with steadfast looks to these things Avishan, Aristotle, Algazel, and Galen ascend, for it is manifest that a body may most easily be affected with the vapor of another's diseased body, which we plainly see in the plague of leprosy. Again, in the vapors of the eyes there is so great a power that can bewitch and infect any that are near them, as the cockatrice or basilisk, killing men with their looks, and certain women in Scythia, amongst the Lyrians and Tribali, killed who am so ever, they looked upon angry. Therefore let no man wonder that the body and soul of one may in like manner be affected with the mind of another, seeing the mind is far more powerful, strong, fervent and more prevalent in its motion than vapors exhaling out of bodies. Neither are there wanting mediums by which it should work, neither is another body less subjected to another's mind than the other another's body, upon the account that they say that a man by him affection and habit only may act upon another. Therefore philosophers advise that the society of evil and mischievous men must be shunned, for their soul being full of nauseous rays infects them that are near with a hurtful contagion. On the contrary, they advise that the society of good and fortunate men be endeavor after, because by their nearness they do as much good, for as the smell of as a fetida or musk, so of bad, something of bad, and something good of good, is derived upon them that are nigh, and sometimes continues a long time. Now then, if the forced passion have so great a power in the fantasy, they have certainly a greater power in the reason, inasmuch as the reason is more excellent than the fantasy. And lastly, they have much greater power in the mind, for this is when it is fixed upon God for any good with its whole intention, does oftentimes affect others, another body, as well as its own with some divine gift. By this means we read that many miracles were done by Apollonius, Pythagoras, Ambedocles, Philodus, and many prophets and holy men of religion but of these more fully in following chapters, where we shall discourse of religion. Next chapter, that the passions of the mind are helped by a celestial season, and how necessary the constancy of the mind is in every work.
The passions of the mind are much helped and are helpful and become most powerful by virtue of the heaven, as they agree with the heaven neither by in any natural agreement or by voluntary election, for as said Plutomy, he which chooses which is the better seems to differ nothing from him who has this of nature. It conduces, therefore, very much of the receiving of the benefit of the heavens in any work, and we shall, the heavens, make ourselves suitable to it in our thoughts, affections, imaginations, elections, deliberations, contemplations, and the like. For such like passions do vehemently stir up our spirit to their likeness and suddenly expose us and ours to the superior significators. If such like passions, and also by reason of their dignity and nearness to the superiors, do much more partake of the celestials than any material things, for our minds can, through imagination or reason by a kind of limitation, be so conformed to any star as suddenly to be filled with the virtues of that star, as if it were a proper receptacle of the influence thereof. Now the contemplating minds, as it withdraws itself from all senses, imagination, nature, and deliberation, and it calls itself back to things separated, unless it is exposed of itself to Saturn, is not of present consideration or inquiry. Our mind does affect divers things of faith, which is firm attention a fixed intention and a vehement application of the worker or receiver to him that cooperates in anything and gives power to the work which we intend to do so that there is made as it were in us the image of the virtue to be received and the thing to be done in us or by us we must therefore in every work and the application of things affect vehemently imagine hope and believe strongly for that will be a great help, and it is verified amongst physicians that a strong belief and a undoubted hope and love towards the physician and the medicine conduce much to health, yea, more sometimes than the medicine itself, for the same that the efficiency and virtue of the medicine works, the same does the strong imagination of the physician's work being able to change the qualities of the body of the sick, especially when the patient placed much confidence in the physicians by the means of disposing himself for the receiving of the virtues of the physician and the medicine. Therefore, he that works in magic must be of a constant belief, be credulous, and not of all doubt of obtaining the effect for as a firm and strong belief does work wonderful things, although it be a false work, so distrust and doubting does dissipate and break the virtue of the mind of the worker, which is the medium between both extremes whence it happens, that he is frustrated of the desired influence of the superiors, which could not be joined and united to our labors without a firm and solid virtue of our mind next chapter how men's mind may be joined with the mind and intelligencies of the celestials and together with them impress certain wonderful virtues upon inferior things the philosophers especially the arabians say that man's mind when it is most intent upon a work through its passion and effects is joined with the mind of the stars and intelligencies and being so joined is the cause of some wonderful virtue be infused into our works and things and this has become there is in the apprehension any power of all things so because all things have a natural obedience to it and of necessity an efficiency and more to that which desires them but a strong desire and according to this is verified the arts of characters and Im images enchantments and some speeches and many other wonderful experiments to everything which the mind affects by this means whatsoever the mind of him that is in vehemity love affects has an efficiency to cause love and whatsoever the mind of him that strongly hates dictates has an efficiency to hurt and destroy
the like and other things which the mind affects with a strong desire for all those which the mind acts and dictates by characters figures words speeches gestures and the like help the appetite of the soul and acquire certain wonderful virtues as from the soul of the operator in that hour when such like appetite does invade it so from the opportunity and celestial influence moving the mind in that matter for our mind when it is carried upon the great ecstasy of any passion or virtue oftentimes presently takes of itself a strong better and more convenient hour or opportunity which thomas aquinas in his third book against the gentiles confessed so many wonderful virtues both cause and follow certain admirable operations by great affections affections in those things which the soul does dictate and that our to them but know that such kind of things confer nothing or very little but the author of them and to him which is inclined to them is if it were the author of them and this is the manner by which the efficiency is found out and it is general rule in them that every mind that is more excellent in its desire and affections makes such like things more fit for it self and also effectious to that which it desires every one therefore that is willing to work in magic must know the virtue measure order and degree of his own soul in the power of the universe next chapter there is also a certain virtue in the minds of men of changing attracting hindering and binding to that which they desire and all things obey them when they are carried into a great excess of any passion or virtue so as the exceed those things which they bind for the superior binds that which is inferior and converts it to itself and the inferior is by the same reason converted to the superior or is otherwise affected and wrought upon by this reason things that receive superior degrees of any star bind or attract or hinder things which have an inferior according as they agree or disagree amongst themselves whence a lion is afraid of a cock because the presence of the solary virtue is more agreeable to a cock than to a lion so a lodestone draws iron because the order it has a superior degree to the celestial beer so the diamond hinders the lodestone because in the order of mars it is superior to it in like manner any man when he is opportunely exposed to the celestial influences is by the affections of his mind so the due implications of natural things if he becomes stronger in a solar virtue binds and draws the inferior into admiration and obedience in order of the moon the servitude or infirmities in a saturnal order to quietness or sadness in order of jupiter to worship in order of mars to fear and discord in order of venus to love and joy in a mercurial order to persuasion and obsequiousness and the like now the ground of such a kind binding is the very vehement and boundless affection of the souls which the concourse of the celestial order but the dissolutions or hindrances of such a like bindness are made by a contrary effect and that more excellent or strong for the greater excess of the mind binds also it loses and hinders and lastly when you fear venus oppose saturn when saturn or mars oppose venus or jupiter for astrologers say that these are most at enmity and contrary to one another causing contrary effects in these inferior bodies for in the heaven where there is nothing wanting and where all things are governed by love there can in no wise be hatred or enmity next chapter 
of speech and the virtue of words. It being showed that there is a great power in the affections of the soul, you must know, moreover, that there is no less virtue in words and the names of things, but greatest of all speeches and emotions, by which we chiefly differ from brutes, and are called rational, not from reason, which is taken for that part of the soul which contains the affection, which, Galen says, is the common to brutes, although in a less degree, but we are called rational from the reason which is according to the voice understood in words and speech, which is called declarative reason, by which part we do chiefly excel from all other animals. Logos, in Greek, signifies reason, speech, a word. Now a word is twofold, internal and uttered. An internal word is a conception of the mind and the motion of the soul which is made without a voice is a dream we seem to speak therein and dispute with ourselves and whilst we are awake we run over a whole speech silently but an uttered word has a certain act in the voice and properties of locution and is brought forth with the breath of a man, with opening of his mouth, and with the speech of his tongue, in which nature has coupled the corporeal voice and speech to the mind, and understanding that a declare and interpreter of the conception of our intellect to the hearers. And if this we now speak, words therefore are the fittest medium between the speaker and the hearer, carrying with them not only the conception of the mind, but also the virtue of the speaker with a certain efficiency into the hearing. And this oftentimes is great a power that oftentimes they change not only the hearers, but also other bodies and things that have no life. Now those words are greater efficiency than others, which represent greater things as intellectual, celestial, and supernatural, as more expressly, so more mysteriously, also those that come from a more worthy tongue, or from any of a more holy order. So these, as it were, certain signs and representations receive a power of celestial and supercelestial things, as from the virtue of things explained, of which they are the vehicula, so from a power put into them by the virtue of the speaker. Next chapter, the virtue of proper names. The proper name of things are very necessary in magical operations. Almost all men testify, for the natural power of things proceeds first from the object to the senses, and then from the, these to the imagination, and from this to the mind, in which it is first conceived and then is expressed by voices and words that Platonists therefore say that in this very voice or word or name framed with its articles that the power of the thing as it were some kind of life lies under the form of the significations first conceived of the mind as it were brought certain seeds of things then by voices or words a birth brought forth and lastly kept in writings. Hence magicians say that proper names of things are certain rays of things, everywhere present at all times, keeping the power of things as the essence of the thing signified rules and is discerned in them, and know the things by them as by proper and living images. For as the great operator, thus produce diverse species and particular things by the influences of the heavens and by the elements together with the virtues of planets so according to the properties of the influences proper names result to things and are put upon them by him who numbers the multitude of the stars calling them all by their names of which names Christ and another place speaks, saying, Your names are written in heaven. Adam, therefore, that gave the first names to things, knowing the influences of the heaven and proportions of all things, gave them all names according to their nature, as it is 
written in Genesis where God brought all things that he had created before Adam, that he should name them, and as he is named anything as the name of it was, which names indeed contain, and the wonderful powers of the things signified, every voice therefore that is significative, first of all signs of the influence of the celestial harmony, secondly by the imposition of man, although oftentimes otherwise by this than by that, but when both significations meet in any voice or name which are put upon them by the said harmony or man, then the name is with a double virtue, natural and arbitrary, made most effectuous to act as oft as it shall be uttered in due place and times and seriously with an intention exercised upon the matter rightly disposed and that can naturally be acted upon by it so we read in philostratus that when a maid at rome died the same day she was married and was presented to apollonius he accurately inquired into her name which being known her pronounced some occult things by which she revived it was an observations amongst the romans and their holy rites and when they did besiege any city they did diligently inquire into the proper and true name of it and the name of that god under whose protection it was which being known they did then with some verse call forth the gods that were the protectors of that city and did curse the inhabitants of that city so at length the gods being absent did overcome them as virgil sings now the verse with which gods were called out and the enemies were cursed when the city was assaulted round about let him that would know find it out in livy and mocambius but also many of these serenus Samuncius, in this book of secret things makes mention of next chapter of many words joined together as in a sentence and verse and of the virtues of the astrictions of charms besides the virtues of words and names there are also greater virtues found in sentences from the truth contained in them which has a very great power of impressing changing binding and establishing so that being used it does shine the more and being resisted is more confirmed and consolidated which virtue is not in simple words but in sentences by which anything is affirmed or denied by which sort are verses enchantments imprecations deprecations orations invocations obtestations adjurations conjurations and such like therefore in composing verses and orations for attracting the virtue of any star or deity you must diligently consider what virtue any star contains as also what effects and operations and the infer them in verses by praising extolling amplifying and setting forth those things which such kind of stars is wont to cause by way of its influence and by vilifying and dispraising those things which it is wont to destroy and hinder and by supplication and begging for that which we desire to get and by condemning and detesting that which we would have destroyed and hindered and after the manner to make an elegant or oration and dully distinct by articles which competent members and proportions moreover magicians command that we call upon and pray by the name of the same star or name to them to whom such a verse belongs by their wonderful things or miracles by their courses and ways in their spheres by their light by the dignity of their kingdom and by the beauty and brightness 
that is in it by their strong and powerful virtues and by such like as these as psyche and apollonius praise the Cyrus, saying i beseech thee by the fruitful right hand i entreat thee by the joyful ceremonies of harpists by the quiet silence of the chest by the winged chariots of dragons thy servants by the furrows of the sicilian earth the devouring wagon the clammy earth by the place of going down into cellars at the night nuptials of psoserpina and the returns at the light inventions of her daughter and other things which are concealed in the temple of the city Eleusis in Antica. Besides, with the diverse sorts of the names of the stars, they command us to call upon them by the names of the intelligences ruling over the stars themselves, of which we shall speak more largely in their proper place. They that desire further examples of this let them search into the hymns of orpheus than which nothing is more efficacious in natural magic if they together with their circumstances which wise men know be used according to a due harmony with all attention but to return to all purpose such like verses being amply and dully made according to the rule of the stars and being full of significations and meaning and opportunity pronounced with vehement affections as according to the number of proportion of their articles so according to the form resulting from the articles and by the violence of imagination do confer a very great power in the enchanter and sometimes transfer it upon the thing enchanted to bind and direct in the same purpose for which the affections and speeches of the enchanter are intended now the instrument of enchanters is a most pure harmonical spirit warm breathing living bringing with a in motion affection and signification composed of its parts endued with sense and conceived by reason by the quality therefore of the spirit and by celestial similitudes thereof besides those things which have already been spoken of verses also from the opportunity of time receive from above most excellent virtues and indeed more sublime and affectious than spirits and vapors in exhaling out of the vegetable life out of herbs roots gums aromatical things and fumes and such like and therefore magicians enchanting things are wont to blow and breathe upon them the words of the verse or to breathe in the virtue with the spirit that so the world virtue of the verse of the soul be directed to the thing enchanted being disposed of the receiving of the said virtue and here it is to be noted that every writing oration and words as they induce accustomed motions by their accustomed numbers and proportions and forms so also besides their usual order being pronounced or wrote backwards more unto unusual effects next chapter of the wonderful powers of enchantments they say that the power of enchantments and verses is so great that it is believed they are able to subvert almost all nature, as says Apelius, that with a magical whispering, swift rivers are turned back, the slow sea is bound, the winds are breathed out with an accord, the sun is stopped, the moon is clarified, the stars are pulled out, the day is kept back, the night is prolonged. Of these things, sings lucan the course of all things did cease the night prolonged was long before it was light astonished with the headlong worlds of this was by the hearing of a verse and the title before the Cilician verse did into 
its heart so flow that it did make a greater heat of love, and elsewhere, no drag of poison being by him drunk, its wits decayed enchanted. Also Virgil and Damon, charms can command the moon down from the sky, circus, charms, changed alias company, a cold snake being charmed burst in the meads. And another place, charms bear corn standing from another's farm. And Ovid in his book, sign Tetulo said, with charms thus with bring Ceres die, dried are the fountains all, acorns from oaks enchanted, grapes and apples from trees fall. If these were not true, they would not be such strict panel statues made against them that should enchant fruit, and Tibullus says of a certain enchantress, or that's an enchantress, her with charms drawing stars from heaven, I and turning course of rivers did spy, she parts the earth and ghosts from sepulchres, draws up and fetcheth the bones away from the fires, and her pleasures scattered clouds in the air, and makes it snow in summer hat and fair. Also if all which that enchantress seemed to boast of herself in Ovid when she said, It will I make swift streams retire to their fountains whilst their banks admire sea toss and smooth clear clouds with clouds deform with spells and charms i break the viper's jaws cleave solid rocks oaks from their seizures draw whole woods remove the airy fountains shake earth for to groan and ghosts from the graves awake and thee o moon i draw Moreover, all poets sing, and philosophers do not deny that by verses many wonderful things may be done, as corn can be removed, lightning to be commanded, diseases to be cured, and such like. For Cato himself, in country affairs, used some enchantments against the diseases of beasts, with as yet are extant in his writing. Also Josephus testifies that Solomon was skilled in those kinds of enchantments. Also Celsus Africanus reports, according to the Egyptian doctrine, that man's body, according to the number of the faces of the zodiac, was taken care of so many, thirty-six spirits, whereof each undertake and defend their proper part, whose names they call with a peculiar voice, which being called upon, restore to health with their enchantments the diseased parts of the body. Next chapter of the virtue, writing and making imprecations and inscriptions. The use of words and speech is to express the inward of the mind and from hence to draw forth the secrets of thoughts and to declare the will of the speaker. Now writing is the least expression of the mind, and is the number of speech and voice, as also the collection, state, and continuing, and iteration, making a habit which is not perfected within the acts of own's voice. And whatsoever is in the mind, in voice, in words, in oration, and in speech, the whole, and all this writing also, and as nothing which is conceived of the mind is not perceived and expressed by voice, is nothing which is expressed is not also written, and therefore magicians command that in every work thereby imprecations and inscriptions made, by which the operator may express his affections that he gather a herb or a stone, he declare for what use he does it, of he make a picture, if he says, and write to what end he makes it, will impressions and inscriptions. Albertus also in his book called Speculum does not disallow, without which all works would never brought into effect, seeing a disposition does not cause an effect, but the effect of the disposition. We find also that the same kind of precepts 
was in us amongst the ancients, as Virgil testifies when he says, I walk round first with these threats, the number which three are, both altars, thrice I shall my image bear, and a little after, not amorous of color three, then say, these bonds I knit for Venus be, and of the same place, as with one fires this clay does harder prove, the wax more soft, so deafens with our love. Next chapter. Of the proportions, correspondency, reductions of letters to celestial signs and planets, according to various tongues and a table shewing this. God gave to a man a mind and speech which, as said Mercurius Trismegistus, are taught to be gift of the same virtue, power, and immorality. The omnipotent God has by this providence divided the speech of man into diverse languages, which languages gives, according to their diversity, receive diverse and proper characters of writing, consisting in their certain order and figure not to dispose and formed by hap or chance, nor by the weak judgment of man, but from above, whereby they agree with the celestial and divine bodies and virtues, but before all notes of language, the writing of the Hebrews is of all most sacred, and the figures of characters, points of vowels, and tops of accents, consisting in matter, form, and spirit. The position of the stars being first made in the seed of God, which is heaven, after the figure of them, as the masters of the Hebrew testify, are most fully the letters of the celestial mysteries, as by their figures, form, and significations, as by the numbers signified by them, and also by the various harmony of their conjunction, whence the more curious Machabalus of the Hebrews to undertake by the figure of the letters, the form of character and their signature, simpleness, composition, separation, crookedness, directness, defect, abounding, greatness, littleness, crowning, opening, shutting, under, the transmutation, joining together, revolution of letters and points and tops by the Supputation of numbers by the letters of things signified to explain all things. How they proceed from the first cause and there again to be reduced into the same. Moreover, they divide the letters of their Hebrew alphabet into twelve simple, seven double, and three mother, which they say signifies the character of things, the twelve signs, seven planets, and three elements, fire, water, earth, for they account air no element, but as the glue and spirit of the elements. To these also they appoint points and tops, as therefore by the aspects of the planets and signs together with the elements, the working spirit and truth of all things have been, and are brought forth, so by these characters of letters and points, signifying Those things that are brought forth, the names of all things are appointed, a certain sign and vehicula of things explained, carrying with them everywhere their essence and virtues, the profound meanings and signs were inherent in those characters and figures of them, is also numbers, place, order, in, and revolution, so that origins, therefore, thought that those names being translated into another idiom do not retain their proper virtue for only original names which are rightly imposed because they signify naturally have a natural activity it is not so with them which signify at pleasure which have no activity as they are signifying but as they are certain natural things in themselves now 
if there be any original language whose words have a natural signification, it is manifest that this is in the Hebrew the order of which he that shall profoundly and radically observe and shall know to resolve proportionably the letters thereof shall have a rule exactly to find out any idiom there are therefore two and twenty letters which are the foundation of the world and of creatures that are that are named in it and every saying that every creature are of them and by their revolutions receive their names being and virtue he therefore that will find them out must each joining together of the letters so long examine them until the voice of god is manifest and the framing of the most sacred letters by opening and discovered for hence voices in the words have efficiency and magical works because that in which nature first exercises magical efficiency is the voice of god but these are of more deep speculation than to be handled in this book but to return to the division of the letters of these amongst the hebrews are three mothers a a a seven double the other twelve are simple the same rule amongst chaldeans and by the imitations of these letters are of the tongues of the distribution of the signs planets and elements after their order by the vowels of the greek answer to the seven planets are attributes to the twelve signs of the zodiac to the other five represent the four elements and the spirit of the world amongst the latin there is the same signification for the five vowels and consonants are ascribed for the seven planets and the consonants are answerable to the twelve signs the rest makes four elements the aspiration represents the spirit of the world i because it is a greek but not latin character and serving only greek words following the nature of its idiom but this you must not be ignorant of that it is observed by all wise men that the hebrew letters are the most efficacious of all because they have the greatest similitude with celestials and the world and the letters of the other tongues have not so great an efficacy because they are more distant from them now the dispositions of those the following table will explain also all the letters have double numbers of their order extended which simply express of what number the letters are according to their order and collected which recollect with themselves the numbers of all preceding letters also they have integral numbers which result from the names of letters according to their various manners of numbering the virtues of which numbers he that shall know shall be able in every tongue to draw forth wonderful mysteries by their letters as also to tell what things have been past and foretell things to come there are also other mysterious joinings of letters with numbers but we shall abundantly discourse of all these in the following books wherefore we will now put an end to this first book